morning welcome to sewing street it is march the 20th so tomorrow is the first day of spring very exciting very exciting today um and we have got a fantastic day i've got two top guests today so we've just been having um great chat a good sewing sewing chat in the green room with um we've got the lovely Stuart hillard and the lovelier J jenny jackson as well it's going to be a fantastic day um and it's sunny sunny and light outside so let's hope it's it's all going to be springtime today um so got a great show but we will start with the early bird now i chose the early bird today as a special treat um i asked the buying people pauline buying to get hold of these these are for because at eight o'clock we've got the um amber makes block of the month number two which is all about spring it's daffodils and this is a specific product that you need with it you don't need very much to, with this you get the panel but you do need a little spring toggle um we did have some in stock but i really like these silver ones they're just just a little bit prettier they look really nice with that but anyway you can use them for all sorts of things they're just ideal when you've got a piece of cord so if you've got a drawstring for something um, whether it's a drawstring bag or if you're using it on the end of a, a garment or an item and often they just come in like white or black plastic but these silver ones are lovely so what's our special price on these today then benjamin you get two, two six mil ones. I'm going to show you how to use them later. One ninety nine. So if you're buying the block of the month today, which I'll be going through in a minute, you need it for that. But they are ideal and they're really pretty as well. Should we have a look? And I've, I've got them in specially for today. So I thought, do you know what? We'll have these as the early bird. So you get two of them. Um, so there's a little spring. They're called spring toggles. And then you put the cord through there. And then you press it. You put the cord through and then you release it and then that holds it tight so if you've ever made like a little drawstring pouch maybe it's as a little gift bag or something and you find that the drawstring is coming undone by just threading the two cords through the hole then you knot the ends of them then when you release it that's it done absolutely perfect i'll show you how to use them later but they're metal they're not silver coated plastic they're metal and so they give it a, a nice bit of extra weight whereas the normal plastic ones are lovely but i think these are just a bit like you know when you get bag hardware and you get nice d-rings and sliders it just gives it that bit of extra luxury so if, if you make drawstring bags or use drawstring things because these are metal they've also got a little bit half the stock's gone whoa we'll have to get some more I have to get some more it took me about three weeks to get hold of these to be honest with, as a special request 1.99 for two of them and you don't often see the metal ones so i thought we'd get them in specially for you today fantastic anyway i will be demonstrating how they work in the bag this morning so you can see how it works um right so if everyone who's got them in their basket checks out they've gone so if you are getting the bag for the block of the month, I put the plastic one on mine, you see, it would have been nicer with the metal one, wouldn't it? Um, you will need them for that. And you get two, even handier. Um, do keep going out because they were about to sell out. I'll put them back in their little um, pouch. Right, so coming up on today's show, the menu today is eight o'clock. That's, um, I'm gonna demonstrate eight o'clock for Amber Makes. It is part two of block of the month. It's all about daffodils this month. Beautiful display of daffodils. I'm going to explain to you the whole concept of block of the month um, when we come to that show. And we've got a special image that Amy's drawn to show you what the finished quilt will look like. So that'll be coming up in a couple of minutes time. At nine o'clock, Jenny Jackson is back with us. Now I'm lucky today because Jenny's normally on a Sunday, but because she's been at the NEC, she's coming in on a Monday today. So for all of you who have been kept her um fpp strip of the month it's the march one today so she's going to be doing the next strip and how it all works this has been so popular and so fantastic for people who are beginners to fpp i have seen so many posts on facebook of people saying oh i've never done fpp before i thought i'd give it a go with you jenny and it's brilliant and it's gorgeous i've got the quilt um hanging up on the other set do you want to see would you like to see so we will be doing, so there, Jan, there's January, that's February, and then today, March. Nice, isn't it? So you start at the top, like at 12 o'clock, and then you work all the way down, all the way down. And then you join them together in a row, crossways. 
It's beautiful, isn't it? So um, Jenny will be showing us how to do that at nine o'clock. And we've got Kiss kits. That's the blue version, but there's also a pastel version, which Jenny is the one that she's working on. So we've got the sample of that. She'll be showing you that at nine o'clock. At 10 o'clock, we have got Stuart and he has got, he's got some gorgeous kits. Rainbow is my favorite color is the name of the show. He's got two bags. There's a um, bright rainbow bag and a pastel rainbow bag. He's got his quilt that he's going to be demonstrating as well. And he's got his garden maze quilt as well. So he's got three demonstrations and three products. Oh, do you want to have a little look at the bags? Look at these. So we have got kits to make the bags. How gorgeous are these? Look, the panel comes with all the fabric pieces you need and all the instructions. And look at the inside of the flap. And then there's the pastel version. These are beautiful, aren't they? Look at that one. Everything you need for the fabric, obviously you'll need some hardware and other things, but all the fabric is all there on the kit. And he's got his um, quilt and he's got his garden maze quilt as well. So we've got three demos in one hour. That's going to be great. Um, and we've got charm squares and design rolls as well. It's brilliant. Then at 11 o'clock, Jenny will be back. Now for all of you who've been following her EPP um, series, where she has got a panel with EPP shapes, we've got the full kits that have got the fabric, we've got the paper pieces and all the instructions. Today, it's all about the parrot. Where's the parrot? Oh, I'm just gonna, can, you, can, you, can you get me the parrot, um, Becky? I forgot to get it to show you. It is beautiful. So we've got actually two things um, in there. So we've got the parrot. Now, any of you have missed out on the previous bags, this one, this is the parrot, but we've also got some of the Kingfisher and um, Puffins as well. Look, it's Charlie and Ben. They always look like that. Gorgeous. So you'd never know, would you? When you look closely, you can see all the EPP shapes in it, but what a beautiful bag. So the panel has got all the EP pieces to make the parrots and it's got the backing fabric of the parrots as well. It's beautiful. Um, also in that hour, so after she's done the APP, um, she's going to be doing needle turn applique. Now, have you ever tried needle turn applique? This is what it looks like. It's a beautiful technique. Just like all of Jenny's techniques, it's very mindful. It's beautiful to do with fantastic results. So we've got cushions in a choice of different prints. To using needle turn and it really is written from a beginner's point of view so if you've always wanted to have a go at this technique 11 o'clock is the hour for you and we've got a quilt kit as well so two projects in that one. Oh, early bird early birds now sold out so they are lovely we have got also well let me just finish 12 o'clock and then tell you about pre-order so 12 o'clock it's yarn lane i've got my new jumper on in celebration today with sheep I've got my sheepy yarn lane jumper on, especially, it's, look, it's even got sheep on the back. Very impressed. And sheep on the sleeves, well, especially today. Um, I saw it and thought, that is my jumper, sheep. So 12 o'clock is yarn lane, and Stu is gonna be demonstrating us. We have got style, knitted style craft jumpers and cardigans, and we've got crochet bags. And Stuart has taught himself crochet, and he is going to be demonstrating the crochet for that as well. Very exciting. Beautiful cotton yarn in all of those. You'll love them. So we've got a choice of kits, depending on whether you want knitting, whether you want crochet. It's all in there. That's at 12 o'clock. Now, before we crack on with um, the block of the month, let me just talk about shopping. Because everything that's on today's show is already on pre-order. So if you're watching now, and you're going to be popping out later, and you don't want to miss out on um, the parrot bag at 11 o'clock, you can buy it all now. Now, if you go onto sewingstreet.com and click on watch live, this is what you get. Now it's in two sections, well it will be, so the things I've talked about is in one section and then the things I haven't talked about yet is in the other section and it will tell you what's sold and what hasn't. Now a lot of these items, so look there's the FPP panel, a lot of these items are flying out at the moment. Glue pens, glue pens are there, they sell out so quickly, so there's the FPP panels if you want to get ahead with those. Those are, this is Stuart's hour, so we've got his rainbow bag kits. Um, there's um, the quilt kits. 
the panels on their own for the first ever time the charm panels and the design rolls are on there for the first time if you want to get them there's the instructions for the garden maze quilt absolutely gorgeous there's um jenny's needle turn applique the kingfisher and the puffin are there as well as the brand new parrot and i we look at that look at the panel for that you've got all the ep pieces you've got the back of the bag you've got the handle strips you've got the extra parrots all in there now the kingfishers and the puffins have sold out before but we have got some back in stock so please do get ahead with that that is all available on pre-order already so if you're popping out later don't worry you won't miss out anything right let's talk about block of the month now um last year we did block of the month it was all about sewing tools and we brought out a new one this year so if you missed it i launched it on um the birthday show a month ago for we started with february now the concept behind this let me show you february is every panel has got an arrangement of flowers on it for february it was an arrangement of grape hyacinths and crocuses and snowdrops so they will be flowers that are of that month but the panel includes this piece that you can use in your quilt. And I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. But it also includes all the extra pieces to make the project. Every panel is a specific project. So this was the hourglass cushion. So you've got the pieces to make the hourglass border and then the backing. So that was February. But today is March. Now March is all about daffodils, isn't it? So this is the project that you make. I'll just take out the filling so that you can see the bag so this is called the shop away bag because if you're anything like me you always forget to take a bag out with you um, and you don't know what and also it's not convenient you can't get in your bag so on the panel you will get the pieces for the front of the bag which is that beautiful vase of daffodils that Amy's drawn isn't that gorgeous on the back of the bag you get um, a hand tied bouquet a more sort of informal arrangement of daffodils and then you get this funny corner triangle piece oh and you get handles handles very important so you get this funny triangular piece at the bottom and the spring toggle there's a point to this so now you think well why is that on the bottom it's not sewn um through so you know you can get your hands right inside the bag that triangle is sewn on the other side so what you do is you've got your bag for shopping get it home you emptied everything out of it and then all you do no special folding you just shove it all in like that you pull the drawstring cord and then pull your spring toggle down. Let me just arrange it. And then that's your little bag. So what you've got then, that's it. And Amy's designed it so it's like a little vase. So it's the same as the vase that the daffodils are in. So that's what you get. Then you pop that in your handbag. And I use, because I, I made one when I tried to see how the design would work. And I keep mine in my handbag all the time. Then when you go out shopping, take it out undo it all and there's your bag ready to go shopping so on the panel so this is March let me show you the panel for it so this is the kit so in the kit you get this is you get the panel and full instructions I'll show you the panel first now there's loads on this panel because everything's filled in so on the panel you get the front of the bag, all labelled, says bag front, you get the two handle strips, you get the back of the bag, you get, um, this is the little casing bit for the top of the pocket, you get the two triangles for the pocket, and then what we've done, because there was a bit of space left, we've given you an extra panel for the front, which you can use in your quilt. For most of the other panels, you have to choose whether you make the project or the quilt, or you buy two. It's up to you but with this one there was some space so we've included you can keep this one for your quilt then we've put lots of other things in so you've got two charm squares to do whatever you fancy they're quite nice if you sew them to the front of a plain card and you can give them as a greetings cards there's little daffodils you could use to applique on top of your um, panel for your bag or you can use them in other makes as a mini vase there's even a gift tag front and back so that if you gave this as a gift you could make the gift tag to go with it we've put the months on so that if you were giving this to somebody who you wanted to put the month, you could sew that on. So everything you need is in there. You also get full instructions. 
Um, now, what we're doing with all of our Amber Makes kits now is I have filmed a video tutorial that, and on the instructions is all the information about how to find it. It's on the Amber Makes website, but we've put inside a QR code for you and the details so that I've done a full tutorial of exactly how to make it. So when you get your kit home, go onto the website, it, it tells you in the instructions where to find it and you can watch the full tutorial. So, but all the instructions are there everything you need. The only extra things you'll need that aren't in the kit is the spring toggle and 24 inches of narrow cord just to pop through it. And other than that, it's all on there. The bag isn't lined because it needed to keep it very lightweight so it could be folded away into the little pocket because I wanted to keep it small as possible. But I'll show you how I get round that. Anyway, that is the March kit. So the idea behind the flower shop was every Every, pro every month is a project on its own. So if you just want to buy one month and you just want to make the shop away bag, that's fine. But if you want to save them all to make into the quilt, this is what the quilt is going to look like. Um, this is Amy's done a drawing of it. So it's going to look like the front of a flower shop. Uh, we might change the colours a little bit, but it will be basically like that. So it's like an attic window style quilt. So each hole each pane will look like the window of a flower shop and in each window you will put your vase of flowers so you can see february at the top and march i mean you can put them whatever you want and then obviously every month we'll be filling them in and then at the end of the 12 months we will be selling a panel so that you can join it all together to make the flower shop so with this one we've given you an extra panel that's that flower arrangement not with all of them it depends on space and then you can choose because with some of them so for example with the february one um i've put the flower arrangement here but you could put the um hand tied bouquet in there and said and then you could make the project keep this panel for your quilt so that's march that's now now if you miss february let me just show you that kit because if you weren't with me for then or if you've just thought oh i, I will start collecting those so with February, again, um, full instructions. The, there is a full, I haven't, we haven't put on the instructions, but there is a full video tutorial for this, again, on the Amber Makes website. So it's really simple to understand. This is the panel. So there's your vase of grape hyacinths, crocuses, snowdrops. And that's what I, and, and can you see that everyone will have a little shelf as well, because that's where it sits in the window. But on its own, it still looks fine with the shelf. You'll also get the hand tied bouquet. So you could put that on the cushion and keep that for the quilt. You've then got all of the squares. These are used for the hourglass blocks. These are prints of um, hyacinths. And you've even got the pale white and blue spot that's used for the hourglass blocks. You've got charm squares, you've got extra pieces for applique, because I appliqued the jug onto mine. Then you've also got the cushion front and back. So everything that you need to make the cushion. So that's February. And obviously you get um, full instructions of how to make the cushion as well with pictures and everything you need. Um, when you go on the website to buy these, I have listed on the Sewing Street website the extra materials you'll need. So it says like the length of the cord you need for the March bag and it will tell you how much the, the size of the zip is all on there. So that if you want to buy this today and you want to know what else you need, it, it's all on the website. So that's February and March. Now, what we decided to do as well, because these prints are so pretty, they would be nice to be able to sell them as um, charm squares. So I'll start with February. So we have produced, we will be doing this every month, but we, did, we didn't do it last month, so we're doing two in one go. So these are, this panel is 40 five inch charm squares, all featuring items. So you've got miniature version of the jug and the bouquet. You've got um, prints of the hyacinths. You've got the snowdrops. You've got 40 of these all on here. Oh, and an extra two gift tags as well. So just to give you an idea of what you can make with this, I mean, there aren't any instructions with this because obviously this is just a, um, a panel for you to use with your own makes. But from this panel, I made um, using, in fact, I used about a tiny bit, about six inches of plain fabric, but I made a tote bag. There's the front and the back. I made handles from the strip. I had to use a little bit of plain fabric on there, but completely reversible as well. So if I turn it inside out, completely reversible and that 
used, other than the little bit of plain fabric I had to use in the handles, which is about a six inch strip, um, you can make from one of these panels. I just wanted to give you some ideas and inspiration of what you can make. You can make a whole reversible tote bag. So $14.99 and you get 40 five inch squares so you can use this alongside the panel that you've bought because there's lots of other bits and pieces on there or you can just use it yourself you could put it into a quilt uh, you could make it into a cushion all sorts of things but they're so pretty aren't they all snowdrops and crocuses and loveliness so that's the february charm square and then we've obviously done one for march as well so here's the march one and obviously this is all about the daffodils this is gorgeous so again we've got on here well we've got march labels in case you want them um, you know if you wanted to give somebody a card for march you could use the label on it we've got gift tags uh, we've got miniature versions so on the main panel you get two of these charm squares but for the 40 you've got daffodil prints single daffodils you've got that lovely blue and white print that's on the vase 40 of them and this is what I made with my panel so I made a pinwheel cushion so I just used um, two of the charm squares for each pinwheel so I've used those blue daffodils there I've used the whole daffodils I've used the vases and then I put some on the back oh I got them upside down yeah I put it in upside down there we go uh, and then I just use them on the back so I just made an envelope closure and I put some cam snaps just to hold it tight but I just joined them together to make an envelope back so you don't even need a zip for that and I even had charm squares left over and all you need for this is a bit of I used some plain white fabric so that's the sort of thing that you can do with a charm pack but just to give you some ideas we don't we didn't do this as a kit it's not instructions it's just to give you a bit of inspiration so there we go I'll put the back on my shelf so lots of choices for you there lots of choices so if you've got any questions because i know it gets complicated when we launch a new block of the month about how does it work what what can you do but i've tried to keep it so that every month is very standalone you can just make the project if you want you can just make this so of the march kit a third of the stock has gone and we did have big stock but a third has gone so if you want it you need to get checked out but as i said if you want to then make the whole flower shop quilt it's beautiful it will look like um a flower shop and i've designed it in such a way that you can make um a single bed size quilt but if you collect two of each panel you can make a double bed size quilt and i'll show you at the end of the year how that all works right should we sh i show you how to do it i've got to find my glasses though oh there they are <laughs> i'm just gonna move it's going to move right so let's move everything off my desk so what you do is you start off with let me get the panel because <coughs> the important thing is to remember which piece is which now with this panel it's not too complicated because actually there's not too many pieces but just so you remember which piece is which all the seam allowances are included in the pieces there are different seam allowances for different pieces and I'll explain why when I go through it. So just cut around the outer edge, don't need to include anything else. So when you're cu cutting the, like the pocket triangle front and back, cut around the outer edge and then cut the label out and pin it to the top. The labels are always at the top. Then you know which piece is which. You've got the pocket casing front, the pocket casing back, cut those out. Keep all these pieces and then you've got the bag front the bag back and you've got the handle so cut them all out round the edge and pin the handle to it um, if you want to applique any of the pieces out the best way to do that is to cut roughly around them press bond web to the wrong side paper side up cut around them and then you can press them onto your panels and stitch them if you want to embellish it further or if you want to add more daffodils that's up to you so cut all the pieces out first and then pin the label onto it once that's done we're then going to make a pocket. So what you do is plug your iron in. Should have done that. Got it now. Da, da, da. And we're going to start off with the pocket casing front. So there are two pocket pieces, one for the front of the bag and one for the back. They're made in the same way. So I'm going to show you how to make one of them. So we're going to hem the edges of this um, 
we're going to turn over the short ends by quarter of an inch twice. Now the easiest way to do this is if you measure double what you want to turn it over, so obviously that's half an inch, put a pop a pin in, get my eye in, it should be ready now. Yeah. Um, if you then turn that edge over to meet that pin, that's quarter of an inch because we did double and press that into place and then turn it over again and then you've turned it over a quarter of an inch. This is just to hem the edges because this is the place where the cord will come out, the drawstring cord will come out of. And so if you only turn it over once, it might start fraying. So it's quite important to turn it over twice. So I'll just do that with the other end. So again, measure half an inch in. I mean, you can guesstimate this, but if you want it to be really accurate, then measure it. And then press it. And then all I'm going to do now is stitch those down. Stitch it down from the wrong side, then you can see what you're doing. Because it's turned over twice, you can just um, stitch it through the centre. There you go. You don't even... Oh, it's got stuff. <laughs> this is fab if you've got the um if you've got one of these elder machines this is the 720 the one i've got if you put the hp plate on i've had this machine for a few months and i've discovered the joys of this the high performance plate in and then you put the high performance foot on it doesn't gather up the fabric and and fall down the back and you don't get that bunching it's amazing and the and the foot is also quarter inch wide just discovered that i decided not to teach myself the whole machine at the beginning and i've discovered it as i've gone along so it because it's only got one little hole whereas um the foot the plate when you use the normal plate has a bigger hole so you can zigzag across because it's only got the one little hole it doesn't get caught in the machine fantastic Right, so once you've done that, I'm now going to fold it in half with wrong sides facing. And remember, I've done a whole tutorial of this, so you haven't got to remember, but it is sometimes quite useful to, to see it in action. Fold it in half, wrong sides together, making sure everything matches up. Now, fold that in half. I just want to find the centre of it, so I'm just going to fold that in half. Just make a little crease and then pop a pin in. Now take your pocket triangle front, and this is important, you need this long diagonal edge. This is why if you pin the label to the top of it, you can see which that is. Take that label off now. Fold that in half to find the center. Make a little crease, pop a pin in. Now take the pocket casing front, match the pins up. Basically, you, or you can do this by measurement, but this is the easiest way to make sure it's central. And then pin it together all the way along, making sure that all of those raw edges match up. All the way down there. And then pin it down here. Um, you will notice that the pointed ends of the triangle stick out beyond the casing. Don't worry, it should be like that. You haven't done anything wrong. So I know sometimes you look at things and think, if I've done that wrong, but that's fine. Um, now I'm going to stitch this into place using the quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to do a reverse stitch because I want that to be nice and secure. Right, so now that's done, we've got the casing. So that bit there now is where your drawstring cord is going to go through. It's looking a bit odd, isn't it? Thinking, how on earth is that going to be a pocket? But it will be. So press it flat just to set the seam and then press the seam open. This will give you a really neat finish because what we're going to do is make sure that that seam sits right on the edge. So if you... Get my eye on the wrong side. When you press this open, just press the ends of those triangles over by the same amount. They will just naturally fall like that once you start pressing. Just 
there we go and once you've done that we now want the, all of these seam allowances to face downwards they need to be flat but by pressing it open first it helps that to lie flat so make sure those seam allowances are laying flat you can press it from the front and the back then that will all be encased so that's fairly simple but it's important that those seam allowances face downwards now you need to take the bag front and this pocket is going to sit in the bottom right hand corner i'm just going to press that's got creased creased in transit so this needs to go in the bottom right hand corner so match up the bottom corner make sure the raw edges are matching you pin it together and then match it up all the way along the top you will get a little ear poking out but we can pin that we can clip that off later so just make sure the raw edges so if you do the bottom corner first then go up to the top you can then pin the bottom now these edges will be held together in the seam when we join the front and the back of the bag together but i'm going to tack them in place before you go under the machine make sure this that seam allowance case is facing downwards and then just pop a couple of pins just to hold it flat while you've got it on a flat surface but not too near the seam and then i put one up here so that's all nice and flat um, so tack it together down the side and across the bottom now you can do that by hand but i prefer it's just easier to use a long stitch on the machine and do it within the seam allowance so about a quarter of an inch from the edge because this has got a longer seam allowance a wider seam allowance this bag which i'll explain to you in a minute this just will hold it in place it's easy if you tack it in place before you sew because it's hard to sew three layers together evenly otherwise now once that's done put your seam allowance back to your normal i think this one's 2.4 um, and i'm going to sew let me show you on the flat surface um, because this is the casing this is the pocket i'm going to sew all of the pockets to the bag front but along this seam so right on top of it so not on the casing not in the pocket but try and get it in the seam or just onto the pocket if you don't get on the seam but not because the casing is narrow um, it's best if you don't stitch into the casing at all so the easiest way to do this put it under the machine and lower your needle in so it's right on top of that seam if you lower in about a quarter of an inch away from the beginning then you can start by reverse stitching so i'm going to do this quite slowly because i want it to be in the right place you'll find it's not too difficult because you'll find what happens is your needle will just brush the edge of the pocket triangle now if you go off a little bit it doesn't matter too much if you just try and get it on top of that seam it will just look a bit neater and then when you get to the end little reverse stitch and that's done you can take all your pins out now because you don't need them and that's nice and flat we'll give that a little press make sure it's all nice and flat so make the pocket back in exactly the same way so you can see how this works now that that's sewn together down there it's all attached it's only that bit that's sticking out that's all attached on there take the pocket back make that in exactly the same way with the triangle and the casing and then with the bag of the the back of the bag don't forget you've got to sew your pocket i've done this in advance in the bottom left hand corner not the right hand corner otherwise they won't join up obviously it says all of that in the instructions so make sure you do that in the bottom left hand corner I'm just going to press this it will have a better finish if it's nice and flat so you see i've used the floral arrangement on the back of the bag I mean, if you want to use your floral arrangement for something else, you could always just cut out a plain piece of fabric to use on the bag back. But they do match together nicely, so.
morning, Rebecca. I'm loving these block of the month, so just had to keep collecting them. Love your way of folding under the edge of the casing from Susan. Thank you. That's, that's really, that's just, it. well, all, it's really nice to get feedback from people about different ways that we do things and what works. And I try and use methods that are the easiest way to do and to understand them. Sometimes you could get a neater or better way in different ways, but it's, it's all about being easy to understand, I think. Right, so now we take the bag front and the bag back, and we're going to put them right sides together. And we are going to sew them together down the sides and across the bottom. Now remember, I'll just press that, this bag isn't lined, and the reason for that is because in order to fold into the little pocket, you don't, because you want to keep this bag in your handbag so it's ready to use. I didn't want to add any extra bulk, but we don't want raw edges, so there's a way around this. So what's important is that these triangles, pockets, meet up. So pin those together first. The easiest way to do that is make sure the raw edges are even, and then just roll it. And if you roll it, you can see the edges of those pockets match up. Once you've got that matching, pop a pin in there. Then turn it and do the same with this edge. You'll just get a neater edge to your bag if they match up exactly. Again, you know, if they don't match up exactly, you are the only person who will notice. Um, and then the corners need to match up. So we'll just pop a pin in there. And then pop a pin so I love these pressing mats because you can use them as pin cushions then put a pin in that corner just make sure these raw edges are matching up as you do it I always like to then pin at the end of a um, seam because then if you pin at both ends, you can make sure, I always give it a little tug, and then you can um, put a pin in the centre. They are the same measurement, but you know what it's like with fabric when you pressed it, or if it's a little bit creased. If you pin at either end and then through the centre, you'll get a neater finish. Now this is where I'm going to change the seam allowance. All of this is in the instructions, so don't worry, you've got to remember this. Um, I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance now. And that's all included, so don't worry when you cut out your pieces from your panel, all of those seam allowances are included, so you don't have to change anything. So using your um, foot plate for the measurement, because there are measurements on all of these, I'm going to line up the raw edge of my fabric with the half inch measurement on my foot plate, and then sew together all the way down one side. When you get to the pocket bit again, because you've put a pin to make sure they stay together, go a bit slower until your needle holds those two pockets together. Then you can remove your pin. And you'll find it, if you're like me and you mostly work with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, it's, it feels really big working with a half inch one just feels like too wide but I think you just get used to it so, so like if you're a dressmaker and you work with a five eighths of an inch going to a quarter of an inch seems strange but go with it you need you do need this half an inch seam allowance Ooh. then reverse stitch when you get to the other end. So I'm just going to press to set the seams, which I always do when I've sewn anything, because the needle and the thread distorts the fabric slightly. So if you press it, it just sets the seams back into the fabric and you will get a neater finish later. Now you've got raw edges, which you don't want because they'll fray inside your bag. So there are a couple of options here. <clears throat> you could use a machine zigzag. Um, I would, to get a nice flat finish, I'd, I'd want these seams open, so I would machine zigzag them separately and not together. You could use an overlocker, or if you're extremely lazy like I am, 
pink and shears. So all you have to do, and this is why I've done a half inch seam allowance because I'm going to, I want to be able to trim. When you do a quarter of an inch, you don't get much fabric. So if you're gonna use pink and shears, then just trim it halfway through the seam allowance. So you end up with quarter of an inch seam allowance left with nice pinked edges. And the way I think about it is that, you know, before the days of overlockers and zigzag stitches, if you look at vintage clothes, and they all use pink and shears, don't they? If you ever buy, find clothes, old vintage clothes that people have made, they've always got pinked edges. That and I'm lazy. So it's quicker as well. You have to, um, obviously, once you get to the pocket point, there's, you've got quite a lot of fabric. So you've got to get through. But you could just use a machine zigzag. And there's something quite satisfying about cutting it as well. You don't have to measure it or get it particularly straight, but this will just stop the edges of your bag fraying. Now, I've been using mine for about six weeks now uh, since I've designed it, and it hasn't frayed at all. So there we go. But again, if you've got an overlock or if you'd prefer to use a machine zigzag, then you can. Um, now, I'm going to press the seams open. And this is something people often ask. How do you press the seams open when you can't get down there? Well, what I do, because the top section really needs to be pressed open because we're going to um, turn the top over in a minute. So I always press open the top because you can just lay this flat. Once you get further down near the corner, you can't. So I'll press that bit, that one open, and then I'll press that one open. As far as I can. And then what you do is if you just press one side over, that will do the same job. So if you've ever got to press a seam open where you've got a corner and you can't get into it, or it's something small, just press the top layer over and that's enough to hold it open. You'll just find it easier when you come to turn your bag right sides out to get this seam to lay right on the edge if you just take a few minutes to do this before you go any further. There we go, and there's those seams done. Um, the next thing you need to do is make the handles. I've made these in advance. So on the panel, there it is, um, you will see that the handles are, I'll show you this side, are strips like this. So all you do when you cut them out is you fold them in half, lengthways, right sides facing, and sew them together to make a long loop. Well, yes. So someone's message and say you could use a French seam. Yes, you're absolutely right. And I was going to use a French seam and that's how I started off. However, it messes up with the pocket placement. It, it irritates, I tried it. It can be done, but again, I said at the beginning, I tried to do things that was in easiest to explain. So um, I've got a bag coming up on Friday show actually where I have done that for that reason, but it messes up with the edges of this. It's a bit too bulky because of the pocket being in the seam. Otherwise, that's how I started it. Anyway, so when you've done your handles, fold them in half, right sides facing, turn them right sides out, and um, then top stitch down both edges and make both handles in the same way. Um, now we're gonna turn the top of the bag over. I've just got to check the seam allowance, which I can't remember. Half inch and one inch, right. So we're going to turn the top of the bag over because it needs. this really does need to be non-fraying. So we're going to turn the top of the bag over by half an inch and then one inch. So again, if you measure, and I tend to do this on my ironing board, which is a nice padded surface, I'm marking, you can do it with a pin or you can use an erasable pen. I tend to use pins for this, otherwise I often catch one with the iron and then it rubs out. Measure an inch and then turn it over. And if you just paste those pins back in there, that will hold it just for now. And then you can press it. And then turn it round a little bit. It 
it depends you could judge this by eye if you wanted to but if you want to get it accurate or you haven't done this before this is the easiest way to do it mark with the pin double the measurement you want to turn over and then either put the pins in to hold it in place don't pin it down because we're going to turn it over again but you can usually do it in three goes if you've got when I've got my um, when I do it on my ironing board I do it on the end of my ironing board so that I can put this bag inside it that means that if you thread it through the end of your ironing board the curved end then you don't then inadvertently unpress a seam that you've just done which can happen by doing it on a flat surface like this you'll see what I mean if you get your ironing board and do that right so that's half an inch then we're going to turn it over by an inch this will give a really nice um, neat turned over edge but also it gives a little bit of depth to the top so it gives the top of the bag a little bit more structure so because I'm turning it over by an inch I'm measuring two inches and then I can turn it over now I tend to when it's a bigger one like this I do tend to pin it down now this end I would put a couple of pins in just to hold it in place so when you get to the the seam I always try and because this seam needs to match up with the top so I tend to make sure that those seams when you've got your inch over because you can do it this way as well in, instead of doing that double measuring like I did you can just measure and make sure that stays up I love how you explain why you're doing things like with the pinking shears shears easy is the great option really great demonstration for a beginner like me oh thank you Julie that's great well I think you have to be honest about these things that I do it with the pinking shears because it's quicker it's just quicker isn't it um, I'm going to do the other seam so you know for, for beginners if you've not done hemming before I'll show you from this angle start with the seam so again measure two inches and turn it over and then pin that then you will then your bag will be straight in between so just for speed I'm just going to pin it quickly in between when you do yours do measure because you know the extra 10 minutes it takes to measure it and get it just right means that you'll have a nice neat straight edge for your bag if you've been sewing for a while you're probably really good at just guesstimating what it looks like let me turn that one over okay so now I can press it when you come to press a turned over edge just press in the center because what you don't want are creases at either end so if you just press the center then turn it round and then press just the center don't press right to the edges because you don't want the creases right so now we're ready to add the handles so what you have to do is we're going to have to remove some of these pins rearrange the top of your bag so that you've got the left hand seam doesn't matter whether it's the front or the back just in from the edge and then take your tape measure we're going to have to take some of these pins out for a minute but it's just helped to get it flat and measure three inches in from the seam just in near the top and then also measure a little bit further down about a couple of inches doesn't matter as long as you've measured three inches from there to there now take one of your bag handles and place the short raw edge right into that top seam that you've pressed down and so that the outer edge of it is level with that pin and then this is the the second pin we're doing just to make sure that the strap is straight so pop a pin in there once you've got that that's nice and steady keep everything still take the pin out and fold that top over and then pin it together I always put my um, 
fingers between the bag front and back otherwise I always end up pinning the front of the back and then pin this one as well now that means that this strap is in exactly the right place and by pinning it here it's laying nice and straight now let's turn the bag over so that the other side seam is just a little bit in from the edge and again remove the pin you won't lose that top fold because you've pressed that measure three inches in from the top and then a little bit further down now take the bag strap and run it through your fingers to make sure it stays straight and then take the other short end and pop that up by that top crease and then make sure it runs it's got to be the outer edge not the inner edge level with that hold it flat pop that back over and then pin into place then I'm going to I've got time I'm going to very quickly do the other side so the other strap I mean the straps are identical there isn't a front and a back one but it's done in exactly the same way with your three inch measurement so take the other strap make sure that the short end is lying right up don't let it overlap the crease but just lying um, right into the crease now the reason that you do this is because obviously you might put back quite a bit of shopping in here and you want these straps to be nice and secure and not pull out without any extra security so this I, I worked out was the best way to get all of that to lie flat and then finally measure your three inches in from this side and remember you haven't got to remember any of this it's all of these measurements are in the instructions and the tutorial that I've done is exactly as the, I did it in exactly this way as I was making it so you can follow that as well so if you're a beginner this is quite a good place to start if you want to make a, a little bag right I'm just going to pin that into place and pin it a bit further down right so what I'm going to do now I'm going to sew it in place but around that bottom edge not around the top but around the bottom so where that bottom crease is I'm going to sew it into place I'm going to use a top stitch because it's a bit more decorative um, and I'm going to lengthen the stitch to about three you don't have to do that but I like to do that with the top stitch now stitch it from the wrong side so that you can see where the turn is and just lower your needle and about top stitching is about three mils so it's about a sixteenth of an inch up from the edge it doesn't matter too much but try and just keep what the measurement is but just try and keep it close to the edge but definitely within the edge so that you top stitch it in place so as you um as you sew it into place you are then securing those handles as you go and because you pressed it all it's quite easy if you're new to sewing just go slowly with this and if you go slowly you can see where your needle is just make sure that you are sewing it down but not too far up from the fold and if you go wrong don't worry if you end up not catching it down just take it out from under the machine unpick those stitches and redo them and it doesn't take long before you feel sort of quite comfortable with sewing straight right once you've done that we'll give it so now those we don't need these anymore that was just to make sure the whole thing stayed straight while you were sewing it in so you can take those pins out i would just give it a little press at this stage because it would just again set the seam and put those creases back in but when you do it put it around the end of your ironing board because then you can just do it, thread it round and you won't crease anything else now obviously our handles look a bit odd don't they because they are facing in the wrong direction so the reason I've done this is this is the extra security they, we now need to make them face in the right direction so we'll push the handle upwards now make sure that that strap is lying nice and straight and pop a pin at the top and then just put your fingers in to make sure you don't go through to the bag front and then then do that again right let's do the other one and then fold that one up um, 
Have I got time to sew? I'm going to sew that really quickly because I need to go back through the kits again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew along the top edge, again top stitch it so that you are um, close to the top edge. When you get to the straps, you, you can remove the pins, but this means that your straps are now held in with two rows of stitching. You've got that one at the bottom, you've got the one at the top, and also because they're folded over and back on themselves, it gives them extra strength so that they can't just get pulled out because sometimes when you sew a strap into a seam, it can get pulled out, but there's so much security going on here. So you can see really that I've, I've almost finished now, that other than sewing that pocket on, and I made the handles in advance, I've pretty much done this in about half an hour. Uh, give it a good press, and then turn it right sides out. poke out all the corners. So for doing the straps, I have actually, I've forgotten that, the per turning tools. For turning these tubes inside out, this is by far the best thing for it. The prim turning tool is absolutely brilliant. You can turn a tube right sides out within minutes. Um, if When you see the tutorial, I show you exactly how to use them. But these are fantastic. They're my top five favourite tools ever, but they will turn the tube out really quickly. So there's the bag. The bag is finished, except for the fact you've got to thread the drawstring. I won't have time to do that, but you thread it all the way through one casing. Oh, let me turn the right way. Start on this top corner, thread it through there, then round through there and then back out. You then thread the ends of that through the toggle and it's done. So. I'm going to show you next month, then we'll go back to the kits, yeah? So that's your bag done, that's your, stow, your shop away tote all done and ready, brilliant gift for somebody as well, easy peasy. Um, before I go back to the kits, let me just show you, so next month is April and um, it's the, oh I should have checked, I think it's the 23rd, can you have a look um, Ben, I think it's the 23rd of April, it's in the schedule. Um, it's all about the tulips. So this is the, is it the 23rd? It's the 23rd is tulips. So this is the, um, Amy's designed it, it's like in a, in a milk churn, beautiful display of tulips. That's the, um, the hand tied bouquet and the project that I've made with it, I've made it into a, oh it's the 17th, sorry. It's the 17th of April. Um, it's got a little button. All the pieces are in are on your panel and I've made it into a tablet case. Put your iPad or your tablet in or you could even put your sewing notebooks in. So that side, I've made it to fit nearly every size except for the extra large iPad Pros. But other than that, it fits all the tablets. And then on this side, you've got a little slip pocket and a zip pocket as well to keep all your pens and your pencils or if you wanted to put your earphones in there or your charger. And obviously you can save this to put in your quilt, so that's next month. So very quickly, I'm just gonna go back through the kits. So for the March kit, you get for $17.99 to make the whole shop away bag. Here's the panel. So you've got all the pocket pieces, you've got extra vases, you've got that one piece that you can keep for your flower shop quilt. There's the bag front, there's the bag back, there's the handles and full instructions and details of how to view the full video tutorial. So that's March flowers. So again, you can collect them for the quilt or you can just collect them because you want the project. February. February, which makes the hourglass cushion, which has the um, display on the front. You've got the hourglass blocks and you've got the cushion back pieces. All the pieces to make the hourglass cushion are on, I'll hold up the panel so you can see, they are all upside down. <laughs> 
So this is February, if you missed it last time, we have got some of these back in stock. But as you can see, you've got all the pieces to make the cushion, all the hourglass blocks, the cushion front and back, and you've got the panels, and you can then, you don't need both of them, so you can either put the hand-tied bouquet in the front of the cushion, or the display, or you, and then you can keep one for your quilt. And that comes with full instructions. Um, if you want the charm squares, so I've got March, so on this panel, oh, have we? Right, quick. Right, on this panel, we've got 40 five inch squares, all featuring all dis designs from the March project. And then if you want, like the February flowers, we've got 40 five inch squares. on that one or you can collect them all I'm thinking about putting the season ones together because I think if you put three panels like so the March April and May together to make like a spring quilt um, anyway thank you for joining me in this hour I will be back in just a couple of minutes time um, with Jenny Jackson who is going to be showing us the fantastic FPP strip of the month we are on the third strip so don't go anywhere um, if you're collecting them you'll need to be here if you haven't we do have the previous ones available I'll see you back here in a couple of minutes time Join us this Friday on Sewing Street. It's William Morris Celebration Day. We've got a brand new quilt. We've got brand new fabric. We've got brand new gifting. And we've got Amber Makes and Delphine in doing demonstrations. What more could you ask for? Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Hi, I'm Becky. I'm the soft craft expert for Crafters Companion. Um, I come from London and I've been sewing pretty much all my life. I particularly enjoy doing embroidery, I'm really keen on that, but I've, I've, my background is um, dressmaking and also sort of patchwork and quilting. Um, so I do an awful lot of sewing for all sorts of different things. I suppose once you start sewing, you start doing lots of other kinds of sewing. So I particularly like got into needlepoint um, during lockdown, but I suppose embroidery is probably my real passion. My mum was a costume designer, um, so we were always sort of surrounded by bits of fabric and material and ribbons and that kind of thing. And I was always making teddies um, and my dolls clothes as a small child. So it was just something that was quite natural. And in fact, I've got so used to being able to sew, um, it's just become a natural sort of part of what I do. Um, I'm always fiddling around with fabric, as my husband puts it, um, making something new, um, trying something out. Always measure twice, cut once. Um, I'm a great one for not doing that and I always regret it. And making sure that you've got an iron to hand is really important. I use a tiny little, um, sort of almost like a travel iron that I have right next to my desk when I'm working so it doesn't take up too much space. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, 
Then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself an overlocker. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Welcome back to Sewing Street, or if you've just joined us, welcome, welcome. So this hour, um, Jenny Jackson is here and she is demonstrating the FPP block of the strip of the month. I am indeed. Strip of the month. So strip we are on month. month three. We are. So tell me before we go through these about the strip of the month for anyone who's new to it and hasn't done it before. What's the point? The point is, it's, it's FPP. Yes. So foundation paper piecing mm -hmm. and it's suitable for beginners. So when you haven't done it before and you're, what is that all about? And so it is I'm sewing onto paper mm -hmm. using a template. So you get your points perfect. And it's just, once you get into it, it's really easy. Loads of people have been contacting me saying mm -hmm. they started their first ever FPP and they love it. I know, it's great. I've it's seen so loads of fun. messages on Facebook where they've said, oh, I've, I've, I've given it a go, always wanted to do it. It can seem a bit intimidating, can't yeah. it, to start with? Yeah. But this is ideal. It is so easy. And you build your confidence you as do. the months go on. And the on. first month is the definitely the easiest. Right, okay. And it is each month it's this one a new block repeated along the row. Right, brilliant. So you once you've got one block done, you're sorted. So this month is March's strip of the month. It so is. we've got the kits for that. So on the big quilt, March is row three. It is indeed. It's this row here. So it's a fan. Is it yeah, a fan? It's a fan. But it's all in the same tones and colourways. So yes, yeah, so we've got the blues and then we've got the pastels. So let me show you first of all the thing. This is massive. Look at this panel. Now the thing with FPP is you need quite a bit of different sorts of fabric so that you get a lot of variation. To but, hold to, them. but to be able to get all of the fabrics is and all in the right colourways, you need to sort of get it all from one fabric collection. So we've done the hard work for you. It's all here. So how many do we get? Ten. One, ten different fabrics. And there is more than enough here. Oh, yeah. You'll have leftovers. Because for a beginner, you need to be able to have leftovers. So look at all of these prints. They're beautiful. They're that really lovely, crisp sort of blue and white floral china effect. Yeah. So all of those fabrics, all on the panel, and that's a lot of fabric there. Um, then, instructions. Now, these are produced by Jenny. So let me show you. Now, the good thing about this is you've got all your templates. So here's all your instructions. It explains exactly how to do the FPP. I mean, obviously, Jenny's going to demo it here, but it really is. Look at the number of photos. It's step by step by step. It's holding your hand. It's if you're new to FPP, this is great. Obviously, if this is your third month, if you are a regular strip of the monther, you'll know exactly how to do it, but all of those basic instructions are there for you. Then... There's a template here if you want to photocopy it. So, because obviously you need one piece of paper for every block you make. Because once you've sewn on the paper, you rip it out and it's gone. You recycle it. So, if you wanted to make more blocks, or if you make an accident with one of yours and you need an extra one, you can use that to photocopy. So, this is on sort of nice thick paper, so it's um, you can keep it. But the actual FPP blocks, now the best thing to use when you're working on FPP is the thinner paper the better. So Jenny's printed these specially for you. You've got all the blocks you need ready to use but on a thinner paper which is what you need and they're all there so you don't actually have to print anymore. If you want to you can but to make this um, row you don't need to. So everything you need is there. You've got the instructions, you've got the fabric, you've got the paper. All you need is a reel of thread and a sewing machine. That is it. That's it. That's <laughs> it and hopefully you've got that. Yeah and the radio. 
or some music playing gently yes. in the background and a cup of tea yes i would say so that's march is um strip now if you're not a blue and white person you're more of a pastel person then jenny has designed the whole quilt in pastel as well she hasn't made up the whole quilt because she's doing that as she goes along yeah so should we have a look at it yeah in fact if you so have one end is, i'll hold the other oh it's folded in that is just um january january and february and then oh, i've made should we come over hang on which way do you want to come over, over here. here here we are three o'clock yeah, so right. that, that's January and February's, and I've made marches, but I haven't sewn. We're going to sew. She's going to sew that on next. At some point, if there's time. So you've got the um, like the flying geese yeah. shapes at the top, and then you've got the blocks, and that's February. So it's so pretty that one. That's that kind of, I feel that sort of like um, antiquey yeah, bedroom, spring. spring pretty. Yeah, it's just lovely because it's really tiny, ditzy prints. So that's what it will look like. And as the months go on, this is going to grow. It's yes. going to grow with you. So let me show you the um, panel that you're going to get. So look, there's the panel. So again, you've got your ten strips. Can you see they're really, really pretty? ditzy floral prints shades of blues pinks lemons lavenders it's gorgeous isn't it so it just depends whether you fancy pastel or whether you want to go blue um exactly the same instructions are with this you've got again you've got the full instructions with all the photo walkthroughs you've got the template that you can photocopy but you've also got all the printed templates you need it just depends whether you want blue or whether you want floral now if you have just joined um, the block, the strip of the month. You think, I'd like to go back and do this. We have got the February ones. At the moment, the January ones are out of stock. We are trying to get them back. But if you want the February ones, so that's the thing is that if you want to get involved, it's best get it now because then we do sell out. So if you want February, we've got the blue. This is the panel with the blue. Again, you know, the fabrics are all same colorways it will all go together the same as the march one exactly the same you get 10 floral prints there we go look at these so that's february and obviously again you get all of the instructions you get the template that you can photocopy and you get all of the templates already so that's for the february strip there it's beautiful but it's nice having you here on a weekday isn't it i know it's I very know. odd being here on a is monday because i keep thinking it's, it's sunday. sunday yeah i'm so confused well it's quite good because a lot of um our viewers they can watch in the week and not the weekend yeah or the other way around yeah it so. is really nice coming on a monday it's nice um, seeing people because it's usually really quiet yeah here on a sunday true. nobody hears yeah, them just us <laughs> get to see everybody so that's february um blue and if you want february pastel then that's this one. Um, if you want to make, so this is single bed quilt size, Yeah. I'd say. If you want to make a double bed, just get two of these. And then because the strips are the same, then just buy another one and then you just join them more, just make the strips double the length. And then that's your king size okay. bed. Yeah, we were talking about this last yeah. time, weren't we? I yeah. would do that. I would buy two and then and go. And make it massive. Yeah. yeah. And this is the pastel one that's for February. So exactly, so it will all go together. So if you haven't managed to get, um, if you've only just started, get February and March today. Um, we will get January's back in stock. So get them and at least you've got them and then we'll let you know when January's back in stock. And obviously with the February one, you get the full instructions as well. Always. So hope all that makes sense. Um, do message us in. You can either do that on Facebook or you can message us at Sewing Street if you've got any questions for Jenny or you want me to go back through any of the kits. Um, but we want to get on with the demo. Yes. Pastels in the lead, by the way. Oh, pastels it is in popular. the lead. So this is the pastel for this month. Should oh, we hold, I'll hold it together? That one. Yeah, should we hold that one out? Oh, that's so pretty. Isn't it? It's Clark? like jewels or fans. Yeah, they are like fans and I just thought it would be fun to rotate them yes on each each time each one yeah yeah so i will if if there's time on the show i'll show you how i would attach it right at least part way okay 
It's so pretty. It is. I I'm love that. I'm so enjoying doing this. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I really like, I like this. I'm making another it's... quilt as I go. Yeah. Because I'm demoing in the blue version. Mm, but then you're but making this. I'm still this... making this each month anyway so everyone can see. Well, it's nice to see it growing as well, isn't it? it? Is. Oh, I love it. It's so pretty, isn't it? It is. And do you know, my mum has never done FPP before and she bought January. Mm. I think she bought it last month to start. She oh, bought okay. January and February. And she's she started going She's done it well it's yeah. the sort of thing you can dedicate yourself like right this afternoon i'm going to just do one yep just one block and then you get carried away yeah so she what she did was she found some scraps of fabric mm. and she just did two blocks on oh, her just, own fabric right, okay. first and then each month she said she'll just do a couple of blocks using scraps just to get used to it first and actually at the yeah, end of it true. she's going to have something else she can oh, do yeah. with all oh, those practice true. ones yeah. yeah she can make something with those as well because so if you photocopy the master template yeah. Yeah. to do a practice with then yeah. you don't waste the fabric exactly okay yeah. so where do we start then so we've got the instructions right. we've got the kit we've taken it out of the envelope we've we pressed have. the fabric yeah so what you need to do is you need to cut all of the fat eights out from the panel. Okay, so all so of those them bits all of fabric are fat eights. Yes. So cut them all out. Yeah, cut those all out and inside the pattern it will ha it has the instructions and what you want to do is just mix all the prints up. So what I say is group them as well mm. as you're cutting so that you don't have the same fabric in one block. Right, okay. Obviously all the it will say that so on the back it has numbers. It will say if numbers need to be the same fabric. Yes. So the top, these four need to be the same, but these need to be different. So it doesn't matter which you use for which block? No, so I'll say in the pattern, I think I say from nine of the fat eights, cut this. Oh, okay, and so you tell them what to cut out from this Not which, yeah. which, mm. which fat eights to use, but like from, no, you will need this many from nine oh, fat eights. Oh, okay, so it and makes then sense. The next bit might say you need this many from nine fat eights, but you don't have to use the same that you used previously because you yes. still have another fat eight so just mix it up okay but i say cut it all first and then group it so you know that you need uh, i say what what fabrics are for what and how many you need per block mm. so i group it into blocks before i start sewing so right. then if i realize i've got two of the same strip left i'm like oh I'll just move that into that block. Oh, okay. So, just, so yeah, if you I cut like it to cut everything and first. All, lay it all out, then you can very easily move it around if you yeah, realise you've got just, two of the same colour yeah. before you sew it when yes. it's a bit late. Yeah, that's what I like. But you can. If you want the mm. same ones in the same block, you can do that. I like There's that. There's actually um, no rules. <laughs> that floral print back is lovely in the, the background, the white. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's so cute. I'm loving doing these. So I've cut, pre-cut what you need for these pieces there and then these ones you cut larger shapes but then you just need to cut those on the diagonal so when i say diagonal i just mean straight across from corner to corner like that and that's on both of these oh and that's the sort of the background yeah those are the background pieces but you need different sizes sizes there we go so then when you get your a4 template because i've printed it on a4 paper you just want to cut your template out you just want to cut your template out just beyond the dash line as you can see you can cut on the dash line but i think it's better to leave that little bit extra because then you know so long as when you're sewing all the fabric covers that piece of paper you know you're not going to have a problem so. Uh, Catherine says, how do you cut the panel? Uh, Catherine, just cut, cut out on the, on the outside edge of all of them. So when you've got your fabric panel, just, just cut along the edge between them all. So you cut them into eights. That's what you have to do. Yep. Scissors cut the white off and then down. Totally up to you, just so that you've got the rectangle of print fabric, but you can use a rotor cutter or scissors to cut it yeah, out. Yeah, so each Doesn't fabric really colour is... Like yes, yeah, so you've got eight attached. separate pieces of fabric. Ten, ten, ten. Separate <laughs> pieces of fabric. Just cut them out. But rotary cut or scissors are up to you. Yeah. Right, sorry. Right, so <laughs> I've cut the template out just beyond the dash line. And what I do is I will then pre-fold all along the lines I'm going to sew. Because I find then it's easier when you have to fold it all back at a later stage. So you fold them over to them so that it's right sides out. 
Yeah, I, I don't actually think it matters which way you fold it, but it's easier to fold it like this because then you can see the line you're folding on. Okay. Not everyone does this. I just find it much easier when it comes to later stages if you've already got that crease. Yeah, yeah. I know, well, I remember when I was first learning FPP and somebody actually stitched along those lines using no thread to make it perforated already, but I, I did oh, all I that. I feel like thought, the paper would completely I know, and it was then. very time consuming, so yeah. I never did that again. No, I did fold. think it makes it a bit fragile as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the paper might start tearing yeah. before I you know. even sign. But you know, you sort of watch all of these videos and everyone has a slightly different technique. Yeah. I thought that's a very strange one. Yeah, yeah. not gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're sewing uh, foundation paper piece and you want a small stitch length, I use 1.2 because okay. you want to be able to tear the fabric, uh, the paper off at the end. And first up is you want to cover your number one. So you flip the fabric, uh, the you know number one's there, you flip your paper over and you want to put wrong side of fabric against the wrong side of the paper. But you need to make sure that the whole of number one is covered by fabric at least quarter of an inch round the solid line of number one. But your piece is cut out too. Yeah, I've added extra. Really add extra. Yeah, so. I like to add extra because I think it makes it mm. less stressful for everyone. So I pin the first piece to the paper. You can use some glue, like sew line glue pen. It's whatever you like to do because it's quite a big piece so you want to pin the first piece there then what you want to do is then you're going to sew firstly between lines one and two so you need to fold over your that line between one and two this is when the pre-folding makes it yeah. easier because now it's already been folded once there we go and you want to cut off the excess fabric so this is where you use Add a quarter inch rulers are really handy. So have we got we've got those for you. Um, well, I would go for the twelve inch. Definitely for this block. So you can have six in. You can buy these add a quarter and six inch or twelve yeah. inch. But the twelve inch is better for this because of the length yes. of them. I mean, the six inch is absolutely fine. The six inch is a good length to have. But for this. <laughs> We're just laughing now. <laughs> oh dear. But the 12 inch is much better for this because it's longer than the length of the paper. <laughs> yes, it is. And that is what you need. <laughs> <laughs> Both got the giggles Those now. boys, right, right. So the, so the good £12.99 and they're yes. brilliant for FPP. They have. And EPP. It's really hard to get on the camera sometimes. Mm. Um, but they have this little, would you call it a nip? Like it's just a, a, ledge. a ledge. A ledge. A ledge that's, there we go, you can see it. So the quarter there. of an inch sticks out just a little bit. Performs like a, le by the tiniest amount, but it's it, a ledge. Quarter of an inch, exactly quarter of an inch. Oh no, the depth of the ledge oh, the depth, isn't yeah. very much, but it's a definite No, ledge. just a few millimetres. So what you want to do is on your folded piece of paper, you take that and you just... <laughs> right, we need to be sensible. It's Monday morning. <laughs> Right, you just um, pop that against the fold of the paper and then you're going to cut straight along the ruler like this. So when you take away that excess fabric, <laughs> Bex needs to go. <laughs> She's crying. Um, you've got exactly a quarter of an inch of fabric there. So now, it's all about, FPP is all about folding over the paper, flipping the paper over and adding fabric. So next you want to get your fabric that needs to cover number two. So I know because I've made oh, we've this got a block. question. Oh. Um, hi both, love the blues. Which month is the lady demonstrating please? We're confused by Glynis. Um, 
Jenny is demonstrating March because we're on strip number three and she is demonstrating with the blue. I am. But this is March. Yes. So that's the kit that's on the screen there. That's March. This is, that's the third row because we're doing one row every month. And I showed you the February one because we've got that for sale. That was row two. And row one we've, we're out of stock on, but she is demonstrating with row three, which is March. And you can get it in pastel or blue. Yep, and there's definitely going to be more January in stock. We yes, just need we to get some more. They've got my patterns. We need to get some more panels yes, printed. Yes, so they That's will be. Is. So yeah. if you want to join in, don't worry. Get the February and March day, then you've got them, and we'll let you know. Yep. Right. So we'll put the blue March on the right-hand side of the screen. I know that looks like the left to me. Oh, that's the pastel. Pastel is on that is on the left, and then blue will be on the right. Right. Sorry, I know it's really confusing. <laughs> and then um, Margaret says, "How do I add something to the wish list option?" Call centre. Phone the call centre. Oh eight hundred double oh one double four double three. There's the number. Can never get that right. Um, give the call centre a ring, Margaret. They'll be able to help. So blue marches to the left, to my left. <laughs> oh yes. He's coming out. I'm confused with left and right. <laughs> <laughs> ben, could you come and explain, please? Okay, so that's blue march. <laughs> that's blue march. And that is pastel march. Okay? Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Something it must look really strange. Something this massive head. A head. Just his head. That was Ben, by the way. <laughs> Brilliant. Monday morning fun. Right, so we're going to add the second fabric. So you want to put that right sides together with the first fabric you added. Again, there's plenty of fabric. You just line that up right sides together. And then what I like to do is I fold it back before I sew. I usually fold it back like this, leaving about a quarter of an inch just to make sure that the whole of section two is covered. Right. Often I sew in front of a light. My sister Susan, oh, my <laughs> week, you are awful. Um, Susan, it's not me, it's Ben. He's just, you, he talks to my ear and just giggles. I know. That's it. Know. Morning, ladies, and Ben. You are bright in my grey morning with your giggles. <laughs> I love Jenny's patterns. Oh, I thank know. you. I feel like, it's like being in school, isn't it, it is, when you get the giggles? It is. And Stuart's here today as well. No, and he's so worse. He is much worse. Terrible for giggles. Right, so I usually hide, hold it up to some light just to check that the whole of number two is covered by the fabric but i know i've given you plenty of the sizes i've told you to cut your fabric that is plenty right but it's just to make sure you've positioned it right as well because if you had it up there the bottom bit wouldn't be covered okay so you just need to check so when you're sewing with fpp i've said you need to do use a 1.2 stitch length so i'm going to hold this in place you can pin it if you're more comfortable and what you want to do is take it to your machine and sew you start just beyond the line you want to, uh, you're going to sew, and you finish just before the line you want to sew, and you finish beyond the line you want to sew. This is for when you're folding back the fabric to make sure that the stitches don't come undone, really. There we go. So, can we see this? We can't, can we? I've got my pedal the wrong way around. <laughs> There we go. So I'm going to start just before the line, just a couple of stitches, and then go all the way along. Laurie says, morning, Rebecca and Jenny. I love this quilt. Looking good, Jenny. Have a lovely day. Oh, who was that? Uh, Laurie. Laurie. Yeah. Oh, hi, Laurie. <laughs> and she's got a lovely dress on. She's blue cheetah today. Is it Always. cheetah? Leopard cheetah. Lucy, I'm not very good it's at animal one of them, You never know but... which is which. I do love this dress because it's super comfortable. It's really nice. <laughs> it's really nice. Right, so I've used white, so you can't really see, but I started here mm. just before the line and then ended just beyond the line. So next up, you Oh, so that you kind of stitch either side of the line. Yeah, just, right. just to give some extra stitching. And then you fold that fabric over and then I always use a... Um, it's going to get rid of the, a seam roller instead of an iron. 
but if you do use an iron use a dry one yeah use a dry one but i also find that it still curls the paper up and it just right. annoys me but <laughs> these i will iron it at the end but when i'm doing uh, just folding back mm. these pieces the seam rollers work so well right so next up is we want to sew between line two and three here and here so we're going to fold that line back See, this is where the extra stitching is useful because then you just have to pull it slightly, but the stitching is not going to come undone because it's those tiny stitches. Right. And that was because I'd folded wrong. There we go. So now we're going to trim off that excess fabric again using the ruler. So if you've got the add a quarter inch ruler, this is ideal. If you haven't got one, use your rotary cutting ruler and just set, let's set it up yeah, with the quarter inch Yeah, you can just mark. go like this. But it's just a bit quicker with that. I use that the add a quarter for loads of things, even if you're just like adding a seam allowance or you want a quarter inch hem yeah, or something. Yeah, I sometimes add my quarter inch round my EPP using that. Yeah. So I'll dot the the hexagon onto the fabric with some glue pen and mm. then just draw around oh, so once you've got that. it it's really useful for loads of things if you go onto um the website and click on watch live if you scroll down from there the rulers are listed oh and there's the glue pen if you want to use glue to stick on number one yeah right so now we open it out again and this is where we want to cover the whole of the number three section so i'll just grab the next next one like this right sides together again i will just flip it over just to double check i've positioned it well which is perfect hold or pin it in place flip it over and take it back to the sewing machine again start before the line and finish just after the line I'm just speed sewing. Don't sew that fast. <laughs> it's just so we get more done. Mm. Yeah, because you've got to stay on that line. You've got to stay on that line, <laughs> then you're ideally. Crying. Yeah, especially at the points because that's how you don't lose your points. Right, so then fold the, uh, the fabric over again. And so just even though we're your... on number three, this is still very, very beginner friendly. Oh yeah, the, the whole quilt big. is, the whole quilt is beginner friendly. It really is. I think this one we learn how to sew two pieces together per block so part a and part b right okay right but that's as complex as it's gonna yeah. get it's but it's just still not. yeah and all, i think because you've got such big pieces because you know <laughs> somebody does tp <sighs> tiny, tiny little tiny, pieces but, but the principle is the same it's, once you've learned this yes yeah, exactly the same every time so now we're gonna flip over again we want to cover number four and sew between number three and four so fold over on that the line again that you're about to sew and trim away that excess fabric you always need to remember to fold your fabric over once you've sewn the line or you'll end up cutting off the wrong bit of fabric we go so we open it out again take the next piece of fabric and again right sides together just check you've got it in a good position flip it over and take to the sewing machine so it's always the exact same thing every time you're adding a piece of fabric and now it's fabric over this is the bit you always need to remember to do you have to yes fold that fabric fold over over and yeah, don't but be it's tempted nice to just it's move a little on. bit of a, a production thing isn't it, it is it really is don't be tempted to not iron or roll the right. seams because then you're just gonna get you're not gonna get those crisp lines but it's supposed to be a nice Pleasant, yeah. mindful it technique. Really is. Although saying that, because these are big pieces, quick. It, it is quick. So flip it over again. Now we want to cover number five. So fold on the line between four and five. This is why I say fold your template first, because then it does make it easier. And we're going to trim off that excess fabric by putting the ruler against the fold you've just made in the paper. Open the paper out again, and next piece of fabric. 
making sure it covers number five. There we go. Hold it all pin in place, flip over and straight back to the machine to sew between one and five. It is so relaxing. Oh, I love four FPP machine for that sewing. Reason. I think it's the most yeah. relaxing machine sewing you can do. And the fact it's so accurate without yeah. you having to, um, well, obviously you need to sew on the line, but because the line's there, you haven't yeah. got to think about it. And You're it's like, not going to lose points when you no. sew the blocks together. And, the mo and to get that, it's so satisfying to get <laughs> such accuracy. It really is. And then fold the fabric over once again, seam roll it to give it that nice edge. And then flip over again. And now we want to cover number six. So you fold the line between five and six. Trim off that excess fabric again. See, it is, it is the same thing for the whole mm. block. And but I love it. But you see, it. that's how you learn things, it. isn't it? It's yeah. that repetition. Repetition is key. When I first did FPP, it took me such a long time to not have to go and watch, watch a YouTube again. Yeah. And then oh, one day, yeah, so many times, yeah. And then one day you go, oh, I've remembered. I don't even need to look. Because it's always just putting that first and second piece yes. together. Yeah. But sometimes if you have a long gap between doing it, that you're like, Which oh, I, is yeah, it right size, remember. wrong size? Da, da, and, then, and then one day it just, and once yeah. you've remembered, it's a bit like the magic circling, um, magic ring in crochet. It's that I had to watch YouTube about the first 10, 15 times mm. that I did it. And now, can you do just it. don't need to. Mm. Amazing. That took a bit lo longer than the FPP, FPP to be yeah, honest, because it was a bit of a more complex I thing. can imagine. So now we want to cover number six, and because I've cut it on the diagonal, don't feel like it's going to go like that. Be careful. It's not actually on this one. You're not going to put it against the diagonal line you cut. It's actually the straight line. So I've done this purely to save fabric and not to have to make you cut out individual triangles. We've got a message. Then you have minute. to measure everything. Minute. Hi Rebecca and Jenny, thank you for the tutorial at the NEC on Saturday. Made quilting less scary oh, than Barbara. thank you for coming. Yeah, I did an introduction to quilting, uh, straight line quilting and free motion quilting. Did you? Yeah, I gave everyone mini quilt sandwiches mm. and showed them tips and tricks on oh, how nice. to play. Fab! Yeah. Oh, Benny's gutted that he missed it. I bet he is. Right, so we're going to cover <laughs> number six. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to cut number six. But it's all right, because six. now he's said that, we'll make sure he's there next exactly, year. Exactly, I'll book him on. And he could lead the class. He could. And he could be your glamorous assistant. His tips and tricks. There we go. Christine says, I love the nails. Thank you. <laughs> There we go. So we're going to fold that over. So as you can see, that looks a bit weird from behind now, but it was just so I didn't have to give you instructions on how to cut triangles. It's better just to cut a rectangle, slice yes, it, and yes, it's just it going to work. Keep it, that's the whole aim of this quilt. Yes, and now it's looking really odd. It does Doesn't look, look like odd. That, that lovely one. I know, because we've not trimmed it. So we've only got two more pieces to add now. So flip it over and we're adding number seven. So you want to fold the line between two and three and seven because that's where the line is that you want to sew when you invented fpp i know who came up with mr. it mr foundation yeah just no like, idea who came up and thought i mean i get these let's sew on paper because it's straight lines but who worked out like you've got to put it wrong size i mean i guess it's obvious you'd have to but yeah, the but whole system yeah and you can't just design everything, anything. If you've, because I've tried designing, you, you know, you've got to get lines to cross and. You, yeah, so it's yeah. Very specific. The, you have to work it out. Work That's why, that out. for example, next month you can't sew all that in one block. So it you have to, do it to be in... split into two and then mm. sewn together. Right. So just making sure that's covered. Then we're going to flip it over and sew along this line. Flip that over and roll that seam open. And then the last piece is between four, five and eight. And this is what I mean about sewing between beyond the line. So as I fold this over, as you can see, I just need to pop those down because you've got stitching there, but because right. it's so small, it's not going to rip. Your stitches um, aren't going to come undone. 
and then trim off that excess fabric okay and this is the last piece so you want it to cover this triangle right sides together so do you always Flip have a little double check always just it doesn't matter case. how confident yeah. I am because I'm picking 1.2 inches, 1.2 stitch length is mm. horrible. It is horrible. Everything starts disintegrating, <laughs> hence the silly idea of perforating the lines first. I know, I unruffy. can't imagine. And that was, unfortunately, the first YouTube I'd ever watched on it as well. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first attempt. Yeah, and I thought, this isn't going to work, is oh, it? Oh dear. Right. So that is, once I folded this over, that is one block complete. I actually think it takes mm. longer to cut the fabric than it does and choose which fabric in each block than it does to sew them together. So now it looks a mess. Mm. <laughs> Look at all those edges. It looks what, nothing like that other it doesn't. one. So you're going to flip that over and what you're going to do is you cut away the excess. You do not use the dash line as your exact reference point. You use the straight line outside the block. What you want to do is you want to line up your quarter inch with the straight on the straight line. Because when you're computerizing things, sometimes that dash line could be a millimeter out. Right. But if you use your ruler against the dash. straight line, okay. then yeah. you're gonna get your quarter inch from your ruler like that so you can still see a tiny bit of the dashes there but again always against can you see that then yep against yep. my quarter inch of marking on my ruler is here so i'm just lining so that's that up the best place to do yeah. so put your quarter inch mark on the on your straight full line not the dashed line solid line that's mm. what i'm looking for isn't it that's the word so it is important to make sure that's lined up. Don't just quickly do it. Just make sure it's lined up at both like this end and that end of the solid line. There we go. And now the block looks right. <laughs> yes, it looks lovely. It looks like the other one now. It does. So what you want to do is I have actually given you the templates like how i think it's five one way five the other oh, way okay. to make it easier yes, instead yes. of you just turning them upside down <clears throat> which you could do anyway you could just sew them like this so right so, so you make all all nine all nine and then what i tend to do is i'll make all nine mm. then before i sew them together i'll get last month's out and oh, i'll just okay. um Place obviously them the all fabrics, underneath yeah, you just need... to make sure that there's none of the same yes. fabric touching. But that's just the way I am. Yeah. But it doesn't matter if there's fa the same fabric next but to each other. But it's worth it, isn't it? Because if, if you do it as you go along, then yeah. you can really see if it all exactly. looks nice and even. Exactly. So to sew these blocks together, you just put them right sides together. And you really want to line up the top and the bottom. And you're going to sew along your solid line but you start right at the top and go off the bottom not just a little bit before the line all the way from the top to the bottom so that's going to move when i take it to the sewing machine so i'll just re reline it up i don't think i've cut this very accurately now okay right so right from the top All the way off the bottom and now what I do is I remove always remove the paper from the seam allowance just which I've just just this bit now because then when you press it open it's going to press really nicely and also when you then sew it onto the neck the row yeah you're not going to get these little bits of paper that you then start having to pick so just take the seam allowance paper out yeah, just the seam allowance paper for now. And this is when I start using my iron. Often paper piecing will tell you which way it wants to go, but you can also, um, that's not on. 
Um, <laughs> Christine great. says she's Googled it, and FPP first came popular in the 18th and 19th centuries in England, although a 15th century Italian piece, the Impronator cushion, owned by Antonio Degli Agli, may have used foundation piece, piece in. Wow, 15th century. Mind you, then she says a similar process popular in Britain is English paper piecing, but it's not at all, is it? EPP's, EPP's like. hand sewing, I mean, yeah. And it's nothing like that. You at don't all. sew uh, across, Google. across the line. Google. So it's way older than I thought. Well. But they didn't have sewing machines then. No. Did they hand stitch along the paper lines? I don't know. Oh. Well, that would be a mission. We wouldn't be able to get that one point. Maybe two. it did start sort of then. And then Maybe, somebody yeah. modernised it. There we go. So I'll just. Sometimes I press them open, sometimes to the No, side. it doesn't matter then. It doesn't really. Whichever matter. you fancy. Yeah. So that is two blocks sewn together. Beautiful. Nice and easy. And perfect as well. Yeah. And then, so what I wanted to show you this time, because last time I got carried away, and I had already sewn February to January. <laughs> I'd got carried away. I was just loving it. So I was so, like, oh. one, so sew all them together. You've got your nine in your row now. Yeah. That's where we are. This is a lot too. What I'm going to do is I, you would want to have this flat all the way laid out on a table okay. or a floor. But what I'll do is I'll fold it like this. Just okay. So that we can, so then you want to get your. And you've already made sure the same colours aren't touching. Yeah, I think I did. Mm. Yeah. But even for this one. So what you want to do is you're going to attach this to this. So you're going to do right sides together like this, but do the whole row. I'm just going to show you on this bit here. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, we can see that now. And what you want to do is you can pin, obviously, but you just want to make sure your seams are lined up because they're all six inch wide. Every okay, block right. is six inch wide. Even some are eight inch long. But they're all they're six inches wide. They're always going to be six okay. inches, apart from the first row, which is three, but then two sewn together is six. Okay, so that they will match. They all match, right. yeah. And then all you do is, I've still got, some of these papers are falling out because I keep travelling with it. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. it's not travelling well. Um, you want to line up those seams, pin or hold, probably pin because it's a massive thing, but I'll keep relining it up as I'm sewing. And then you use this solid line as your guide or depending on if you're sewing this way you'll use this solid line if your paper has come out as you can see that piece is pr practically out you want to use a quarter of inch seam allowance right and it's going to be exactly the same but it's best to keep the papers in if least, you can if you yeah can. but then i would remove see i've removed the whole of january now Right, because I'm not adding. Remove I'm gone. Jan, remove because I'm January. not going to add anything else to it. Okay. And then what I started doing was when I sewed January, as soon as I'd sewed January and February together, these ones, before I pressed that seam, I removed the top right. ones because I didn't need those. I only needed the bottom ones really there. For yeah, the okay. But if you do get rid of all the papers, like I said, it's just quarter inch seam allowance. Right. Set your needle to quarter of an inch or use a quarter of an inch for Okay. So, so yeah, it is very easy. So line up and then you line just... it up. It's not going to be so, so easy. So do you pin yours or you just hold it? I hold <laughs> because I'm lazy. Like <laughs> <laughs> but also I'll be nice and set up so I know that I can and I'll take my time. Right. Okay. But right now, there's not really the room to do that. I'm hoping I'm attaching it to the right block. I am. So you just want to make sure that your six, the seams in between are nicely lined up. And you're just gonna sew. I probably won't go all the way along just because it's gonna be quite hard to, um, I've just realized that I haven't set my needle at quarter of an inch and some of the um, papers are missing. Um. And I haven't got quarter, the quarter of an inch foot on either. So what I might have to do is eye this. Guesstimate. Yeah. Do you not have markings on your plate? Probably. Oh yeah, there are. <laughs> I think the problem is though, if you have a quarter inch foot, you get used to. Um, yeah. You don't look at the plate anymore. You just use your I foot. I never. Yeah. Spoiled by my foot. Mm. So 
but yeah, I've got it all rolled up, so I'm thinking I'm gonna start sewing like six layers together and then the quilt will be like a roll. <laughs> there we go, so. I would try and press all of February's to the left, for example, the seams, oh, and all of okay. March's to the yes. right, so that when you're joining these blocks together, you can oh, nest the seams, true, but it is not a necessity. No, so if you did them open, then you or just did match them, them, but if you press them to one side, just try and, well, you'll see which side you pressed the last month to. Yeah, exactly that. And then they'll nest nicely. Yeah. See, I've got the block. See, I'm sewing on top with uh, February's on top mm. and March is underneath, but you can just sew from the other end and oh, have March okay. is on top. It's totally up to you. Yeah, see what you mean, yeah, so you can choose. So if the papers have fallen out of February, then you'll be all right with March. Yeah, so basically I should have sewn March's on top because February's have all come out. Yeah, but, but I just chose not to do you that. Know, it's your quilt. Do what you like. <laughs> There's no rules. Nobody will be coming round to your house good, Jenny. Mm. Why was you? Why did you do that? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you just keep going along. I'll get to the end of this seam and just open it out to show you. Hello, lovely oh, ladies. Can you tell there? me if there are any January kits left? I'm late to the party. Oh, uh, Karen, there aren't at the moment, but there will be. There yeah. will be. We're just getting them reprinted and we will let you know. So, Definitely if they I have was you, I'd get February, March today. Jenny will be in with April. Yeah. On the, um, yeah. Which date? On April. 23rd. Is it the, tw is it the 23rd? 23rd, 26th, 23rd. Oh, yeah, know. it's Charlie's birthday. Oh, is it? Yeah. Aww. Yeah. So she'll be in on the 23rd and hopefully we will get them back then. So don't worry if you're late. Get your February and Marches today in either pastel or blue. Yeah. Totally they've they've got you. the pattern ready. It's just they've got to print all the panels. That's it. Right. So okay. it's definitely going to be back. Um, and then what you can do is get her. You can do February and March and then you can get the January and we'll have that either end, January and April. I'll finish that. Because quite often, you know, we it's you sort of think, oh, well, people join from the beginning, but not everybody watches all day, every day. So it's oh, fine. Oh, no. Just no. pick it up and, you know, you can be, you can join at the end. Yeah. But it's nice if you join at the beginning. Closer because then you to can the make beginning. Them. Yeah. You can make them all. I like yeah. that. So I haven't. So you would sew the whole all the way along. Don't yes. stop halfway like I have. It's just because <laughs> I'm going to have to double sew, unpick, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to show you now what I would yeah. do would be get rid of all those. So how do you seams. take the paper out? Because we you haven't done that. You just tear it away from the seams like this. Okay. Because you've used 1.2 stitch length, it's going to tear easily. So, well, so this is the reason, you know I said before, when she, once you've sewn two blocks together, yes. take that seam allowance mm. paper out. That is because if you don't, then you would have had some paper stuck in here. Oh, I see what you mean. And then you have to get the tweezers out to pull it, and it just yeah. takes longer. But yep, so now you just... I can tear these ones now because I don't need them anymore in there at all. And they're nice big pieces, so they're very okay oh, yeah. to get out. you don't get loads of paper. And if you really have got little bits, you could just get a pair of tweezers and... But it's just coming out so easily. Or put it in the washing machine when it's finished. Shouldn't they dissolve <laughs> or something? Probably. Slightly disintegrate, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe just have paper pulp in the back of your quilt. Oh, yeah. Or your, or your um, washing machine. Yeah, that's true. Clogging up the... Yeah. Um, things but these are big pieces so they're they okay are, to take they're out. really easy to take out and you know like i said i've got rid of that seam prior to sewing so you haven't got all the bits that mm. get caught so you do just peel it out like that brilliant right i'm just going to go pin. back yeah. through, through the kits then so i'm going to start with march pastel because that's the one that um jenny's just been ripping apart so in the kit you get now there are less than 50 of these left What's that then, Ben? And then more than 50 in baskets. So if everyone checks out, we're going to be sold out. So if you want this March strip of the month in pastel, you need to get checked out. Remember, you get full instructions with lots and lots of very... I wish I'd had this before I watched that stupid YouTube video. <laughs> um, really, really clear 
Um, yeah. Step by step. I will keep doing those photos all the way through. Well, it's usual because you've because done it for that particular exactly. block. Exactly. So I always change them. It's just because every block's slightly different. Because the problem is, is when you watch a tutorial that's generic, it's not doing what you're doing, is exactly. it? Exactly. So I'm just changing the photos every mm. time. And obviously the words, because some of it, like next month, is going to be part A, so it'll be A1, A2, okay. and B1, B2. So we're moving on a little so, bit. Yeah, but That's then we're nice. back again. And then we the go back one. again. Yeah, so it's really just easy. And <laughs> then you get the master template. This is on the thicker paper. Don't use this one because it's not good for zoning through. This is if you want, if you mess up any of the others, so you need to photocopy another one, or if you want to make your quilt bigger, or if you want to use it for something else. Yeah, then. you could even shrink that template down. Yes. Yeah, so do a cute little cushion with it. You or could do, couldn't you? Yeah. There's so many things you can do If you wanted to make a little it. cock quilt, miniature. Be yeah, so sweet, it wouldn't it? Fabric. So when you come to use them, don't use this thicker one because you need the thinner paper. You'll never tear it out and your machine won't be very happy. So that's those instructions come with both of them. Now, this is the pastel version. Do you want me to hold it up with you so we can see it even better? Yes, shall we? I've got to get it the right way up then. Where's the words? There, there we go. So this is the pastel. So these are fat eighths. They are. Which is a fat quarter cut in half. And a fat quarter is um, fabric cut across the full width of the fabric and then half a metre yeah, then cut in half. Yeah, I decided on fat eighths so you could get more colours, more yes. prints. Yes, and it's nice to have all of these prints. So you cut all of these out along the lines and then you've yeah, got different Yeah, just along prints. the lines, get rid of the white as well. And then you've got the eight prints ready to use. Yeah. So that's the panel with March. Um, with pastel. Now, if we want Blue March, um, the instructions are exactly the same. You've got the walkthrough photos, you've got the more solid template, and then you've got them. So you don't actually have to photocopy or print anything. All nine printouts are in there, because obviously once you've finished it, the paper gets torn away, so you can't reuse them. This is the March panel. I've got this one the right way up now. So this is March in blue. Beautiful, it's very crisp, very um, pretty. And also, what's great is the scale of the print is important with FPP. Yeah. Because you want reasonably small print so that it yeah. shows up and also multi directional. Yeah, because it's hard. Yeah, isn't with it? stripes and it's hard at the way. Yeah, and we're starting to go lighter now. We're getting to the lighter before it goes dark uh, again. Yeah, so if, you look, so if you look at the quilt that's behind Jenny, you can see it starts dark, it goes lighter, and then it gets darker again yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, it does. So that when you're in bed with it and having your toast and your cup of tea, yep. at the top bit, doesn't matter if you drop it. No, it doesn't. Because <laughs> nobody okay. sees it. And when the dog's sleeping on the end of the bed or the cat, yep. that's the dark bit as well. Exactly. It's invented for tea toast to dogs and cats. And I thought about that. Yeah, that was Jenny's plan. Before, yeah, exactly. Whereas the exactly centre bit, you see, nothing goes on there. So no. It's fine. Exactly that. <laughs> Because my dog always sleeps on the end of the bed. In the day, I don't let her do it at night. Right. Otherwise, she'd be under the duvet and everything. Yeah. Um, right, if you want February, um, pastel or blue. So, again, um, February is this line here. Yes, indeed. Which are squares They're within squares. Almost economy blocks, but like double economy blocks, I think. Okay. Squares within triangles and squares. Yeah, so it's all squares, but you cut squares out and then you Triangle. cut them on the diagonal. That was a good one. To so that's show. the February one. Yeah. Um, so in the instructions, we've got. Uh, I can do pastel. Um, again, you've got all of the walkthrough pictures, and these are tailored specifically to this block, which is much better, isn't it? Um, you've got your master template, and then you've got your nine photocopy templates, but in um, thinner paper, which is important. So Jenny's done like the instructions in the thicker paper, but the templates are in the thinner paper. And then this is the February pastel panel. So what you could do, you see, if you wanted to make one and make, because once you've learned how to do this, make one for you, one, one to give someone else. Or I know people who've bought it and they want to make it for two different people, like two sisters yeah. or something, or two yeah. siblings. Make one in one colour and one in the other, and then you can just keep going because it's yeah. the same pattern. So that's the pastel one. Then you end up with two quilts at the end. Yeah, but what you can do, there is always some fabric left over, so you can either keep that and do a really scrappy binding around oh, the edge. Oh, that would be, yeah, so I would do that. So all your scraps together yeah. and, and do that. That would be or nice. Or you keep it and make, uh, shrink the 
block okay. down and make a matching cushion or something at brilliant the end. Um, and then we've got the February blue and white one exactly the same so you've got the same instructions you've got the blue and white panel that's up there 99 to how many five of these are left and we've got 23 in basket so if you, anyone who has got any of these kits in their basket get checked out um, thank you so much, Jenny. I'll see yeah. you back here at 11 with EPP and Needle Turn Indeed, Applique. Two, new te two techniques. This is the Needle Turn um, Applique. You're going to love that. Um, I'll be back here in a couple of minutes' time with Stuart, who's got three kits for us all about the rainbow. So don't go anywhere. I'll see you back here very soon. Hello, my name's Rebecca Harrison. Uh, my background is in theatre costume, so I've made uh, costumes for film, TV and theatre. Um, I began to sew when I was at school, in primary school, and I also uh, did a lot of sewing with my mum at home. Um, one of the first things that I ever made um, was this little mouse, um, and I hand sewed her at primary school. I think I was eight or nine. Um, when I did her, um, and I treasure her, she's, uh, she, she's, I just love her, so her head's, her stuffing's gone in her head, so she's a bit wobbly. Um, my favourite things to sew are corsets, um, probably because of my uh, period background, um, but I just love them, I've got one here, um, I love the structure of them, um, the shape the bones make, I, I just think they're beautiful. Um, and the fact that through the ages they've changed to uh, make women's shape different um, and I find that really fascinating. Um, my claim to fame is um, because I've obviously uh, doing costumes for film and theatre I've been lucky enough to meet um, a lot of famous people so um, I've met people like uh, Dame Judi Dench, uh, Kate Winslet, uh, Juliette Binoche uh, lots, oh gosh, lots and lots of people, lots more than I can probably, I haven't got time to say them all. Um, but yeah, just, and, and all around the building where I used to work um, in London, you'd see lo lots of people, Christopher Lee, Sir Richard Attenborough, um, yeah, just lo lots and lots of people. Um, so it was, it was really lovely. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I feel very privileged to do what I do. I love my job and I'm very lucky that I get to do it every day. Um, and I really enjoy being on Sewing Street and uh, demonstrating um, how to make things and um, hopefully inspire you uh, to, get, to get sewing. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Join us this Friday on Sewing Street. It's William Morris Celebration Day. We've got a brand new quilt. We've got brand new fabric. We've got brand new gifting, and we've got Amber Makes and Delphine in doing demonstrations. What more could you ask for? Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street. You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app, onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. 
And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Uh, welcome back to Sewing Street. Um, all welcome if you've just joined us. So we've got Stuart Hillard in the house. Hiya. <laughs> Morning. Hi. Morning. Morning. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Good. Have you had a nice time just relaxing on the sofa? Do you know, I really have, and I've been distracting everybody. Have you? Nobody's been able to do their work Who properly have you today. Seen? Just everybody. I distracted Jenny Jackson to the point that she was nearly late she on air. She was actually nearly late. And yes. then I went and distracted all of the office staff. I'm mm -hmm. just I'm doing the rounds today. I'll distract <laughs> you now. <laughs> That's quite nice though, isn't yes, it? Yes, I'm just in one of those moods. Mm. I'm in a chatty mood. So you can just go round, wander around the building and see yeah. everybody. Yeah. That if I good. see somebody doing work who looks like they're on a deadline, That's I'll you, just yeah. stop them. Yeah, and just yeah. go, oh hi, do you want to hear about me oh, yeah i just pull a chair up and sit down <laughs> anyway how are you yeah, and they're like furiously typing no but really yeah. how are you yeah I'm fine, are you well you. Good. Yeah, I'm all good good are Glad. you well i am i really enjoyed seeing so many of you at the nec oh, so how was pleasure that? I missed it. Was it, good? it was glorious it was great fun We'd got Delphine was there, mm. and um, Emma Bradford was there nice. as well. Uh, Kerry from Living in Loveliness. Jenny was there. Jenny Jackson yeah. was there, and also Adam Brooks yes. was there, hanging out with the Dukey boys. Mm. And um, yeah, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Busy. Watched a bit of a fashion show, bought mm. some fabric. Lovely. I don't. If I don't have enough, you definitely don't no. have enough. I always end up by. I come back from these fairs, and I'm like, why have I got all this fabric in my bag? Ooh, you why? think where did it come from? Why? I know. It's just so in there. Kleptomania. I know. I just get a bit carried. I do actually pay for it. Anyway, so this hour is all about the rainbow. Somewhere over the... Somewhere over the rainbow. There is a place. I am literally over the rainbow. I'll never be over the rainbow. I just love all colours. They're just it's beautiful. Yeah. So we've got a few different projects from me. So we've got two bags. Yes. We've got a quilt in two... And that's the one behind one version. you. Yeah. yeah. And we've also got a pattern. We've got a few patterns on their own, but we've got a pattern. And I'm going to show you how we can bring the rainbow even into that. Brilliant. So I'm going to start with the quilt. Lovely. So the floating stars quilt, that is the one that is floating behind Stuart. Mm -hmm. Now, in the kits, it's fantastic. You get full instructions written by Stuart so you know that they make sense and that they work. There's even a picture of him that you can look at while you're sewing. <laughs> Deface. Yeah. <laughs> Grab yourself a fine sharpie. I mean, oh, you can't draw a moustache on it because I've already got one. No, but I mean you can do horns. glasses, horns. Horns. Yeah. horns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always moustache, horns, glasses, isn't it? Whoever I love it is. It. Yeah. <laughs> always. Absolute. Beauty spot. Everything. Ears. I've got them. Mm. <laughs> I've got them already. More. So everything you need is in yeah. here and a space to write your notes. Yeah. So that's the full instructions. Then you get this amazing two panels. Yeah. So so this kit bex is to make the pastel version. Yes. So, so the one that's hanging behind me is the bright rainbow right, okay. with black. And this is the pastel with grey. So pastel. it's the same as the one behind Stuart, but just paler. Yeah, that's right. So you get on here 40 rainbow squares but pastel rainbow yes 
These they are, are beautiful, thank aren't they? Thank you. Yeah. Well, what I wanted was I wanted a bit of a. I wanted to be a bit distressed. It's a bit Tim Holtz. Yes. Isn't it? Can yes. I say that? You can say a little. But it's can. layers, isn't it? And That's slightly right. distressed. I like that. And with the odd numbers and yep. the and a little bit of sort of sewing yeah. ephemera in there as well. But yeah, it's lovely because it's just like little snippets of, isn't it? Exactly right. Love that. Nothing's directional, so you can use them this way and that. Right, perfect. Well, in the sense that I don't mind, it's still a seven, whether it's upside down yes, or side yeah. to side, you know? Um, and and you've got 40 squares here. that You use all 40 squares in the floating stars. Okay. But you can also get this panel on its own, and there's so many other things that you could right. do with this okay. panel. So that you get that panel in the kit. Mm -hmm. So so far we've got the instructions. We've got this panel. You also get this panel in the kit. Another one. Yes. Not another one. Another one. Not another one. You do get another one. You get another one. So this is the two and a Ooh. half inch strips. And what I've done is I've split them down the middle. So normally they would be um two and a half inches wide by 55 right but what i've done this time is i've split them down the middle so you've actually got that sort of 27 and a right, half right and then you get it? double the number you get double the options you still get the all the colors mm. but you get different options in the same colors different tones different textures so you right. can really mix it up now just to show you how that works within the quilt Bex. Okay. You use all of your squares, your five inch squares, for the five blocks. So each one uses eight squares. Yes. So five eights, 40, mm. that's your, I do maths as well. Fantastic. Do you know? Fantastic, genius. And then your strip piece, yes. your strip panel, you're going to use for your setting ah, triangles okay. and for your corners. So although they have the look that, that you've spent ages sewing together strips. Yeah, and but you haven't. You've actually just cut them out of a panel. However, the instructions also include how you would do these if you use, say, a two and a half inch jelly roll, uh, where okay. you're sewing them together. Yeah. So if you used it for something else, yeah. you could... Or if you were gonna use just like a feature fabric. Mm. So if you were getting the pattern or you wanna reuse the pattern, you could use a charm pack for these stars and then you could use one like large scale print doesn't have to be a stripe right okay for your setting triangles Perfect. plus one background oh I've it's so black pretty because i love that kind of here. distressed layered effect it's really nice it's lovely isn't and then it? you get with this one you get the gray fabric so you get a meter and that's free so because you're getting the instructions the two panels we're putting the gray fabric in for free yeah and, and what I'm going to say stars. as well is that you could mix and match actually because the pastels would also look really nice with either a pastel shade as your oh, yeah, light true. or several or black would also look really yeah. good with the pastels if you want them to pop. So you're getting the grey for free. So if you wanted to change the colour up, you need one metre. Oh, okay. So that is the floating stars. Yep. Right. Now, we've also got, if you love those panels, because we've gone through them, it, this is the first time that we've ever sold the panels on their own, not in the kit. So if you want to buy the panels on their own, this is the strips one, and when we, Stuart and I have just shown you, mm -hmm. we're just to remind you. Just folded that up nicely, yeah. and now we're getting it and back out again. And we'll get it all out again, again then. Yep. So if you want the panel just on its own, nineteen ninety nine today, you are getting 32 half strips that's correct they're two and a half inches wide they're approximately 27 and a okay. half inches long each one so obviously across the full width it's 55 mm. now that actually you could just layer up yeah quilt it mm, just like that bind it with the, Hang say, it the on silver. a flagpole. You could put it up as a flag, <laughs> you could. It would make a great beach quilt or yeah, a would. picnic quilt. Yeah. I think it'd be a really nice baby quilt. You know, it when would you be a to just lay on the floor quilt. when you've got the baby or play mat. It would be beautiful, yeah. wouldn't it? But I'm also actually going to show you how you can use this panel with another of my patterns, the garden maze oh, pattern, okay. to create a rainbow garden maze. Right. So I'm going to show you how to do that so in this show. don't forget about this panel. Yeah. And we'll, well, we will remind you and then also for the first time we have got the charm squares rainbow panel beautiful isn't it 
So again, so, that one, now you could make the rainbow stars, the floating stars, and then you could add your own fabric. Maybe you've got a K mm. facet or a tulip oh, pink, okay. yes, something that's true. like that. And you could do your setting triangles mm. different. You might have a barley pop. You might have um, the uh, celestial solids from tulip pink that you want to use yeah. for your background. You could do that too. Um, but also those squares, of course, can be used in any uh, pattern that uses charm squares. You've got 40 five inch squares. Personally, I would layer that up with batting and backing. Mm. I would quilt between the white lines. Oh yeah, that would be nice, wouldn't it? And I would bind the edges and I would have that as a glorious, like my summer table runner. Yeah, that'd Especially be lovely. Especially out in the oh, garden. Yeah, outside in the garden, have yeah. that over the table. That's beautiful. And I would have, I would have the cocktails here. Yeah, obviously. I would have the small nibbles, like mm. your sort of mini pretzels. Yeah, yeah. And your dry roasted peanuts. Okay. And your probably your mini cocktail sausages mm. there. Here I would have things like the quiche, the salad, right. and the potato salad and the coleslaw. Mm. And then probably down here I'd have a banoffee pie. I think that's a really good idea, isn't it? Mm. And then you can make sure the right things stay safe. Mm. Please don't mm. move mm. the dry mm. roasteds. Mm. 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 They sit on the red. Yes, you can choose anything from the orange section. Don't touch the blue. <laughs> yeah, and definitely keep away from purple. Yes. So that's the Charm Square panel. <laughs> that is brand new, available today on its own. That is a be that's a really good idea. Pretty. Mm, yeah, I like that idea. Have we got the floating stars pattern on its own? We do. We do, don't yes, we? Yes, also we have the floating stars quilt pattern on its own. So if you want to use your own fabrics, you don't have to use the pre-cut ones in, that are in the kit. If you want to use your own, there's all details here of how to use pre-cuts, but how to use solid pieces for around the edge as well. 9 99 for the instructions just on their own beautiful isn't it well like i say you could use that pattern with a charm pack mm. so one charm pack one meter of something for the stars and the sashing and the outer border mm. it doesn't have to be the same fabric of course you could use fat quarters and mix and match but in total a meter and then your setting triangles you could pick say for example you were doing this in french general oh Can you that's imagine? my favorite that would be good How did you, you know? french general mm. for all your backgrounds yes something like a lovely warm i'd have a calico biscotti or a calico, a calico in something there. like that or a lovely warm tan mm. right and then pick one of the larger scale perhaps one of the florals from french general mm. to do, yeah, to do your setting ones, yeah. triangles and that would be stunning it would look totally different oh yeah that's that's this weird thing isn't it, it would look completely yeah. different but beautiful. i'm all about designing patterns that look good no matter what fabric you throw mm. at them you might have some lovely tilde or a charm pack and some yardage you might have fat quarters you don't have to use a charm pack you could have fat quarters mm. you could have all these backgrounds the same these could be light this could be your patterned fabric if you want to. Yes, you I just thought it was yeah. fun to flip the usual mm. tradition yes. on its head and have the background fabric as the star mm. and the sort of star fabrics as the background. But yeah, you can change it. I'm with it's the, the instructions. Kind of crazy you guy, I am. You're just, you're just crazy. I'm, crazy mad. I'm just mad. I'm just mad. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the pattern on its own. Right, let's move over to bags now. So we've got the. Um, the panels now with the panels the instructions are on the panel so it's all together in one go so i'm going to start with brights so this is stuart's bag mess stuart's and brights a messenger bag so tell me this, i'll show you first this is the panel now look the panel has all the pieces you need for the bag yeah you've outer got and outer, lining outers you've got flap linings you've got handles and then on the bottom are the instructions so everything you need is in here and everything is labeled as well so it's really easy to see so talk me through the bag then what absolutely does the bag do? will do okay so it is a crossbody messenger so it's designed i'm never quite tall enough <laughs> There we go, and <laughs> back on your heels. So it's a crossbody messenger. Mm. So it's designed with a um, long shoulder strap with a slider. You can have it as a fixed length if you prefer, if you prefer just to wear your bag over your shoulder. Um, front flap, 
and then inside, nice and quilted, you've got a lovely big space inside, all your linings included. Um, you've got pockets at either side. Nice. If you wish. You've also got a big oh, pocket, a pocket across the back, mm. which I've divided down the centre. You don't have to. You could put a popper there. You could put a little tab. Okay. But here's the thing with this pattern. I've designed it so that actually the front flap, the front of the bag, the back pocket are actually all grey plaid. The okay. rainbow comes as oh. two long strips. I mean, that's just yummy, mm, isn't it? It is gorgeous, That's just yeah. yummy. So, so this comes on the panel. And so what you do then is you start getting all fun and creative and liberated. So and you, you could keep it all plain on the outside if you wanted if to you and, wanted and to, rainbow on the inside. You can do that if you want. But what I've done is I have slashed into the panel mm. and I have put in these segments i've done the same on the back i've done the same down the pockets and so when you we kind get to of the personalize it you'd be totally. wherever you want yeah, now i did nice. send a couple of pictures in to the studio email just before mm. we came on air celia sent me some pictures a couple of days ago celia made the bag mm. this one and she did her own version using oh, okay, the panel yeah. creatively. So we'll show you that in mm. a second. She did a fabulous thing where she'd put a, a run a strip of rainbow all down the shoulder strap, which looks absolutely gorgeous. Well, it's gorgeous. nice, isn't it? So you can keep it plain. You can put a little bit on, or you can really go for it. So it's entirely up to you. But oh, look, there's the yeah, picture. Here it is. Here's so this seniors. is the front. So there's the front flap. She's actually run a line of black through the middle oh, as well. Nice. There's that shoulder strap, which is stunning. And then if you have a look on the back of the bag, so what uh, Celia's Whoa. done on the back of the bag is to actually use the lining. Right, to put on the back. She's used that for a rainbow pocket on the back just to really celebrate all that lovely colour. It's gorgeous, isn't it? But you it? can do it as understated as you like. Well, that's lovely. So you can really personalise. So everything is on the panel. You've got so much on here. It's massive. Nineteen ninety nine. Look at the size of it. You get all of this fabric. You've got all of the lining. You've got the straps. You've got the outers. You've got the pockets. It's all on there. And the instructions are printed there too. So nineteen ninety nine for the full panel. That's the Brights one. Mm -hmm. But if you prefer it, you want it a little bit, uh, a little subtler. Softer, subtler. Mm -hmm. Then maybe a bit springier. Yep. Yeah. Um, we have the pastel version. So this is the panel. Again, you've got that plaid, but in a sort of silvery grey. Mm -hmm. All of the rainbows are like a pastel rainbow. So that's the whole panel. Again, you've got those strips as well that they use to personalise it. And then this is what it makes. Right here. So you can see, if I can stand it next to the um, dark one, I've positioned my strips much more differently. I, I went across the centre with my pastel strips. Um, I have lined the pockets at the side, but I haven't added any rainbow at all to them. And then across the back of the bag, I've gone with one simple strip straight across the middle. So it, it all comes down to how rainbow are you? Yeah, that's and true. And then you've got that lovely mm. pastel rainbow lining inside as well. Um, so you can really personalise. Now, if you want to, you could add in your own lining throughout the yes, bag that's true. and then you can utilize mm. those rainbow fabrics for other things you could make a matching purse you, bet, you yeah. could add pockets inside mm. you can really see i do quite like an outside pocket so i can grab things yeah i but i think it's lovely that you can keep it as plain or as pretty or as bright as you want it mm. to be and and the fact that you you can follow the instructions completely or you can really personalize i think yeah. it's a really good idea and you need bosal for this yes so i use form. bosal in our form and so that gives it that lovely structure and and it does give it a lovely smart structure and i think you do need that now if you um wanted to you could use a quilt batting you could use mm. h640 okay but it would be a softer structure right so i would recommend in that's our form. better isn't it mm. okay so have we got the in our form? So how much do we need? One pack. Oh, just one pack. Well, like one half meter. Right. That will that will. And that's enough. More so than do it. get yep. that now, 
and then it's all there. Yeah, the other things that you'll need, if you've got a bit of medium weight fusible interfacing for the shoulder strap, mm. grand. Sometimes okay. if I don't have that, I will grab my calico Oh, and, just and I will in. put an extra layer of calico and sew it in. Oh, okay. It just gives it enough sti stiffness. A little bit of structure. Just gives it a little bit of structure. So that's the basal in our form. You'll just need one pack of that. Yeah. We do have the interfacing as well if you need that. Now, um, you don't have to put any metal wear in the bag if you don't want to. You can put fixed straps. In that case, don't do the tabs and just sew the straps straight mm. into the bag. That way, then, you won't need the strap slider either. Um, and it'll just be fixed. Brilliant. So you can do it with metal where you can do it right. without. So there's all of those options on it yeah. of what you want to do. But that's yeah. a fantastic price. So all of those are on the website. If you go onto Sewing Street Dump, Com, click on watch live you can see them on there and then the final thing is the garden maze quilt instructions yes da, 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 on their own because Stuart's going to show us how you can use the rainbow panels that are available individually I've just talked about how to make this quilt with them yeah so 9.99 for the garden maze quilt instructions right I think we've done everything now we're ready for you we have we have Go so through. I'm gonna start off by going off piste obviously okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you I'm gonna use the garden maze and I'm gonna use the pastel strips and the pastel squares to create my own version right. of a rainbow garden maze brilliant okay which I might call Tim's garden <laughs> why not who's Tim who's Tim who's Tim <laughs> right so what I've done so for the center of the garden maze block you need a square okay now um, the squares what I've done the squares aren't big enough right for yes. the pattern so what I've done is I've taken some of my squares I've sewn them together mm. and I've trimmed this to the correct size oh, okay. so I've actually got a four patch center for my for my block so what I'm going to do now I've got and I'm going to team black with my pastels this time because mm. I mentioned that you can use black yeah, if you, you said prefer. that for the um the quilt yeah now um, we've got the f f black f how much of the plain fabric does one need well if you're going to do the garden maze now then we might need to just check the pattern i'm checking yes i'm checking now i'm not oh there we go right well it no, depends how i'm not big. on i'm not on oh Ooh. now we're on okay no it's gone off again oh that's strange i'm on now right i'm on bear with there we go. We can do this. Yeah, so for the... Um, it depends what you're making. So if you're making a four-plot block baby quilt, you need a metre yeah. of the plane. If you're doing a single bed quilt, you need three quarters of a metre. A, a double bed quilt, two metres. Yeah. So yeah, it's all, so in, it's all a, in the instructions. A minimum of a meter, anyway. Yeah. If you if you're planning on doing this, I'd go with a minimum of a meter. The thing is, with these um, solids, with these basic solids, I buy these by the bolt because I use so much of them. Right. Okay. It really doesn't matter mm. whether you've got, you know you need half a meter or three meters. I've always got it in stock, and woe betide me if I run out. Right, so I've added those first two logs, and now I'm going to add my first rainbows. So I'm using my two and a half inch strips, but what I'm actually doing, rather than using the same color, I could use the same strip on both sides, but I've deliberately designed this panel with 36 different options on it, so I'm going to use them. I'm going to mix and match them. <laughs> Why not? You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, use them all. We've got all those colours in the box. Let's use them. So what I'm doing each time as I add my strip on, I'm setting the seam, I'm finger pressing the fabric back, and then I'm running my iron along just to make sure that everything's... So do you cut out all of your fabric for your whole quilt first so you can I do one block first. Okay. 
I always make one block first, whatever quilt I'm making, and however many times I've made it before, you know, because on any given day, we're all a little different, aren't we? <laughs> yes. So, so I will do that, and then I will cut out everything for the whole quilt. Okay, so just I, do one block. I think so. And then I think so. do the whole lot. Because you want to check your seam allowance, because what's happening for me, today's a good day, <laughs> um, my logs are fitting, they're cut to size, and as I match them up, they are matching up. Which means that my quarter inch seam allowance is spot on, I'm doing, I'm doing a good job here, mm. I'm fine. If I lay my strip on and it was hanging over the edge, then I know my seam allowance is too big. Uh, okay. If my strip, my next strip is coming up short, I'm not sewing a big enough seam allowance. Now, you don't want to start strip piecing the whole thing, or do you know what I mean? Or, and then finding that you're making a mistake and you've made the same mistake 20 times. So make one block in its entirety. If you're having any issues, it's much better to discover them on one block. Yeah, rather than doing, yeah, that's true. You think, well, I've just sewn mm -hmm. the same seam 20 <laughs> times. And got it wrong. Yeah. And, and I, I guess know by that using these um, panel as well, you, you can really mix and match the colours. So you could do a whole panel in one colour. You, and then uh, a whole block in one colour and a whole exactly block in another. Right. Or you can rainbow or a whole block. Or you can go block. rainbow every block. That's right. Because you're going to use six different fabrics for the logs for the coloured logs and then you're also going to use maybe two more fabrics for the centre. Mm. Like I say, I've just done a simple four patch for the centre. It could be a nine patch, it could be strips sewn together. You know, you can really have fun with this. Now, I've sewn the start of my oh, block. Oh, it's lovely. It's really nice with the black, isn't Thank it? Thank you. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay on my n n remaining strips. Oh, that's going to annoy me. <laughs> Don't do it. Right, I'll just lay these on to show you where this would then go. As we yeah. sew these together, I mean, I just love it. And it's just a different kind of yeah, rainbow. Yeah, gorgeous, isn't it? Fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's really nice. So that's nice. using the strip panel for the thick logs. They're just mm. the right size. Using the square panel for the centers. Right. And then using a solid black, silver, a pastel, whatever mm. you like, for the thin logs. And we've got a whole new look. That's beautiful, isn't it? Well, it really lovely is the that. quilt. I like that. So that's my first little demo for Gorgeous. you. Gorgeous. <laughs> So um, I'll just recap the panels then. So for this, Stuart has used the um, the strips panel. You get 32 half strips with this one, which are two and a half inches by 27 inch each. They're kind of a, they're pastel rainbow, but they're textured. There's um, little icons and they're layered in numbers and prints, beautiful. Lo I love that effect. It's, it is a kind of a grungy graffiti effect. Absolutely but right. But in these pastels, it's nice. It's all multi-directional. Works beautifully for this quilt. So that's nineteen ninety nine. That's all of the strips. And then he has also used in this the um, charm square. Let's tidy this up in a minute. The charm square panel. So you get forty five inch squares on here. Upside down. I've never done a squares panel before. Oh, is this your first and time? And this is my first one, and I had so much fun designing it, but also using it. Yeah, it's lovely. I'll be doing more. They're great. Well, there's so many things you can do with them, can't Incredible. you? Incredible, yeah. I mean, imagine taking those and doing half-square triangles yeah, out they of all of them. They, yeah, they Just do work really well. Just half-square triangles and use those in a half-square triangle quilt. Beautiful. Mm. And then the pattern that Stuart was using is the garden maze quilt. <laughs> that might be the most versatile pattern I've ever written. Really, because you can do so many different sizes. And also, just show that in the back the layouts, um, oh, if you don't yes, mind, Bex, yeah. because, because the way you can lay it out is just... So once you've made the block, yeah. it's just turning it round, yeah. the direction. There's loads of different ways that you can turn it and twist it, mm. and you can create these almost like layered tiles. I like tiles. this one here. It's fun, isn't it's it? It's gorgeous, mm. isn't it? All you need to create that is 
uh, sy symmetry, so a square layout mm. with equal numbers. So not a yes. three by three, yes. but a so four by four, right, six okay. by six, and so it's on. It's beautiful. So that's fantastic. So for nine ninety nine, not only can you make it, Stuart's explained in here how to make it f from a. Um, I don't know, I know this at the beginning. From a single it? cushion? Yeah, so you've got the the one block that's a cushion, you've got a baby quilt, a single bed quilt, a double bed quilt, a queen bed quilt, and a king size bed quilt. So all different sizes, and that's just for nine ninety nine. Yeah. Right, so what are you going to show me now? So next I'm going to show you the bag. So I've got the bright. Okay. I'm going to demo with the bright. Is that okay? Yes, that's absolutely fine. So this You're is the bright right. one. Remember, yep. on the panel, you have everything. You have all the fabric and the instructions. Now, Maria's messaging says, does it come with the metalwork? No, it doesn't. It is just the panel. So as Stuart explained, that with the strap, you don't need metalwork if you don't want to. You don't. You can no. just do a fixed strap. If you do want to add metalwear, it's two one and a half inch aperture rectangular rings, right? And then one one and a half inch aperture strap slider. Okay, so that's all the metalwear you need. But those things are like hen's teeth, and they're harder to find than you'd expect really so so it's absolutely fine without the metal wear if you can't find metal wear don't sweat it you can it. just sew the strap in so it'll be fine yeah yeah for sure so that's absolutely. the bright one right let me show you so i'm going to start with the flap okay i'm going to start with the flap so i've cut out the flap now that is just really cute on its own. Mm -hmm. I like that just as it yeah. is. Yeah, well, it's nice if, if you want a very serious bag. Yeah, you know, if it's a mm. work bag, something like that. But I want to put a little bit of rainbow in there. And um, so you know what? For this one, I think I'm going to go both ways. Oh, okay. I'm going to go both ways. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start, and I'm going to make this a wonky slash. Wonky slash both ways. And honestly, <laughs> you will have to just <laughs> steal yourself a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling it. <gasps> I know, you do, because you're it. actually... I'm cutting it. No, no, don't I'm, cut it. Don't I am, cut it. I'm doing it. I'm cutting through. <gasps> yeah? Okay, so what I'm going to do then is just place my pieces out of the way. Next up, I've decided that I want to emphasise like the purples and blues okay. in this part. So what I'm going to do, let's just twizzle that round. And I'm going to cut this strip straight. Okay. okay. And I'm going to cut this, I'm going to cut, um, let's go, should we go... What finish? One inch finished? Yeah. What? One inch finished or one and a half inch finished? One and a quarter. Stop it. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I was just compromising in the that, middle, you that know. Is the, that leads to <laughs> madness. That is an anarchy. Anarchy. You can't go one and a quarter. One and an eighth. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so I'm just cutting a section that's two inches wide. So I'm adding on my half inch. Right. Okay. So then I'm going to grab my two pieces and I'm going to wait for it, Charlie, sandwich the two layers together. <laughs> okay, so I'm going <laughs> to layer those together. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh. Are you thinking about egg sandwiches again, Stuart? Mm. It's just, it's Charlie, <laughs> our director. He's like a little parrot in the background, mm. isn't he? Mm. Anyway, I'm just going to... Right, so now, quarter of an inch seam allowance, but frankly, if it's not My a quarter dear. of an inch seam allowance, <laughs> it don't matter. Not for this, all right? This is liberated piecing. So about a quarter of an inch, whatever. About a quarter of an inch will do. A quarter of an inch is all good, you know. Um, and just so straight across. Now, okay, that is done. So next, I'm going to grab a pressing mat. I'm going to give that a little press just to set the seam. Mm -hmm. 
and ooh, then I'm going to flip. Now, um, a little bit like in colour work, knitted colour work, where you carry your floats can push yes, the design forward it can. or bring the design back. So if you want your rainbow to pop, make sure your seam allowance is towards the rainbow on both sides and that will give it extra loft, extra lift. Would you like a bigger mat? Um, yeah, go on, why not, as you've provided it. <laughs> Thank you. Just feel that you could press in one yes, go then. Yes, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So I've pressed that in place. I'll just snip off. I'm being a little generous here with a little overhang. Mm. That's all part of the plan. Okay, line that up. Make sure it's all nicely matched. Yeah, and then flip it back. Pin again. Pin it. I do, you know, I, I used to not pin and then I realised that actually pinning is no, quite smart. No, I'm an overpinner. A definite overpinner. I pin everything. I'll pin a seam allowance. I'll pin either side of it, at the top mm, or the bottom. Mm. Yeah. You're right. You are an overpinner. No, I am definitely an overpinner. But I don't know. It's, and there's no right or wrong. It's just whichever. Some people don't pin at all. They seem That's to get right. the same results. But I just, um, so I never turn just guess. A hem allowance, I'll always measure it. Do you? But you see, in the rest of my life, it's quite chaotic. There's no order or anything. It's only my sewing that there is structure and perfection, <laughs> and everything else is chaotic. I'm the sort of person that lies on the sofa rather than sweeps under it. I saw that quote the other day and thought, yeah, that is me. I like that. That's really <laughs> that is definitely me. That's really funny. <laughs> so now I'm going to flip that back, and again, I'm going to finger press the seam allowance towards the yeah, rainbow see, Amanda's strip. Yes, Amanda's going. Will that make the front bigger? Hang fire, Amanda. Hang, Hang fire. fire. Hang Watch fire. Watch your weight. I, you know, fire. Amanda, I thought exactly the same thing, but I think I've worked out what he's going to do. Yeah. yeah. So we're going for the um, dominant rainbow. You know, they have these. What are they call you know, in heraldic things. Um, there's a name for that, isn't it? So the rainbow's coming up more because of the way you've done the seam oh, allowance. Oh, okay, yes, yes, exactly. It's making it pop. Mm. And it's the same with things like sashing. If you want the sashing to pop, press your seam allowances towards mm. it. If you want the sashing to recede or the blocks to pop, yeah. press your seam allowance towards Perfect. those. Pressing your seam allowance is not just about pressing it towards the dark fabric. You can, there are other ways. Right, so I'm going to cut Ooh. it this way now. Radical, radical. Doing it. No, don't do it, don't do it. <gasps> don't, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. No, I'm joking. And what width are you going to go here? Should we go for seven eighths? Stop it. <laughs> You're weirding me out. You're making my eye twitch. <laughs> making my eye twitch, just stop it. Right, so what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to go with the other end of the strip, a bit more of the greens into the blues. So just to bring a little different colour in there. Mm. So now this time I'm going to insert it this way. What's the minimum width of the strip? Well, I probably wouldn't go any smaller than about a half inch cut, which would give me a quarter yeah. inch finished. Um, well, you couldn't go smaller than that, could you? Because if you seam allowance is loose. Yeah, blah, blah. that's so right. The minimum is a half inch strip then. I would say so. And personally, I would probably say that the minimum I would do would be about an inch wide. But okay. I mean, have fun. On the um, bright bag, I actually did half inch finish strip down the centre of the pockets on the sides. Oh, OK. And that looks really cute. Yeah. I'll show you. There you go. Let me have a look. Oh, that is now I like that. Look yeah. at that. So that's your one inch cut strip. But that gives a really nice little edge, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just a little bit of something yeah. different. Well, also, I guess you have to think of the scale of where you're putting it. And, you know, yeah. it looks nice on that pocket. Yeah, it's cute, isn't it? Yeah. Really and as nice. well, like I say, you can emphasise different parts of the rainbow. Now, I'll be honest with you, I originally designed the rainbow strips to be cut apart and then rejoined. So that actually, was the point anyway. Rather than using, just cutting the strip and, and inserting it, mm. the idea was that you actually sewed those pieces together. And actually in the instructions, I say cut apart segments, sew them back together. So if you wanted to have like just purples, oh. 
you can cut okay. out just the purples and piece them right. back together. But then that's the whole point of the bag, isn't it? It's whatever you um, want, personalised. Whatever you want that makes you happy, please do it. Because all that matters is that you end up with a bag that you love. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're the only person in the world that likes what you make. If you like what you make, that is good I enough. I know, and I think it's... Sometimes I see, particularly on our fans page, where people say, well, I've made this, and then people were quite rude about it, or I made it for someone. I think it's awful, isn't it? You know, it's your make. Yeah. I don't know why people feel they should pass judgment on it. Well, I, I, you know, whatever a project, I can always find something in it that I love. And it might be the use of fabric. It might be one particular fabric, which is really cheeky mm. and fun. It might be a bold use of colour. It might be how it's been quilted. Um, it doesn't matter. Even if, as a whole, it might be not my cup of tea. Mm. I that think. doesn't make it wrong. Though, no it? way. It's no way. There'll be people at home thinking, oh, oh no, I no. couldn't. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. Right, Amanda. Right. Amanda, so this is now, where it all happens. This is what you're going to do. You're going to lay your lining piece on top. This is now your pattern piece. Right. And you are going to trim your outer to the correct size. Would you like a bigger man? No, it's okay, thank you. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm I'm used to working in small spaces, so I'm more than happy to turn. And Amanda says, "Can I odor coat the cutout parts to make it That's waterproof?" That's a great idea. I love that. Mm. You could put bag feet on the bottom. You could you could line the inside with um, waterproof fabric. Oh, like with um, ripstop or oil yeah. cloth or something. Or I just use, sometimes I just use a shower curtain that yeah. I cut up, and then um, you could use this as your swim bag. Pop your swimming trunks in there. Mm. Do you have swimming trunks? No, I have a full <laughs> swimming costume. Uh, do we have the finished size of the bag at all, Stuart? I thought so. Is it on the instructions <laughs> or shall I measure it? I think, Frank, basically it is 12 inches long and I think it's 9 or 10 inches tall, 10 inches tall and 3 inches wide. There you go. Basically, give I was or gonna, take. I don't know where the tape measure's gone missing. I was going to measure it for you. So I'm just... Oh, mm -hmm. there we go. Right. So I've got that trimmed down. And now oh, there, there is my front flap for my bag. And there is my lining. Right. So what you're going to do next is you're going to get a piece of bosel in our form. Now this is a double-sided And you only need one fusible. cut. You only need one cut piece for the bag. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, so what I'm going to do here now is just fuse it in place. Now with Bosel in our form, you want to use the minimum amount of heat required to fuse it. Don't be excessive. Don't be extra. Okay, just say no to all that. Just enough so it sticks. Just enough so that it sticks, because then we are going to go in there and we're going to quilt this. Okay, so that should be enough. So what I'm going to do now, sorry to cut towards myself, but it's the <gasps> only way sometimes. There we go. I remember somebody, I think it was somebody in a newspaper when I did sewing bee, said that watching me cut out a dressmaking pattern was painful to watch. <laughs> I've never been prouder. I've never been prouder. I've never been prouder. <laughs> um, right, so what I would do is I would leave that border on there, yeah, for now. Your seam allowances are included within the coloured shapes. Mm. You don't have to leave white on the outside okay. or anything like that. But layer that up. You want a bit of extra bosel because that'll give you something to stitch off into. Okay. And then you can get in there and do some quilting. Get in there. Right. So I'm not going to use a walking foot for this because that's the kind of 
mad guy I am and I'll probably regret it but hey <laughs> it's only it's quite a small run and you've only got 10 minutes I've got 10 minutes yeah. there isn't time to change the foot so do you quilt along the lines of the cutout sections well or? today I am but tomorrow I might do something different oh, okay. whatever Again. you fancy yeah exactly you know what do what makes you happy um, and what you've got time for. Or what you've got time for. I mean, to be honest with you, I think what would look delicious... Let me just... Is... Do you see where here we've got like a almost like a star point? I think it would be lovely to echo mm. quilt oh, that, would be nice. that shape. Yes. And you could do that on all the different sections. That would be lovely. Um, but, of course, that would take a fair amount of time. I just like to go in there, and if, if I haven't quite fused it down enough, I'll just go in there, but okay. just don't go wild. But you're only having to quilt small pieces, so it's quite manageable, isn't it? Very, very much like so. That. And in our form is absolutely a joy to quilt. It takes quilting really well. It looks great quilted. I'm just going to finish off that last line of stitching and do as much or as little. Do as much or as little. Um, and then, once you've done no. that... Okay, so I've done my quilting. Done all that I'm going to do. Okay, what I like to do, just to finish that off before I trim it down, is I would just go round the outside. Round the outside. Round the outside. Side, go. Buffalo Girls. Buffalo Girls go round the outside. That was a great song. So I'm just going to do that nice and close to the edge. Talking of Buffalo Girls, mm. I loved Nana Cherry, Buffalo Stance. <laughs> it's still one of my favourite records ever. Is it? I don't think oh. I know that song. Did you sing it? Nana Cherry? Yeah, but I probably do. Oh. Um, we always hang in a buffalo stew. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I've got it, I've got that it now. One. So mm. don't go fresh mm. with me. Mm. Do you remember the one? Yeah, yeah no, I do mm. now. Got it. Mm, 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 mm. And then you have all loads of, like, mixing and scratching and, yeah, yeah. all that good stuff. All that. I like Cotton Eye Joe. Love R that right, song. Okay. That's a great song. R right? Yeah, but it's the same sort of thing, isn't it? You feel like you should be in a barn dance. <laughs> no. Oh, you, did you oh, not I grow up this in, thing in, did you not grow up in Somerset <laughs> like I did? No, well, well, I was in the Shire. <laughs> well, I'm surprised you didn't go to... That was the most exciting thing that happened in our village, was the annual barn dance. Was it? Yeah, that was it. Oh, gosh. Nothing else happened. Right, and then... Once you've done that, you're going to trim the edges off, okay? Be aware, um, when you've quilted something, especially if you quilt something heavily, you can draw the size in a little. It can end up a little mm. smaller than it started. So just be aware of that. So what do you do to compensate for that? Because well, I you find can... exactly the same thing. Yeah. Well, when it's something like a quilt, then obviously you can just trim it down to whatever size mm. it is. When you want the pieces to go together, then sometimes the best thing to do is to trim your linings, your other pieces Everything, down a yeah. tiny bit, just to accommodate that if you have to. I mean, I generally find it's not that much that it makes yeah, a no, significant Yeah, no, I find that difference. you think, oh, it's, it's shrunk. Yeah. Um, and then what you're going to do is take your lining piece, mm. okay, and you're going to put them together. Now, if you wanted to put something like um, a magnetic snap in, right? Or fastener, oh, yeah, so for the, um, the clasp yes. for that bit, yes. What you would do there is you would put a piece of interfacing here on the lining, right in the centre, make a little um, dot. Use that dot to line up the washer and put your markings. Mm. Install one half of your magnetic uh, on there and then sew around. Um, yeah, okay. So before you put it on the lining, before you sew the lining, the lining to the lining. outer. That's so if right. you want your flap to 
attach. Yep. So this is this section here. So this is what we're talking about. So if you want, you put the male half of the magnetic snap here. How do you know it's the male half? Um, it's not as attractive as the female half. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, good answer. Good answer. Mm, yeah. it's, it's really easy to tell. You just choose the most attractive one. The more That's intelligent the, yeah. of the two. Yeah, Go ass. on, say yeah. it. Yeah, the better one, really. Um, so, uh. yeah, so the inferior one you put on. <laughs> <laughs> you put on the inside of the flap, and then the female one you put on here. <laughs> and make sure they line up. But you put them on before you put the lining together, and then it will hold together. And we do have magnetic clasps, should you want one. Can we put that on, Benjamin? Magnetic clasps. E K Z W sixty. He doesn't know because he's a man. <laughs> he's stupid. Two ninety nine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to explain that to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can't find it. He's low. Yeah, he's low. He, he can't find it, and he can't <laughs> do more than one thing at once. <laughs> yeah. But at least Becky's laughing. See, Becky's. She understands. She, she gets it. Mm. Right, so I have just sewn around. I've just sewn around the sides and the bottom of the flap. Okay, just do a little reinforcing stitch at the start and finish. Mm. Okay, and then you're going to turn the whole of the flap through to the right side. Now on this bag, the flap's the only part that you make in its entirety, outer and lining. Okay. okay. You make the outer bag as a whole, you make the lining bag as a whole, and then you put the two together. But your flap, you actually have to make in its entirety. Right. Now, I'm using double-sided fusible in our form. So that means that once I get to this stage, I It'll can actually stick. fuse my lining. Okay, you just got to be careful that you're getting everything nicely lined up. Now as an alternative, you could put these layers together quilt sandwich style. Okay, and then you could quilt it, and then oh, you could bind it. Oh, so sew it. it together first. Yes. And then quilt and then it. And bind oh, the okay. edges, mm. and that would look lovely. Especially if it's super shrunk as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, and I guess you could work. use those strips to bind it as well. Yeah, you could. Oh, gosh, yes, you could. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, you could. I mean, ideally, they need to be on the bias to go around that curved yeah, edge. True. But you know what? You can stretch straight of grain fabric, can't you? <laughs> Try hard. All right. It? And there is my front flap. And the last thing that I would do is mm. just to top stitch around ah, okay. that edge just to finish it off. And it's all lined. Now, have we got time for one very, very quick, yeah, how go it goes on. together? Yeah, go on. And that is just going back to the Floating Stars quilt. Right. I guarantee... Personally. Personally guarantee that all of your star points will be perfect. They will mm. all be sharp. Sharp. They will all be perfect. You mm. will not cut any of these sharp points off. Right. And here's why. Go on then. Normally with star points, the star point is a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge. Mm. So that when you sew the quarter of an inch, if it's not perfect quarter of an inch, you cut a bit of your star point off or you, yes. or it's hanging yeah. up. I've designed this with the star points half an inch away from the edge. Oh. That's why they're called floating stars. Right. And these star points are halfway from the edge. Okay, so that you've got more allowance. You've got allowance. Mm. So, you, so you'll never ever cut your star points off. So you do stitch and flip corners on your squares, like these. Mm. And then you arrange your squares together like this. 
and have a play with the arrangement. You can have all the yellows. I decided to go a little bit sort of cross curricular and blend it a little bit more. And the way I did that, have you mm. got the squares panel? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you. So in order to do that. Oh, I think Becky's. It's the far, oh, no, it's, it's gone. Is, sorry. It's there. I didn't so in order else. to do that, if you just want, you know, red and yellow mm -hmm. and pink, pink and green, right, you would just go, jam, blue. these four make a block, sorry, these eight yes. make a block, yeah. these ones make the next block, but what I did was I left the first row, these two rows made my first ah. block, these, these and so on. Okay. And then the last strip and the first strip go together. Right. And Perfect. then you literally sew those together, nine patch style, and that is your star block. Easy peasy. Excellent. So many different ideas. This is brilliant. So um, if you go onto the website, click on Watch Live, all of these different options of kits and blocks on their panels on their own and panels with it, it's, it's all on there. But don't forget um, today's date, 20th of March. Please do watch back the show because Stuart's filled us with tips and advice and ideas there. And don't forget as well, 12 o'clock, summer knitting, summer cotton batik knitting yeah. from Stylecraft. And, and I'm crocheting cracking out the crochet, old girl. Cracking out the crochet. It's going to mm. be exciting. It is, because I'm going to be watching. <laughs> You're going to be twitching, yes. trust me. So, um, <laughs> thanks, she will be back with us at 12 for Yarn Lane. I will see you back here in a few minutes time with Jenny Jackson for Needle Turn and um, her EPP Thinking Parrots. See you back here in a couple of minutes. Hello everyone, my name is Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, then went down to Hampshire and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those, I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles. So embroidery, cross stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making, oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new and I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it and you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. And I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Join us this Friday on Sewing Street. It's William Morris Celebration Day. We've got a brand new quilt. We've got brand new fabric. We've got brand new gifting. And we've got Amber Makes and Delphine in doing demonstrations. What more could you ask for? Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. 
And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. Head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Sewing Street, do you know we've learned so much today, it's all about techniques today, even whether they're new to you, whether you're an expert, a beginner, to <coughs> I was going to say technique Tuesday, so it's Monday, technique <laughs> Monday, um, so needle turn, so obviously we all know Jenny Jackson is a maestro at EPP and FPP and she's now a needle turn oblique maestro as well. I love it. Do you? Why do you love it's it then? It's sewing. It and is. That is my favourite and mm. it's so relaxing and it's just something different and it gives a completely different feel because it looks, if you look at um, needle turn when it's flat, if you hold it flat it looks puffed up slightly. It, it does, looks like you've it? stuffed it with something. So basically it, it's a plique yeah. with the edges turned under. Yeah, using your needle. So when you look at those really um, traditional quilts, you know when you see those applique quilts, they had like the Rose of Sharon and all yeah. of those different things, that's all needle turn. Isn't yeah, it? it's a really old technique. But this is a brilliant way of learning it if you haven't done it before. Um, we've also got it in two colour variations. So this is one, let me show you the other one and then I'll show you the kits. Jenny's made both of them because she loves it so much. Yeah. There we go. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? Right, let me show you the kits and I'll show you what you get. So obviously, obviously, you get full instructions and they're Jenny's full instructions, so they're perfect. This is the Tilda one. Love this one. So this is this one here. This is the Tilda one. How beautiful is that? Wildly popular on pre-order, so I don't want you to miss out. Now, I'll show you the fabrics first. So we get these Tilda fabrics. Look at these. Beautiful. Fat eights, you get four fat eights, but they are all, I mean, just iconic Tilda prints, really, aren't they? Yeah, I had loads really. of fun picking them. <laughs> Did you choose these yeah. specifically? Yeah. Aren't they lovely? This is my favourite one. Look at the colour of that. Yeah. It's I, like Dijon yeah. in autumn. Yeah. Does it go darker in autumn, but it's kind of got that, I feel like Dijon can be darker <laughs> yeah. sometimes. Beautiful though, isn't it? Love that. So those are the four fat eights that you get. 
then you get full instructions oh you also sorry you get the um a it's, meter of it's the seeded oh it's the that seeded one, that one okay. yeah this is from another oh, right. one so I've you get a twice. meter of the seeded which is a bit like it's it's your rose and hubble fabric but because it's seeded it looks a bit like calico but it's the softer quilting weight cotton but with the little seeds in it does look like a calico. so it's my new favorite fabric i absolutely like i look at i, I don't know why i've never used it before really? and now i've got it in this and another project i choose I it all the it. time i think it's yeah. really um the, the thing is there are different qualities of calico but you can't always be sure yeah you get some that are really stiff there are beautiful qualities yeah. but i think with this you can guarantee it's like having a great quality calico isn't it it is it's gorgeous so that's you get that and then you get the little templates for the needle turn yeah so have you, you got them there or can i open it um i've got some here okay so it's just so you don't have to draw templates right um, okay. you get the templates in the back of the pattern that you can trace. okay so you can if you want more yeah if you want to do it but we've just given you a selection you don't need okay. every single template but because of this card that we've used you can use them loads to draw around so is this the same card stock as no it is slightly different okay because we didn't need to use as thick as right, that but okay. it's still amazing you just draw around them and it just means it saves you faffing having to trace having to find something to use because you know if you're not so in the instructions you do get the templates if you want to draw them but you will get in the pack you will get all the templates i'm going to open them no don't here you go <gasps> They're you... going to a customer. <laughs> <laughs> so these, these are what I've already used loads. Right, so these are the templates that you will get in there. Yeah. Which are all the sort of the, <laughs> the leaves and the circles. You can't go with me open them. Well, open them. So Don't those are all them. the templates you get in your um your little thing. Look, you get a moustache. You get two eyes. <laughs> <laughs> So you can actually make, look, a rabbit. Oh. And then you could use another one of these and do it as a smile as well. Mm -hmm. A moustache and a smile. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So it could be a rabbit or it can be the flowers. Um, then you get all the instructions with, as always with Jenny, lots and lots of full colour photos with all the walkthroughs and then the layout of the finished design yeah. and a picture there of it yeah it's so beautiful. if you want to make another version you can color that photocopy so you it, can or color make it and this work one out. Let, make it into a cushion or just make more it's a whole quilt yeah whole quilt yeah. would be lovely so i take these yes yeah, so that's the um that's the tilda version do you want those right then half of the stock of that one's gone now, if you want the bright version, I love this one. So this is a little bit more affordable because it's not Tilda. It's um, plain fabric. Gorgeous though, isn't it? I love that. That's why I decided to make the whole version as well because I think that sometimes you can't envisage it in your yes, head until so you see it finished. These are the fabrics, yes. And if I just showed you the fabrics, you can't see it. Yeah, exactly. So and can you change what colour you put where? Yeah, yeah. There's enough fabric to, yeah. to do that with. So in this pack, you get the four fat eights. You get purple, pink, blue and yellow. And then you get a metre of ivory. And obviously you get the templates and you get the full instructions. So it's all there. So you exactly the same. You just have to decide whether you want the Tilda version or whether you want... The brightest yeah. version. And it's a big cushion. It is a big cushion. Yeah. That's a nice size. And there's enough fabric as well to do the um, binding. Yeah. Nice. Because that's quite pretty, isn't it? Look. Now, if you want just the pattern and the templates and you want to use your own fabric, we do have that as well. Twelve ninety nine, and that's the pattern, but it does come with the templates as well if you want to use your own fabric. Or if you want to make a whole quilt. Yeah. It'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, I do want to make more different. So I've called it Victor mm. Victorian tile number one because I want to make a few yeah, different that, ones. Well, it would be nice to series. not have all the same thing. Yeah, it would be lovely. Do a different a series mm. that you could make cushions or quilts. Really. And then you could even put like a plain fabric square in between to exactly. make it, oh yes, I can see. It's beautiful and it's lovely. It's, it's TV sewing, isn't it? Oh yeah. 
Perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, like it, so. right, let's, you show me how to do that. Oh, actually, we need to show the quilt one minute because we have got the quilt. The Fresh as a Daisy quilt, well, wall hanging, that's hanging behind um, Jenny. We have got the pattern for that. So there's, you get, oh, I've got the, the instructions and they come with all the little templates yeah, as well. Exactly so how like big that. is the wall hanging? I honestly can't remember off the top of my head, but it's about 32 inches, okay. I would say. So Square. same technique but the wall hanging does it see any instructions it should do oh well there we go the then second page uh, 36 by 36 okay, inches that's a bit out <laughs> so so you get the instruct 49 you get instructions but you get all of the little templates as well to make that if you want to make a bigger wall hanging yeah gorgeous right so new to needle turn what do i do you because this is technique it. monday there we go. So I've just started, this is a slightly smaller square because I thought it would be easier to show. Okay. Um, what you want to do is you get one of your templates and you actually draw around the template onto the right side of the fabric. You right. don't, you draw exactly on around the template, not adding anything when you're drawing because you're going to use your drawn line as Okay. your guide when your needle and turning. you have to use an erasable pen for this ideally you, you don't want a permanent pen you want one that you can get rid of whether it's washing or heat okay removal, so some kind yeah. of erasable because you pen. might you do end up seeing it a little bit right when you've sewn it on so you can see i've used this template a good few times see this is what's nice about if you were just to trace it straight onto paper yeah that's you it would, would only be able, you'd have to trace it loads of times because you can't reuse paper well and it then would you curl can't, as well exactly and, you can't, and if you're using pen it gets wet doesn't it and then it tears mm. but um and it's hard obviously harder to trace so having these, card. having these little yeah. um templates is ideal yeah so I've just drawn, obviously this is a very patterned fabric, so it's probably hard for the camera to see it as much as I can. And then what you want to do is you want to cut around your template roughly quarter of an inch outside your drawn line. So what I'll do is I'll just cut it off this fabric first. I can move that. So you just want to cut around roughly quarter of an inch you don't really want much more than quarter of an inch so i'm just going to cut around this i've okay. become obsessed with this technique <laughs> i can hear stuart yeah i can I don't know who he's talking to. He's just out in the green room. I think he's there's some with people the in there. I think it's yeah, people from Hobby Maker. I don't think he even is. knows who they are. Probably he's just not. chatting. <laughs> just me. He's just like wandering his way around the building, chatting to everyone. Right. So I've so I've I've cut round this. So if you've got like an inverted, uh, is that the word? Inverted um, curve. Yes. You want to just snip A slightly. Yes, that's the word. I've got the right words in my pattern. Is it convex or con? You just want to snip slightly into that curve, but not all the way to your drawn line. If you've got a circle or these curves, you don't need to snip at all because it's going to fold naturally round. So the nice thing about needle turn is you really don't need to measure where you're putting the pieces. It's concave, concave is goes it? Right, in. That's the one. Convex goes out. That Charlie's just one. checked for me. There we go. So yeah, you don't need to measure where you've put them. I've put, I've centered the first oh, okay. circle. But you can just look but at the if, picture. If you look at the picture and for example, this one, I did put approximately an inch, um, just over a quarter of an inch from there to there, but it doesn't have to be precise. Right, okay. So I have mentioned all this in the pattern. Oh, okay, it's all in there. And, and then, there is a picture as well. Oh, yep. Yeah. And then this one, I'm just gonna lay around here with just a tiny gap between here. Cause remember, you're gonna lose half your, you're, you're going to lose that extra seam allowance I've cut once you've sewn it. So it'll actually end up being that far away from the circle, not what it looks like when you pin it on to here. Right? So okay. I love using applique pins for needle turn. Oh, you, yeah, Ben's looking for those for me yeah, now. Yeah, because you don't, the big pins, will, you'll just get your, um, you'll get your thread caught around them. 
because they've got points. But yes, you just, just need so the shortest tiny. pins that you can, which are applique pins. Yeah. So for this one, I decided to show you this shape because I'm actually overlapping a shape I've already sewn. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. So that's the centre of the cushion. Shall I show you? Can we have a look at that a minute, Charlie? So this is the bit that um, Jenny's doing where she's overlapping the moustache on the nose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> The leaves. So actually. you knot your your cotton at the end. Oh, like we've got applique pins. So yeah, six ninety nine for one hundred and fifty. Now these are fantastic quality. I mean, there are pins and there are pins. These are clover pins, and they are brilliant because they are very short, so they're perfect for applique. They're also quite good for EPP if you use pins. Some people do yeah, like some to, people do like to pin. It just stops like you don't have the rest of the pins sticking out here, and so they're your really not going to get caught as well. Exactly. And they come in a really nice little box. They do, don't they? they? So they are worth it if you're going to do this. Treat yourself to yeah. the right little yeah. bits of and they last right forever. tools, and it, they are lovely. And you, I think, because they're quite special, you do keep them, don't you? Oh, yeah, I always good. keep them in this. Mm. I always keep them in this because I'll lose them if not. It's only six ninety nine, but they are beautiful quality. So I always suggest that you start on the widest curve if you've got a curved shape. Don't start on a point or a corner. So it's just going to make it hard. So for your first stitch, you're just going to use a whip stitch. For your first stitch, don't go through the back. You just come up somewhere along your drawn line. Can see there and you're just going to pull that all the way through to where your knot is so if you come up from the back then you're going to have a piece of cotton here and you're not going to be able to tuck your seam allowance under because your cotton's going to be in the way right okay right yeah so what you do is you just use the edge of your needle to turn in needle turn needle turn ah. to turn ah. in so clever isn't it yeah to turn in approximately quarter of an inch half an inch along just a little bit just so you see I've got rid of the seam allowance just there but it's still poking out here because I will turn it as I go and now what you want to do is you hold it with your non sewing thumb so I sew with my left hand I hold the seam allowance in with my right thumb so now what you're going to do is you're going to go down right next to the fabric you've just turned in so there's no gap you're literally just you can feel it with your it's really mm. hard to show i think i've got that that's showing isn't it it's right down straight yeah. down where i've come up through the fabric and it's touching the fabric but not going through the printed fabric so you're just going to go straight down i'm going to just take this one straight through like this and then you're going to come up from the back just a few millimeters prior to where you came up uh, you've just sewn you're going to come up again on that line that you drew so you're using that as your mm. reference point so you're going to come straight back up again and then go straight down not at an angle straight down but this time through the backing fabric there and then what I'm going to do is instead of taking my needle round the back, I'm just going to go down and then I'm going to come up again a few inches, uh, a few millimetres along, straight onto my drawn line again. Like that. So you see, obviously it's starting to go down. So now I'm moving along a bit. So I'm going to take my needle and tuck in a bit more of my seam allowance. A bit for, there we go, another half an inch or so. And then straight down again through the background fabric and up through the printed fabric on that drawn line that you can see because the drawn line is now on the edge of the shape where you've turned the seam allowance in does that make sense Bex? yeah yeah no absolutely I'm mesmerized straight but... down again you don't yeah. go along because then you're going to see the stitches so don't yeah, do it so you at go an angle. straight in you go straight down and then along behind so basically the only stitch really is like a little stab stitch a little stab that stitch can... that you see because you're going along behind so underneath. you need thread that matches I mean it depends because the nice thing about hand sewing is if you can see the stitches it, it doesn't, doesn't matter because it's given it the but handmade which one feel. would you match 
I mean, I'm using white right now, but that's because I know you won't see my stitches probably. Yeah. But I would probably use a maybe a darker green for the. So I you usually go with the prominent colour that matches the print rather than the background. Or like I always say for EPP, a light grey or a dark grey, yeah, depending true. on the tone of the fabric. If it's darker fabric mm. like this, I'd use a dark grey. But maybe on the lighter pink or the yellow on the solid one, I would use a light grey because okay, it would show up it as won't. much. So now, so just make is, sure that you've got a tiniest stitch on the front. Exactly. So now it is just a case of going along as you go along, fold, push with your needle a little bit more. You want a nice longish needle, and you just keep going down and up through like this. It is so relaxing. Mm. I could go for ages. And you I just should have do started it. at the top, so then I could show you. So you just do, tur basically you're turning it as you go, really. Yeah, you only want to turn around a quarter of an inch to half an inch at but a time. But this is such a traditional technique, isn't it? It's lovely. And, it you're, really and, and like is. you say, you know, yes, there is a place for Bondi Web Applique. There is a place for all of these yeah, different definitely, things. Definitely, depending but, on the final look. But for the really traditional handmade look it's beautiful and this is the best i think um hand applique technique yeah because yeah. when you're machine sewing it's easier to deal with bond web and the raw edges and, and yeah. stuff like that so as you can see when i'm going around a slightly tighter curve i tend to turn in slightly less fabric at a time because you just want to mm. keep that going so i'm turning nearly every mm. time i stitch now it's always harder to turn it in when you're on TV because you're doing it at a funny angle. Yeah, true. But you don't, there's no sort of hoops or anything, you know, it's needle and thread, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You don't need anything other than your fabric, needle and thread, your templates and a pen to draw around and your good pins. And your special pins. And your special. They do just make because I've, I've not got my thread caught around it once yet, but I know for a fact if yeah. I was using normal ones. But also I think once, because I've got a packet you find lots of other uses you know when you're doing a pinning curve like if i'm doing like a curved corner i'll use those pins yeah just because you get more in and you don't get things or if i'm pinning anything that i'm hand sewing i tend to use them exactly. just because you don't catch your thread around them so i'm just turning slightly less in while i'm going around okay. slightly oh it's really nice it does make me think of these the old sort of um hand applique well it would have been done with this method yeah and they look gorgeous they do. I love the way that they give. Uh, you get a slight 3D effect on them as well. Mm. So where your seam allowance is turned in, it makes the whole piece puff a bit. Right, you've got a couple of minutes left. Okay. And then we're going to move on to EPP. I know, it's a quick one. So you mm. just carry on going all the way around. And when you get to the... Well, when you're over going over another fabric, it's exactly the same. And it doesn't matter if you only go through the fabric you've sewn or if you take your needle all the way through to the back. Okay. There's no matter. And when you get to this curve, the inner curve, obviously I've snipped this bit of fabric and you will again. Right. Just, yes, and, and for example, if you're finding it a bit fiddly here, it doesn't have to be all the way to your drawn line because that line you can get rid of. So, okay. for example, if you just tuck it like this, and you can still see, so it's not quite as deep, that really doesn't matter. That's the thing about yeah. needle turn. Yeah, because it's, it is a hand. It's a hand sewn project. Point. Not every circle needs to be exactly the same mm. um, space between them. Yeah. You just place pin. I pin. I do one shape at a time. Mm. So then, because if you try to pin them all, then you f sometimes forget that you have got seam yes, allowance of this shape and the seam allowance of the shape you're then pinning here. So you could end up with quite a large gap between. So, do so pin shape, so right, pin okay. a shape, sew yeah. it down. That, that's my that, No, that makes sense. And then you, cause then you can just measure out, can't you? Exactly. But it is a, it's a lovely technique. So the, the, one, the, the, um, the one that Jenny's working on is the um, Tilda one. So the Victorian towel cushion in the Tilda print. So in the kit, there are only nine left of these. And there's 17 in baskets. So you do the maths. Some people are going to sell out. Um, so you get the instructions, they come with the pay, the card shapes that you draw around and then you get four fat eights of this gorgeous Tilda fabric. I love the, the shade of the colour, that pink and that mustard, they're just really 
almost vintage antique shades. So they work yeah, really oh, well. I love them. Gorgeous, aren't they? They work beautifully with this needle turn. $27.99. Remember, you've got those templates, so you can then use your own fabric. You can use this time and time again. Absolutely stunning. Please do check out on these because there are more of you who've got these in baskets than we've got in stock. Um, the other one, oh, so that's that one. The other one, which is the bright one, this version here, that's um, $23.99. So this is using plain solid fabrics. Um, so obviously it's a more affordable price. You Oh, sorry, with the tilde one, I forgot to say, you, got, you get the meter of the um, seeded cotton. That's the background. So you've got everything you need for the cushion. You've got the front, the back, you've got the binding, and you've got the needle turn applique. With the um, brights one, you get a meter of ivory, and then you get a fat eighth of blue, purple, pink, and yellow instructions and all the templates. Um, if you want to make the wall hanging that's hanging up behind Jenny, we've got the instructions for that. But the instructions also come with all of the templates to make the wall hanging, which is 36 inches square. So if you love this technique, you'd like a different pattern, you want to make something a bit bigger, $14.99. Right, so now we're going to move on to EPP. So we've done um, puffins. We've done kingfishers, and this week, month, <laughs> it's parrots. Look at this, absolutely gorgeous. You've got, um, so what's the shape on this one? Uh, this is a hexagon. This is your normal it's, plain hexagon. It is, it's a one and wow. a quarter inch. So if you look really closely, can you see the parrots are formed of EPP hexagons? So on the panel, you have got all of the hexagons. I'll show you the panel in a moment. To make the EPP front, you've got the, um, the plain fabric that is used for the back, which is the smaller version, and you've got the pieces for the handles. Now, we have got two kits for this. So with, um, let me just move my cushions. There we go. Um, so we have got in the kit, let me show you the cardinal one because that's the one I'm going to show you first. Now, nearly half of the stock of the cardinal went on pre-order of this one. So if you want this one, you need to get checked out. Um, I can't make it stand up for a minute. So in the um, kit, you get full instructions of how to make it. You also get all of the EPP pieces, the hexagons. And then look at the panel. I'm going to put it down flat so I can show it to you properly. This is absolutely gorgeous. So look, we've got all of the parrots all laid out in the order that they need to be sewn on. The seam allowance is included, so these fabric pieces are bigger than the APP pieces, so that they all join together. So there's all of the hexagons to make the tote bag. Then you've got the, um, the bag back, then you've got the two pieces for the strap and then you've got bonus parrots. Always love a bonus animal. Love a bonus parrot. These are pockets, aren't they? I put those as a pocket on yeah. the inside. Yeah. And you get a metre. Yeah, Ben wants them on the back of his denim jacket. And then you could embroider Ben and Charlie above it. Oh, you could. It would be perfect for them. be perfect there. for the two of those. Then you get a metre of the red fabric. Now, the red fabric is used for the lining of the bag. Um, it's also used for the top and the bottom strips and the lining of the handles. So everything you need is in the kit, unless you want to put wadding in between, obviously that's not in the kit, but all of the fabric, all of the instructions, everything is in there to make this one. That is the Cardinal Parrot, 34 99 Now, we've also got it in um, the same panel, same instructions, but with the seeded cotton. So if you want the more natural effect, Jenny's going to be demonstrating this. So um, this is just a bit plainer. So obviously the top and the bottom strips are in the calico. And then if you want, um, that will be on the lining as well. So just a more natural effect. So you just need to choose between whether you go for the red fabric for the um, contrast, or whether you go for the seeded. The one there is the seeded, 34.99. Um, Jenny's going to demonstrate how to do that in a moment. But if you've missed out on the others, because this is third in the series, 
I mean, they're not, you don't have to collect them all. They're not joined together, not like a quilt. They're just different things. So last month we did Kingfisher, the national bird of Redditch. Strange. I wonder why it's the national bird. Do they have kingfishers on the river or something? So this is the kingfisher. He's a beautiful tote bag. So you've got all of the pieces for the bag front. You've even got the um, the mini kingfisher print that's on the back. It's got a little spot on it. And then you've got the fabric for the straps. So the panel for this one, let me show you this one. Now there's two versions for this kingfisher we've got two choices so the one that we've got up at the moment is the teal version do you want me to hold the other one it's the other side of it for you yeah go on then go on then oh hang on this is i've got the gray panel there yeah we've got them around the wrong way right So this is the teal one, which is the one that I've just shown you. Do you know why it is? It's because it's got grey lining. It has. The teal's got grey lining, because I think it looked better. And then the, gr oh, the grey okay. one has like a blue lining. Right, so this is the teal one. This is the bag that I've just shown you. So you can make these into cushions if you don't want a bag. Right. You trim them down and use that as the back of the cushion. Or I made two cushions. I did this as the front, used the oh, backing fabric for the back of the yes. cushion, and I used, made this into just a standalone. Oh, well, that's one. nice, isn't it? And then you, just, you could actually strip. make even three cushions if you cut those and added. Uh, and made you did them that as well. Blocks, and yeah. that one comes with obviously all the pattern. It comes with a meter of grey that's used for the lining. It comes with all the paper pieces and the instructions. It's tealy nice. <laughs> tealy nice. <laughs> There we go. So that's the teal version. But there is also a grey version as well. So this is the grey version. So it's the same thing. It's just that the background of the kingfisher is grey. Yeah. And just to confuse matters, this comes with a teal coloured lining. Yeah, it just looked really nice. It's lovely that, isn't it? So this is the lining, I'll show you with it, that comes with it. Yeah. So that's that, that choice. Um, then... Right at the beginning was the puffin bag. Look at the puffin. Gorgeous. So the puffin is made from, no idea what that shape's called. Uh, where are we? A jewel. Jewel. The jewel shape. So obviously you've got all the pieces on the front. The back, look, little mini puffins in orange. And then you've got these straps are in that fabric with an orange lining. So that's the puffin. And let me just show you the panel for the puffin. Luckily, there's only one colourway. Um, obviously, with this one, you get full instructions. You get all of the EPP pieces. And then look at the panel. The panel's gorgeous. So you could have a bag for all months here, bag for all seasons. You can make cushions. So if you know someone who loves puffins, and this is one of the funny ones that it looks like he's got two it eyes, does, but it? he doesn't because half that part of the eye is going to be wrapped round into the seam allowance and they'll match up. And then there's the, the back, there's the handles, like um, Jenny was saying, you could make cushion instead, you, you could make two cushions, you could make two bags. And extra little puffins. And bonus puffins. Yeah, and I learned when I did this show that little puffins, baby puffins, are called pufflings. And that's lovely. Isn't it just such pufflings. a lovely word? I was with you, I think, when yes, we found this pufflings. out. Yeah, gorgeous. And this one comes with orange as the lining, as you can see on this one, that the, um, the lining fabric is in orange. Absolutely gorgeous. Right, that's all of them. Okay. So let's start. So Where do we start? You start by making the EPP panel, but I thought it would be fun to show you the construction of the bag more this time because if you watch one of my last shows on catch up i've shown how to do the pattern matching a lot of times so there's plenty yes. of shows but all you do have to do is cut your hexagons out you do not want any of the white fabric so you cut it out along there's a little black line that you can see around each shape so you mm. cut on there get rid of all the white and then you baste your hexagons onto it i say Cut a row, baste a row, and you can see in the pattern that you sew up like this on a row, and then clip it saying row one. There is a picture of it in, the, because if you mix them up, then it's like a jigsaw, so it's actually quite good fun. Yes. You get to jigsaw it before you sew it. So yeah, just keep organized, and then you won't, you'll know where each piece goes. 
but that's it's super easy and it's super fun and I've really enjoyed these parrots so much so that I got carried away making the second piece and it got to the point where it was finished I was like okay I'll demo how to make the bag <laughs> yes, instead because I idea. finished the panel yes. so you're going to show us how to make it yeah. so all of the instructions in there um, are in there exactly how to exactly do it exactly how to do it and also if you reference my other shows I show, it's exactly the same technique that I did that I showed to make the other two birds right okay with the EPP part um this is a different style tote bag so it's got box bottoms the other oh, two okay. were very simple no box bottom tote. right so I thought it would be more fun and we actually have to cut our EPP panel and sew it onto strips oh, right. so I thought it would be really yeah, important nice. to show people how to do that because they might get nervous cutting their hand sewing up yes I would yes so what I say is don't do that until you're ready to sew your strips onto the top and the bottom of the panel leave it as is until you're ready so all you're going to do is trim it off like you would a normal piece of fabric <clears throat> and so I've you've taken all the papers out I've taken all the papers okay. out I've pressed it and then I I'm just going to um, trim it off the measurements of what you want to trim to are obviously all in the pattern but obviously the, the sewing you've just done now I'm cutting it it could come unraveled so this is why I say don't do it until you're ready have your strips cut ready to sew Oh, on. okay, because you need yeah, to cut and sew. You don't want to cut it and then leave it right. for a while. I should probably measure this, actually, because it does need to be a specific um, length and height. <laughs> Do you want a bigger cutting mat? Oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> I said that to Stuart. I just picked it up, and I, I, to be honest, I'd forgotten I needed one. So while you were talking, I was delving underneath the table looking for one. <laughs> I have got bigger ones down here. Let's see, I'm pretty sure it's 10 and 3 quarters, which is fine, and it's just the length that I need to trim down by a bit. So I used um, H640 for my tote. Did you? Because I just, it gives it that little extra... A little bit of body. Body, yeah. Morning, John. John Scott's watching with us. Oh, is We he? know you're watching, John. We can see. We, we know. can see. We know. Morning. Morning, have you just got up? But he's just got up. I bet he's just got Sammy's up. Sammy's breakfast. What are you having for breakfast? Poached egg. Is that what you reckon? Ben reckons poached egg and avocado. Possibly. It'll probably be in a minute. It'll go, John Scott is not watching with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> John, Scott, John Scott's gone. So what you want to do now is you want to just sew the top, um, the top strip right sides together on top using a quarter inch seam allowance. Oh. Uh, you can pin it if you want obviously I'm just going to hope for the best <laughs> <laughs> just wing it just wing it so you just sew over an EP pa P panel like this as you would a normal piece of fabric you just want to be a little bit more careful with it because okay. so, you don't want your stitches so you're just um, exactly the same you don't have to use a different stitch length or no i mean i wouldn't use anything more than like a 2.4 yeah so not just, just normal yeah. then so you're just going to attach this I just felt like people might be a bit more nervous having to then add fabric to the EPP instead of just wadding like you would usually. Yes, yeah. So I've added the top one, so then what you want to do is press that open. I think you've got to open, really nice sorry, just press it up or down. It gives it quite a nice effect though, doesn't it, having the strips, you know, on the it EPP. Does. And again, I chose the this could be the seeded fabric for this because I love it and I just thought it was really summery fabric. I thought it was really summery gave me beach vibes yeah, that's true actually that's cool to go down the beach with isn't it yeah mm. I'll definitely be finishing this off and using it I might take it on holiday with me oh yeah where are you going 
I have, oh, it's my first time I've left the country in 10 years. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm going to Portugal oh, with really? my brother, his wife, uh, Dylan and um, their daughter and we, we've just we're going to just the villa and nice. we're just gonna relax when you go I'm going to Portugal when are you going at the end of July oh no I'm going at the beginning of April otherwise see I've got to wait for the school are you going holidays. as well then? I'm going April the 2nd Lisbon yeah so what you want to do right I'm sides to, together I'm not, again I'm not going to a hotel actually I'm going to a like an Airbnb and so we're just chatting about our holidays yeah, now. Yeah, we're airbnb it as well. Mm. I'm going to go Lisbon for four days, Porto for two. Oh, no. Mm. Is that like a city break? <laughs> We've just got um, a villa and uh, with a pool, so we can actually just chill out there the whole time. Yeah, but you see, I'm going at the beginning of April. I don't think a pool will be very useful then. The kids are super excited. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be hot enough for sunbathing then. But this parrot bag would look brilliant in Portugal. You've got to make it. Yeah. So you've used wadding, but I guess you could use um, Bozal for your foam interfacing if you wanted like that really structured. Um, yeah, so that's what I use. You know yeah, those ba basket bags? Oh, yeah. That are really structured, basket wear, whatever yeah. it's called. You could use that. Yeah, make it even more structured. Right, so I've just done... Because I'm not, you see, I'm not a PU sewer. That's when you get into proper bag making, I think. So I thought, if Do you, you use... So? Oh, is that the definition That's then? my definition. Oh, right. No, no, it's when you, because I don't really make these, like... No, I think it's when you bags. start having lots of hardware. Yeah, that's the thing. And if you put feet in, that's it. So, but pinnacled. if you use, like, H640, it just makes it that little stiffer than yeah. if you're using just wadding. Right, so I've just added the top and bottom. Oh, nice. To, so all those seams you don't have to worry about. Obviously, these seams here are still loose. Little fragile. So you just just be careful with it. And then you're going to get your piece of, this is H640. So I'm just going to centre that. And I'm going to iron that on because it's the iron on stuff. So I've got the dotty bit facing me. Okay. So I probably won't do it that well because of time. You want to take your time doing this to make sure it's nicely, okay, nicely attached. So just press it just until press it is. It until it is, yeah. Go over the same bit. So how much wadding do we need? For I think this? it's about a meter because I use it in the handles as well. Okay. I Does said it, it say in the, in the yeah, instructions. One say. moment, then I'll let you know. It's just me trying to remember off the top of my head. So when you're ironing this on, actually. Your seams are uh, down the side are less likely to come off, um, come undone. You know your EPP seams, because now they're attached to the. So you need H640. two 23 by two inch strips and two 20 by 20 strips. So um, now Anne says, could you sew the side strips on before you trim off the excess of the panel? and work around the panel. Yeah, I mean, you could, yeah. You could just... Mm, but then um, it would, might be harder to get it exactly the It's harder the right to size. get it the exact size. Maybe you would have to draw on the panel where you're going to sew. Yeah, good point. Yes, whereas if you... Yeah, because you, you've got to get it precise. Yeah, I you do I need it to it match first. the back. So, so you could, Anne, but you'd but have to draw I mean, on really, it first. But I mean, really, you are just... Especially if you're using H640, now these sides are stuck on there. Mm. They're not going to come up. And no. the only other thing is to trim off this and um, cut the um, the corners out the bottom and then you're going to sew it to the back anyway straight away. Yeah, true. So, so long as you're ready and it is a really quick project. I'm just saying if you've made that and you know you're not going to make the bag for a couple of weeks, don't bother cutting don't, it until yeah, you're ready to it. make it. Yeah. But I think, um, I know when I've done things that I wanted to trim it, it's easier to trim it and sew something on because it's just to get it right rather than sew yeah. it on and trim it. Yeah. Um, so now it's just a case of lining this up trimming off the excess so even though it's box bottom i've still done it really a very simple yeah, yeah. design i like it it looks nice and it, it, it's funny when you look at it like that it's like sort of a panoramic picture isn't it yes. obviously it goes on the sides yeah i've never done like a uh a rectangle, a rectangle really like nice. this they're often um rectangular the opposite way i haven't measured this precisely so I just wanted to yeah, do it as would quick make as a I lovely, could. A lovely picture, wouldn't it? <laughs> just frame it. Yeah, again, you don't actually have to make a bag with it. You could make a rectangular cushion if you wanted to. Mm. Yeah, but this is 
not been my best um, measuring and stuff because I just want to get it yeah. made. <laughs> And I often, when I'm doing box bottoms, I often draw the three inch square that I'm going mm. to cut away and then I'll use scissors to, to cut it out. Just because I have a tendency when I'm using a rotary cutter to go slightly beyond where I should. Yeah, no, I'm the same because I have cut out corners with the rotary cutter and gone too far. Exactly. And that's actually quite frustrating. So I would tend to get a, actually, I've, yeah. I know there's a little And I've done it too many times. It's gonna make it easier anyway. Um, yeah, I would just draw this three and then use my scissors because I have a tendency to go just a bit further on with my rotary cutter. Yeah. But obviously, time-wise, I'm going to go for it. What I might do is then just clip that little bit there so I haven't gone beyond. And then cut that one. No, I am the same because I have cut it too much and I've thought, oh, I'll be fine and then just gone... Oops. Too far. <laughs> Too far. I've oh, got these little ones out as well, so... There we go. So that's your front of the back. Lovely. Ready to go to the back. So you're just going to place your front and back right sides together. And you do well, the same. I would... Sorry, I've missed out a complete step here, but it's only quilting. So before okay. I trim that off, Mm. I would quilt it before I trim the excess warning off. Okay. Whatever pattern you want. So that's just reminding me. I've actually only done two lines either side oh, okay. of the seams. I didn't feel like it needed anything else. So I just left it like that. Well, the good thing is entirely up to you, isn't it? I, the thing is, I'm rubbish. I'd start off and I'd go, yeah, I'm just doing that. Oh, and do you know what I'm going to do now? I'm just going to quilt them. round that branch. Yeah. And then I'd go, oh, well, I'm going to have to do that one now. And before I know, I'd quilt the whole thing with no intention of ever doing yeah. that. And it's really annoying, isn't it? Yeah. But that's all I would do. So before you trim off your um, excess yeah. wadding or H640, do any quilting that you want to do. Because it doesn't need more than that. No, it's only it doesn't if you want need to. loads. It's up to you. I mean, you can embroider it and everything. You, totally you don't know could. where to stop. Oh, that would be quite nice, actually, embroidered on it. It would, wouldn't it? So what you want to do now is you want to sew a quarter of an inch down both sides and all the way across the bottom, which I'll, I think I've got to... Yeah, I haven't measured this, have I? I've got it wider. I thought that would be the case. When you do yours... Follow the instructions. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, just measure, trying to do it quickly. Measure it. And it'll all be fine. Do you know fine. what I'll do, actually? I'll or just, just fudge it and trim off the bits that don't fit. Like I'm doing right now. Yeah, it's because I didn't... Um, See, if you'd cut it from top to bottom and side to side, it wouldn't have happened. See? Yep, yeah, it's because I didn't measure the mm. width of the panel. I knew that I needed to cut some <laughs> off the side. <laughs> Because I remember doing it with the example. But you're in a rush. This is the problem. If you were doing this at home, you'd have measured it all. Oh, totally. And... Measured and marked and everything. Do you think? Yeah, but this is this is what happens when it doesn't fit. You just trim it. Yeah, see? exactly. You it always works. It. it doesn't it matter, fine. does it? <laughs> trim and we fine. all do that. So I'll just sew those two. Then I think I've got time to show you how to box the bottom. You have. You have. Brilliant. I mean, Stuart's waiting around the corner in bated breath with his crochet hook, which I'm looking forward to because he's only just learned crochet. In fact, he said to me, oh, I don't do crochet. And now he does do crochet. So oh, I love him. And, and he did double check his double crochet this morning. and He was absolutely right. So I'm looking forward to this. Oh, also, I would have put my um, walking foot on for this as well, which I actually still can. But hey, wing it. Wing it. Stuart didn't bother with his. He said he didn't have time <laughs> when he was quilting earlier. Jenny thinks he's on the M25. Hey? <laughs> you think you're on the M25? I know. <laughs> I'm like that. So I'm on the M5 at 5am. There's nothing there. You ever so fast. <laughs> yeah, but not over the speed limit. I had to go on a speed awareness course. Did you? Yeah, I know. I've not I mean, had I, I, to I, yet. And it wasn't my must have been somebody else. Oh, yeah, someone overtook you at the lot. Yeah, the, yeah um, that's what it is. And they got your registration accidentally. And, um, I've just come I was on. sat on the table with these old men. In fact, there was mostly old men on it, interestingly. And 
And one of them said to me, he goes, what you want to do is you can always go like about three or four percent above. So as long as you go up to about 74, you won't get caught. Right, yeah, but I've heard that as well. So the, um, when we finished the course, the instructor goes, so what have you learned from this course? And I said, I've learned that you can go to about 74 miles per hour without being in court. And he said, I think, Rebecca, you've missed the whole point of the course. Luckily, he's still. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> Sorry. Luckily, he still passed me. You're such a rebel, aren't you? I know. Yeah, see, I haven't measured this, but it's all good. It was a very good course, though. I've been on two. Have you? I've never mm. been on one yet. Haven't you? Good. No, I'm a good girl, you see, Rebecca. <gasps> I don't think I was going that fast, to be honest. They just get you for everything, but it was quite funny. It was mostly men on it. Yeah. Mm. I've got quite a few friends that have been on them. That's because they're speeders. North. And they all said it wasn't their fault. It definitely wasn't my fault. <laughs> Interestingly, you're not using a walking foot, but it's going through that fine. Oh, yeah, it's fine. There you go. I just tend to do it so it walks it all through in one yeah. go instead of one going a bit faster. But if you haven't got one, it's no, still perfectly yeah, achievable. So to box the bottoms, it's as simple as open up that corner that I've just cut out. You want to match these two seams together. And I tend to have one seam going one way, the other seam going the other, but it or open the seams. Sometimes yes. it's easier when you're using H uh, H640 to mm. open them. So you just want to match those seams and then pin, I will pin this, either just, just one pin either side of the seam to stop it moving. And then you're gonna sew straight across using a quarter of an inch. Do go back and forth at the corner, do okay. back stitch. I learned last week there's a, such a thing called H630. Did you know that? Oh, I did know this, but that was only because I was searching for um, H640 that I saw. Yeah. I, well, apparently, well, it's just a bit thinner than H640, exactly the same. So if you want something in with not quite the same pattern, like um, toy making. It's yeah, is that. it slightly thinner? Slightly. Just only slightly. Only a tiny bit. Yeah. Interesting. But. For toys, so if you wanted to put wadding on the toy piece, it's good for that. But all little ah, things, or maybe you yeah. do like a little makeup case or something. Never even knew that. Uh -huh. So you're gonna just literally do exactly the same thing for the other, the other side. And this is again, this is exactly the same for the lining. It's right sides together, but you sew down both sides. But across the bottom seam, you leave a turning gap of. I tend to leave quite large turning gaps, a good four inches, so yeah. that it all comes through. <coughs> so you can get your hand, hand you just don't yeah. turn it around. Otherwise, if, well, if you can't get your hand in, then you're not going to be able to turn around. Exactly. It's just so you don't have to fight with it mm. as well. There we go. So that is the corners boxed for the bag. I've already made the handles and they're really easy. It's a case if you cut your strips like it says in the pattern. And you put wadding in the handles. I have. Because you'd be carrying a lot of stuff in here. Exactly, and what I'll do is I'll stitch the hand, there we go. So that's the, the base of the that's outside gorgeous. of the bag. I done. like it with the, so let's put it next to the red one. Do, do, do. Yeah, completely different look, aren't they? Yeah, completely different. I might even turn it around so we've got parts on the same side. There we go. Gorgeous. Right, let me just run through the kits again. Okay. So, for the red parrot one, in the kit, you get full instructions. You get the parrot panel, which has got all of the pieces you need for the EPP. There we go. All the EPP pieces. You've got the bag back and you've got the straps and you've got bonus parrots, which you could use for internal pockets. Yeah. That's what I would do. You definitely Put could. a piece of fabric on the same size, right sides together, sew it all together all the way around, turn it right sides out, sew it on. That was Just quick, like wasn't that. It? Just, Just like, like that. that. Um, and obviously you get the EPP piece, paper pieces. So everything you need is in the kit and you get a meter of red 
cardinal red fabric which is used for the top and the bottom of the lining it, everything is in there if you want to add wadding or bosal over half of the stock has gone that obviously doesn't come in the kit but it's entirely up to you you don't need to use anything you've got the outer and the lining depends how heavy weight or robust or how much structure you want if you want to make the one with the seeded fabric exactly the same so you get the um you get the full instructions and all the paper pieces. You get the parrot panel, the same as the one I just showed you. But with this one, you get a meter of the seeded fabric. Um, we have also got the Kingfisher bag. Kingfisher bag in teal. That has, um, well, let me show you the bag. That's this one here. That has a grey lining and again you've got all of the EPP pieces, you've got the fabric that lines the bag and lines the handles, everything you need. You've got on the panel the pieces for the, the back of the bag as well and all the instructions. So that's the teal Kingfisher. We've also got the Kingfisher um, in grey, so you, the Kingfisher panel is actually grey. He's not chewing on the floor. Right, so this is the grey one. So look, that's why he, he's got more sort of grey natural look. And then you get um, like a turquoise plain fabric with that. So that's all of that. And then there's also the puffin kit. And the puffin. I love the puffin. He's gorgeous. So you've got the puffin... Um, there's the EPP front, and then on the back, you've got the printed back. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Jenny. It's been My fab. Pleasure. Been fab. Fab and fun. Fab and fun, fab as and always. Fun. Um, when are you back? In April, towards oh, yes. the end. I think it is a Sunday again then. Okay. Back to my Sunday. 21st. Or the 23rd or the 26th. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> It's the 23rd, Charlie says. It is the 23rd. Okay. There we go. Brilliant. Uh, well, uh, you have a great journey home. Thank I'll see you, you soon. It's been oh, fab. Indeed. Um, thank you for joining me for Sewing Street. We have got Yarn Lane coming up because it's Monday and it's nearly 12 o'clock. Uh, we have got Style Craft, Cotton, Jumpers, Cardigans, and we've got Crochet Bags. And Stuart has taught himself to crochet and he's going to be demoing the crochet. So um, get your hooks out, get ready, and um, I'll see you back here in a few minutes' time. Join us this Friday on Sewing Street. It's William Morris Celebration Day. We've got a brand new quilt. We've got brand new fabric. We've got brand new gifting. And we've got Amber Makes and Delphine in doing demonstrations. What more could you ask for? Follow Sewing Street on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. I've been part of the Sewing Street family now for over a year and it's been the most incredible journey so far. Some of you may already know that I like all things sewing, anything from quilting to toy making, needle felting, and of course applique, which is my favorite. The best thing about being part of the show is being able to share with you my imagination and bringing you new ideas and new designs and patterns and seeing how you interpret those designs and make your own work and then sharing your images of those is the most rewarding part for me. I'm currently working on lots of new ideas and exciting projects that I cannot wait to bring to the show and share with you all. But in the meantime, take care everyone and happy sewing. Are you a fan of Sewing Street? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your mates, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing community. See you there! Have you heard?
heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street, you can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. Here at Sewing Street, we're always looking at ways to make your shopping experience better. That's why on certain items, we have split pay. So with the split pay, depending on the price of the item, you can split the cost twice, three times, or four times. So that means you pay once, then you pay monthly until it's finished. And you know what? We do not charge any interest whatsoever. Isn't that fantastic? Split pay, you say? Well, yes, please. I'm off to buy myself an overlocker. If you're a Sewing Street customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Good morning, Monday afternoon, good afternoon on a Monday afternoon, it's Yarn Lane and it's Stuart. Good morning, afternoon. Look, I always forget that 12 o'clock. Got my the hook. hook. I know, I said to you We're ages crocheting. ago, you need to learn crochet. You were no, now you've done it. Live on air. He's done it. Here we are. Yeah, learned it in the break. Woohoo! Um, so this hour is all about new style craft kits in this beautiful cotton yarn. Isn't it gorgeous? Talk to me about the yarn seeing right, as you've used so it. This is Savannah and it's a beautiful new yarn mm. from Stylecraft. It's 100% cotton. It's an Aran weight. Oh. It is perfect for spring and summer knits it's and crochets. Very soft for a cotton. Beautifully soft, it? absolutely beautiful. It's so lovely on the skin, light, breathable, wearable, mm. layerable. So you can use these garments throughout the year as well as layering pieces. Mm. But for your spring and summer wardrobe, just perfect. What's lovely about these patterns that we've got today is they are lovely easy knits. Okay. So easy rib, easy stocking stitch, um, minimal detail, okay? So no fancy stitches to try and get your head around. Also, Just the patterns go up to include larger sizes as right, well, which okay. is fabulous as well. But the, the yarn itself is just dreamy, buttery soft and divine. Okay. And it comes in these wonderful self-striping batik effect. Yes, Just yeah, they, they are. They, I love them. They're really nice. Um, we've got to announce a competition winner. We do. Just before we go on. So, the winner of sh yesterday's Shop to Win. £50 each, this What's is. What's it? £50 of sewing. Of course, because you were doing credit. yesterday. Yes. 
Right, yes. so the three lucky ladies who won shop to win are Anne Swift, Ray. Ellen Pierce, Ray. and Veronica May. Congratulations, all of you. Woo! Anyway, it's fifty pound in 50 your pounds account. Each. Marvelous for being a shopper. Just for being a shopper. Shopping with us yesterday. Awesome. Um, so these kits, we have got four different items. So we, we have got this beautiful short sleeve t-shirt. Yeah, top. we do. We do. It's a V-neck. And we've got the pink and blue, or we've got orange and green. And I know it's a crochet bag, but this is the orange and green. Well, that's what it, I've got. Is lush. Yeah. So this is what it looks like in the. Let me take it out the pattern. So this is what. And then I can go. You can have a look overhead. This is what it looks like in the orange green. Mm, I love that. It is. Beautiful. So yours will stripe differently depending on where you start on the ball. Um, not really, to well, be honest. Well, I think you might not have that bit there. You well, might have oh, that yeah, bit there. Absolutely, yeah. But I mean, you will get those regular repeats and um, you get that lovely, it's lovely sort of casual summer. Well, it is, beachy. and because it depends, you know, when you keep going, yeah. you, it is more broken up. It's a nice effect, isn't it? It really is. Love it that. really is. It's lovely and casual. And like I say, just gorgeously comfortable, light, breathable. So the one I've got here is the Tundra which is this one here yes it is and um the size let me that's in blue and pink now the size range is 32 inch up to a 50 inch bust mm. so nice big size range there and look at the it really is so soft mm. for um for a pure cotton yarn yeah um, machine washable, very it important. Is machine washable, 30 but it degrees. is lovely, really yeah. nice. But it is a very, very super soft yarn. So, I think some cotton yarns can be a bit stiff. Oh yeah, can't no, there were some that I used that are really um, completely different feel. Yeah, this is really buttery soft. Beautiful. You know the difference between, like, it can happen with t shirts, cotton t shirts. No, yeah, you can yeah. get cotton t shirts mm. that feed all stiff, and then you put another one on, and it's like, oh, Ooh. this is like butter. It's completely different, yeah, isn't yeah, it, yeah. with drape? Yeah. So, in the kit, you are getting the pattern, and you are getting seven balls, so 700 grams of this yarn. And that and this kit, that's the one that's on the screen at the moment, will make this colorway, which we're talking the background is um, an ivory color, and we've got shades of teal and then we've got a pop of deep coral and a little bit of lavender underneath mm. um, and it's got a really pretty border as well around the it neck. It does. What's important actually to note is that the pattern that you get features two different views. You've got oh. a v-neck which is the one that we've got on the mannequin oh, okay. but you've also got a scoop net. Your yarn, your pattern will do either. So you can right. pick, you can actually pick. You're not restricted to doing a v-neck. So the picture that I've got on the front of this pattern is the scoop neck mm -hmm. and then the little pick is the v-neck. So that is the um, Savannah in blue and pink. Then we've also got Savannah in in orange and green mm. which is which is the picture here and again the pattern is either that scoop neck or the v-neck again you're getting seven balls of a hundred percent cotton aram weight yarn um which is amazing that's 32 to a 50 inch chest which is a really big size range yeah it? it is and like i say if you're buying the orange and green colorway but you want to make the v-neck don't worry even though we've said um i don't think we have actually said scoop neck you can do either yeah the, both of the patterns are in there so all yeah. the information and they've showed you on the back so you can choose you just need to choose which colour but this is a lovely t-shirt this is the sort of thing you can wear on um, holiday just on its own where it's a little bit warmer I would wear it at this time of year on top of a long sleeve top so if you picked up the really deep nice. coral or that turquoise I would wear it on just a cotton top yeah it would look lovely um pair of jeans yeah perfect. beautiful yeah you can layer this and you could wear it all year round you know the other thing you're getting 700 grams of yarn mm. now that will make up to the 48 to 50 inch bust however if you're making one of the smaller sizes and you crochet like me, mm. like what I do, yeah, like right? what you do if now, you're crochet yeah. like me, yeah, okay, right, you could do granny squares, yeah, make four some, yeah. or nine mm. front and back. Do about you could make yourself a beach bag to go with yes, if you've got yeah. some spare yarn, gorgeous, yeah, be really or, or stunning. A hat. 
Yeah, you could crochet a hat. You only need like one or 200 grams for a bucket hat. Perfect. Perfect. Lots of free patterns. Mm, loads, We're done. Loads. We're there. We're there. Right, so that's the um, short sleeve top. Now, the top that I'm wearing, the cardigan, this is the short length cardigan. Mid, yeah. Um, we've got that in two colours. Yeah. So the colour that I'm wearing is the grey and pink, which is actually called Pampas. So let me look at the pattern. I love that colourway. It's absolutely beautiful. This is if you like those really soft pastels. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? It's you've got perfect. soft greys, you've got dusky pinks, and a little pop of yellow. There's a bit of green in it as well. Mm. So let me show you the picture. What's nice as well, um, Rebecca, is that the sleeves are knitted as the front and back. Oh, They're I see. So it's all in, in one. So you're not, if you're no somebody seams. that hates making up, You've got minimal making up well, on this also, one. Well, also, I think sometimes in knitted garments, depending on your tension, you can get you can get a bit tight here, can't yeah, you? And you can't can. get your arms in. That is true. That so is you wouldn't true. get that. Mm -hmm. So the pattern that comes with it, because we have also got a kit for long line cardigan, that's there. That's a separate kit because you need more yarn. This is for the shorter cardigan, so the one that I'm wearing, mm -hmm. and that's in this colourway. The pattern, when you get your kit, will have the pattern for the long line, so you've got two patterns in one there as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, the size is again are the same it goes 32 to a 50 inch bust and then with this one obviously because it's a cardigan you would need more than t-shirt you get eight balls of yarn so as Stuart said if you're using one of the smaller sizes you will have yarn left over you can make someone else else with but look how lovely it is doesn't it drape really nicely it's very comfortable it's very soft to wear mm. really like that yeah. lovely colorway so gorgeous um that is the pampas colorway we have also got it in this colorway which is what we call this one purple and blue now we've got it in this colorway mm -hmm. That's not the same as that one. No, right. no, it's a different colourway so altogether. This is the purple and blue. But I don't think there's a picture of that. No, one. there isn't. But you can no. see how it looks up look on the it, side of the band. Can you can you see here? Can we get in close on the side of the barn? So you've got shades of like emerald green. You've got a really lovely ocean blue, a bit of a paler teal blue, and then you've got those lovely shades. It's a bit crocus. Yes, it is. Isn't it? Yes, it You've is. You've got those crocus blue, um, purples and greens, and then a bit of blue as well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then the um, the sort of the lighter one is a bit kind of calico. Yes, so it is. same cardigan. You get eight balls, so you're going from a 32 to a 50 inch chest in this lovely crocus shade. It's called Step. I'd have called it crocus. But mm -hmm. it looks like that. Right, so that's... Well, the, the point with the names is, you see, they're about different places. They oh, place are names. they? Right. So the steps. Tan tundra, tundra, Savannah. Tundra, steps, Savannah. Got it. Crocus doesn't fit with that, really. Doesn't exactly no. fit in. But it's a nice name. I don't I think like they'll it. be giving me a job, do you? Um, listen, don't rule yourself out. No, you never know. Can I, I've always fancied the job as, like, naming things or working for a greetings card company or a paint company. It is a lot of fun. Charlie and I used to do a lot of trade shows with his company, and we would have to do colour names for his millinery. And we always used to do joke names to begin with, mm. just to make ourselves giggle, and mm. then we'd put the proper put names on. Put the proper on. ones in. You know, we'd say, this hat comes in scallop and bandage. Yeah, um, that's you know. nice. Well, it made us laugh. <laughs> Thanks. It made us laugh. <laughs> Little thing. But we'd usually had a glass of wine. Yeah, by no, then. that would make me laugh. See, I yeah. think I'd probably get sacked, so I would, I then it would get a bit silly. Now, the next one is the long line cardigan. Now, she's standing behind Stuart. Yeah, she is. Let so me... it's the same as this cardigan because it's actually the same pattern. Well, yes and no. But longer. Yes and no. So it is a longer. So yours is the mid. So this is going kind of to the hip. Okay. Or like me, halfway down to the bottom of your bottom. Yeah, I mean, it depends you on your height. Yes. But actually, on somebody who is more petite, mm. it's still a really cute length. It is a nice length. It covers the right bits, let yeah. me tell you. I do not like a cardigan that finishes at waist. Right. I want the bit below covering, and yeah. this covers that bit below, which yeah. is very important. It is nice, isn't it? Mm. And also, as well, on both of these, there's no 
fastenings. So there's no buttons, no, there's no, no buttonholes. It's meant to be worn open and loose. However, if you wanted to put um, buttonholes and buttons on there, you could do that. Yeah, that's it's not true. an issue. Or toggles. I toggles love a toggle. would be lovely. Um, a hood would be nice, actually, on yeah. the longer one. Mm. Anyway, so there is a slight difference in that the longer length, which is really kind of um, knee length, has got pockets. So it's got some pockets in yeah. it, and the short length doesn't. So there is that one difference there. I'm going to show you how to do pockets. Mm. If you've never done them before, they're super easy. You'll get obsessed. Um, I love it. Okay, so that's the longer length. So this is a good kind of cover up. This is a good one that you could, um, you know, wear on holiday, where mm. the evening starts to get a bit cooler. You need a little something just to keep you warm. Be perfect um, in Portugal. Yeah, it would be perfect for Portugal. Perfect in Portugal. This is in, I'll take one out. This is Prairie. Now that's the sample that Stuart was showing you. Yeah. So in Prairie, we've got stripes of, well, the background is again, like a calico. We've got um, coral blue light blue dark blue and then we've got um, an emerald green and a limey green as well yeah i don't know if the camera can pick this up if i just move this up and show you on the cream part you've actually still got almost like the ghost yeah, it's of like those flat, shades you've it's got not a solid color at all no is it? you've got a little bit of that coral a little bit of that blue a little a little bit of that pistachio running through mm. but it's really soft and faint so it just adds a lot of interest well also with the, i love these cell striping yarns because they're re they're really nice to knit with you get to 11 you go well oh, all green i'll just finish that I'll just finish that bit they're very and motivating and it's also really easy to count then yeah because you can just count you know I'm using particularly like when i use striped yarns for socks so much easier to count it really is it really the is the back of that looks i just think lovely. it looks gorgeous from the back doesn't it, it? does doesn't it it's really sleek and mm. a really easy knit as well uh it is iron weight it is stocking but it's stitch. lovely isn't it it's a really unusual thing and i think you know when you're making your own garments you want something that stands out something that you can't buy that's the point isn't it yeah i think it is really i think it is and even if you're a novice knitter and you've only really just started mm. you could make this garment very straightforward Word, nice and easy single rib um, stocking stitch uh, you've also got a garter stitch cuff which I just think is gorgeous yeah gives that it gives it a nice edge but quite a good weight to it as well yeah it, it does it's a lovely finish on a cuff mm. really contrasts well with the stocking stitch so yeah a real winner for me that so that's prairie but we've also got the long line cardigan in tundra which is the same one as this one, so I don't have to get yeah, out. Yeah, that's so, this one right here. So this, that would go with everything, wouldn't it? So this is the Tundra colourway, but if you want Tundra in the Longland cardigan, I love this. I love that. Really nice. It's like a kingfisher. Yes, it is. With a bit of... Um, Swimming pool blue. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, and a bit of lilac. Um, mm. If you wanted, you could make a really nice set, couldn't you? You could have mm. the scoop neck or the V-neck with, with the long, the long line, line yeah. cardigan gorgeous. to wear together. I think that would be gorgeous. A pair of maybe cream linen trousers. Or white jeans. White jeans, oh nice. Mm, nice, be Very lovely. Nice. So, that, so that's the cardigan, but in those in that colorway. Um, if I know we have got quite a lot of different ones, so if you want me to show any others, just message us in, we will, but I will run through them again. Then we get on to crochet. So how nice, but this yarn is so lovely. It is absolutely perfect for crochet as well. And that's really my comfort zone, Bex. Is it? Yes, crochet, <laughs> very crochet. much. Very we've much. Got two Listen, different... if I can do it, you can do it for sure. Definitely. Well, we've got two different bags. So we've got your bag that is, um, what's it called, that one? Hang on, I've, do you I know think it's the orange and else? green. Yeah. 9982. Yeah, sorry, it's called the rectangle bag in um, Pampers. Yeah. Now, actually, uh, you can mix and match. So, for example, you can get this yarn pack and make the other bag. So, you, it's basically pick your colour. Well, they're actually, they've got, yeah, so they've got three balls of one colour and yep. two balls of another. Yeah, that's right but you've got the pattern for both so there's two bags there's the yeah. rectangle bag that Stuart's got there yeah 
So this is the rectangle. So this is the, um, you know, bigger of the two bags. You've got this gorgeous, and I've got to say, very easy to crochet mm. motif. Um, like a granny square, not a granny square, not your traditional granny square. It's got some double treble clusters. Hello, mm. hello, hello. Listen to me. Mm. Some double Listen treble clusters. I'll show you how. They're mm. really easy. And then it's also got this lovely crochet uh, together and also a lovely band around the top in double crochets. Nice. And a lovely crochet shoulder strap. So this one, super lovely big size, great beach bag. Perfect. And then this one, because I'm going to, I'll show you both because the pattern has both of them. Love Isn't that. this lovely? Love that. Yeah. Gorgeous. But it feels like it's like a string shopping bag, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And obviously, the kit doesn't come with the straps. You have to provide your own. But you can easily get those online. Yeah. They're super easy to find. And also, you can then pick out the colour. So, for example, I would pick out that lovely soft aqua blue for mm. shoulder straps. That would be yummy on those. It's gorgeous, aren't they? So, yeah. in the pattern um, that comes with these kits, you've got the pattern for both items. Yeah, you do. You and you've got enough scissors. yarn to make me either. A pair of scissors? Yeah. So I can cut this sellotape. Yeah, you've yeah, got enough cool. yarn to make either bag, and you've got both patterns. And you get two colourways in in each pack. So yeah, you do. So here, this one, this right is, here, this is your blend. Which one have you got there? Desert and Pampas. Okay, that's right then. Yeah. So here's the pattern. So as you can see, the pattern is for the rectangle bag and like the string bag. But this colourway is the colourway that Stuart's got there. Yeah. So you get three balls. You get three balls of desert. And two and balls of And then you get two balls of pampas. So desert is that one with those gorgeous oranges, tangerines, limes and greens. And that's obviously these ones here and here. But then these sort of softer, almost like seashell colours, mm. you know. Um, that comes from pampas. So you've got those lovely soft greys, soft peaches, soft lemon. Um, and that gives you that gorgeous contrast. It's just wonderful, relaxed. Be, whatever the weather you'll feel like you're on the beach well this is 33 pound 50 if you have a look in the shops at these crochet bags they are really expensive and um and super on trend oh massively super on trend you can line it if you want to if yeah, you want you to could. Put it, make it cute. more structured that you can line cute. it but they are very expensive so um to get this and they're just beautiful to make yeah great gift for somebody as well whether it's for you or for somebody else. I'd have that as a beach bag. Well, me too. I mean, mm. obviously, if I was taller, you'd mm. see. But I mean, it just, and it just sits really nicely. And then you've got all this lovely space. It could be your market bag. Yeah. It could be the bag you take to swimming. If you go to a Lido, don't, don't they look fun? Outdoor swimming. Yes, gorgeous. Beautiful. Now, the other colourway, so exactly the same. You've got the pattern for both, but you can choose which bag you make. Um, this one is Canyon and Tundra. So places, this... you see, places. Oh, oh, they called it Blue and Coral. Yes, Canyon and Tundra, <laughs> Blue and Coral. So you get one ball, two balls of um, tundra. You do. And three balls of canyon. Yep. So the tundra shade are those wonderful ice blues, lilacs and pinks. And you can see those in there. Love those. And then uh, your canyon is those rich raspberries and peaches and more sort of, um, I don't know, sherbet-y colours. And they just go together beautifully. Mm. Now again, even though this bag has this wonderful shape, you're only crocheting squares. So mm. if you're a newbie crochet or a novice crochet, crocheter, and you're thinking, well, I can only do squares, you're in. This is a good this start. Is your bag. This is a really good start. Yeah, don't, this is so great. So what are you going to start off by showing us? Are you going to start with crochet? I'm going to start with knitting. Okay, right. I'm going to save the best till last. <laughs> You're not really feeling nervous at all. So, do you know what? I'm I'm not. Good, um, good. Because you know what? I'm very honest and upfront. I don't crochet. I really, really don't crochet. <laughs> but I tell you what, I've really enjoyed doing this. Look at me. The hook's in the hand. I'm, I'm rare. I'm going to put that to one side <laughs> for now. 
Right, so on the long line mm. cardigan, you have pockets, okay? And I just wanted to show you how you do that pocket. Okay. okay? And it's a lovely seamless pocket. So this isn't a patch that you sew on. Oh, it's a knitted this all in one together. It's knitted, so you've got a pocket lining which seamlessly goes up into the body. So which gives you that cardigan. nice continuous stripe. Yeah, and you've got the, the, po the pocket doesn't then stand out as much. No, it's not, there's it's, no seam around the pocket. And I guess with self striping, it would through. do, wouldn't it? It really would. And sometimes it's nice to have contrast, but not today. So what I've done, what you'll do first of all is you'll knit your pocket lining or your pocket bag. Now, obviously, your pocket bag is going to be bigger than this. I've just knitted a small one. Is this Ignore, an elf's pocket? It's a baby pocket. Mm. It's a baby pocket. Um, and I'm using a DPN simply because um, that was convenient. Okay. You don't have to use them, of course. Right. So you're literally going to knit a rectangle of stocking stitch. Um, that's all you need to do. Now, just to say that when you are working with cotton yarn, if you haven't used cotton yarn before, you may well find that your tension is slightly looser. Oh, is it? Okay. I find that. But also, this is quite a loose... Because yeah. it's soft cotton yarn as well. It is very soft. So would you suggest, well obviously do a tension square, but I, would you suggest changing your needle size? Well, I would, I, well the needle size has been changed to accommodate. Oh, okay. So normally with an Aran weight yarn for the main body of your knitting you would use five mil. Mm. You're going to use four and a half mil oh, right, okay. needles for the body of your knitting. So there has already been an adjustment for that um, but just be aware just check your tension and if you find it is all getting a little bit loose and floppy on your tension square do go down a needle size if you need mm. but I just find reminding myself that I need to keep my yarn up to tension is enough so I'm just going to purl across there just to finish off that pocket bag Oh, I say. Really? Stuart's just had a lemon and raspberry cake delivered. Steph, I Ooh. think this might be the delivery. I'm just trying on the t-shirt. Well, uh, what Why have I... you had a cake delivered? I'm jealous. I can hear it in your voice. I am, no, I'm, I'm jealous of anyone. I can hear it in your is, voice. Um, but the good cake? news is, I'll cut it straight after the show, so but don't worry. But why have you got one? So I think this is from Steph. So Steph wanted mm. to send me a cake on my birthday, which was obviously a month right. ago. Had awful problems with the company trying to deliver, mm. couldn't deliver, got sent back. And she tried and tried, bless her, just couldn't get it done. In the end, Steph sent me some gorgeous, like mini brownie, like a selection box. Okay. Oh my goodness, it was like a box of chocolates, but brownies. Brownies, right. Different kinds. Mm. They were small, but they went down a treat. But they did. Um, and then said to me, God, you'll never guess what, last week, that company's got in touch to say they're making the delivery. And I, and I said, well, nothing's arrived. And I think it's arrived today. <gasps> Very exciting. Say. Yeah, and no, right. I'm always jealous if someone says cake. Cake. So, cake. So you, you I, love, I do love cake, a little Do bit I. of cake. Yeah. So you knit your pocket lining. Okay. Now this pocket lining is actually going to, this, it forms this inside the pocket. Oh, so you do the inside first. You do first. the inside of the pocket okay. first. So you knit that, you put it on, on a, a spare needle or, um, you know, a stitch holder. Right, then you're going to make the front left or the front right of your cardigan, okay? So I've mocked up, again, a baby version. So look, I've got my little bit of rib there. Now another little tip for you, and it is in the pattern, when you cast on with cotton yarn, cast on with one needle bigger than the body oh. that you're actually going to knit with. It says so, that in the pattern, does it? Yeah. Oh, I never knew that. So cast on with... Just one bigger, not both. Just one bigger, oh. yeah. 
and then do you, and then change down for your rib mm. and then change back up again for the body of your knitting okay. and it just if you've ever had those problems actually this is good advice mm. if you've ever had problems with um anything a really tight cast on if you really yeah, tight yeah, cast yeah. on and then you struggle with that first row just do one size bigger needles for your cast on and but then that's change interesting down. to do two Ne a needle of diff two different sizes. How do you mean? I just um, I just mean when you cast on, use a bigger size, oh, not one of each. Right, okay. I thought you meant you used one of each. I've, I've never well, done no. that. Well, I use the thumb method, so I only use one needle anyway. Oh well, I don't see. I use two needles, so that's what confused me. I thought I used one small and one big. Ah, uh, do you know what I learned the other day? What I learned to do an Icelandic cast off. <laughs> did you? I did. I, did. I do the long tail cast on, if it's needs to be a bit right. tight not so tight right I, Iceland, <laughs> Icelandic cast off <laughs> goes really nicely with quarter <laughs> stitch <laughs> right stop it right you're listening now come on right when you come to do your pocket what you're going to do is you're going to knit a few stitches and then you're going to put your center stitches and this is the same number of stitches as your pocket lining onto a spare needle or a you know um kilt pin or whatever you mm. use for your stitches you know your stitch holder you're going to put so them you on do the lining right and leave yep. that and so then we lining. do and then we do the outer we make the front yeah, yeah. So you'll actually knit about 16 inches of knitting oh, okay. before the pocket, so don't right. panic. So you do that, and then look, what I've done is I've put those stitches on the front. Now these will end up as the rib for the top of the pocket. Wow, okay. So we'll pick those back up again. You're just taking them off the needle right. and rib them. Okay. But what we need to do now is put the pocket lining behind so what we're going to do now effectively you're putting right side to right side okay um and we're just going to knit across the stitches of our pocket oh, so you lining do like the few that's on the right side and then you go across the pocket yeah the pocket lining pocket line and then yep. do the few on the own um. that's right so i'm just going to pull that waist yarn up to tension and knit straight across so we're knitting our pocket lining onto the main body of the garment now, okay? And then once you get to the end of that, okay, then we're gonna knit across our last few stitches on the main body. Now just make sure so you don't get a gap that you just pull your yarn up to tension at that point, okay? So now I have, I'll just tuck that pocket lining inside. So look, there's the pocket lining on the back. And so now what I'm going to do is just carry on with my stocking stitch. Now just be aware that when you're making your cardigan, um, you will be doing a bit of shaping as well. So just keep that in mind, but otherwise you're just doing stocking stitch. So again, just make sure you oh, pull yeah, so that guess, yarn up to yeah, tension. But I presume this is all in the pattern. This oh, is absolutely, fascinating. absolutely. Um, so I'll just keep knitting across this. You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I struggled mm. with finding something to demo because these garments <laughs> are so easy, which is wonderful. It's mm. wonderful. But I dare say everyone at home does not need me to show them how to do knit and purl but i mean if you do email in <laughs> yeah. you know it's nice to watch though is it it is wait till i get that crochet hook in my hands see if you're still relaxed then <laughs> yeah? yeah i'll ask you i'll have a go <gasps> i will ask you'd be like oh why are your hands like animal claws there is the one thing with crochet that you can't ever comment on and criticize people is the way they hold the hook because they everyone has their own method that's very yeah. specific i yeah. mean and you can say because i've taught crochet a lot you can say well if you do that it does help but 
it's almost like you have to show someone how to do a chain and then leave them for a few I know, hours and then come true. back. Same with knitting needles. You have to you find know. your own way. Yeah. I remember somebody once saying to me, um, you're holding your needles all wrong. And I said, well, I, you know what? I, I agree, but they have. this has sustained me for the last 40 years mm. and I love knitting. So, I mean, is it the wrong way? Well, there are ways of knitting, which I don't do. Um, that I'm faster, but I'm t in order to learn that you also almost have to start again, yeah, and go through a very slow process to relearn it, yeah. That means that you would be faster, and I can't be bothered to do that. Well, I did actually, so I've never done it. I did because I always used to hold my my needles like this, so I wouldn't hold the yarn, so the needle go, I would yeah, pick and that's up, how I knit, wrap around, yes. and hold again, and mm. then and wrap around, and yes. And although that did sustain me for 40 plus years, it wasn't that quick. And when you're doing something like single rib or double rib, it's a bit of a slow, very slow process. I think the problem is when you learn to knit, it's hard to use that method yeah. that you're using. Yes. Everything, because your tension's so tight, yes. everything falls off. Well, that's right. And at the end of the day, my mum taught me to knit when I was three. And there are only, there's only so much instruction you can give a three-year-old, and then you just have to let them get on yeah, with it. Yeah, but I can't. I need to almost relearn to knit to do that fast method, but I can't. But I did teach myself did in you, my late you, 40s oh, you did do it. To, 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 to flick instead. Mm. Right, so just want to show you there what we've got now. So now, there's that bag, there's that lining that I, that I um, knitted separately. Here is the body of my knitting. Here is my okay. pocket. Yeah. And I'm going to carry on knitting the body of the mm. cardigan with that. And then when I'm ready to do my rib, I've got my stitches ready. I'm literally going to put them back onto a needle. So do you do that and at rib the back end? And forth. Well, to be honest with you, once you've done a few inches of stocking stitch, um. you could actually go back, do your rib, and stitch it all down. Do you have it on a stitch holder at this point? I would put it on a stitch oh, okay. holder. It's just much easier to get one of these on and off on air. Yeah, yeah. But no, I would use a stitch holder. And then you are going to sew yeah, so the back that, pocket. I was thinking, how does that work now? Yeah, so you then stitch that onto the back, down the side, across the bottom. What sort of stitch you use? Well, I would use a mattress stitch. Oh, okay. So where you're just picking up a little, so right. you don't see a seam yeah, from the front yeah. at all. Well, I was thinking, looking at this card, I'm thinking, how did they sew that on then? Because very discreet. It is very discreet. Yeah, yeah. But you could over sew it too. Yeah, that's true. As long true. as you're not putting your needle right through to the front, yes. you're not going to see it. But it's a way of getting kind of seamless pockets into garments. Now, if you wanted to, on the short. Um, cardigan, you could put a pocket. Yes, yeah, I would be wanting a pocket. You've got both patterns. Yeah, that's true. Right. So that is my knit. I like that. That's a good, good, that's good cool. technique. That's cool. Crochet. Let crochet away. Let, let me wow you with this. Can we no crochet shot? away? <laughs> uh, so the um, kit that's on the screen at the moment is the Savannah and Coral and Blue bag kit. Remember that this um, kit is for either bag. It's just the yarn you choose. There's enough one to do either the rectangle bag or what I call a string bag. I don't know, it's called a string. But it's a granny square bag, but I think of it as like taking to the market or having on you when you're on your bike be useful, wouldn't that's it? That's right, that's right. And you couldn't, if you want to line it, all you need to do when you're finishing crocheting it and join them together is just draw around it, add a little bit of a seam allowance to turn it over and then you can um, line it as well. Yeah, you can. So this one is the coral and blue, which is this colourway. There is the other colourway, which Stuart has got the sample of over there, oh, which sorry. is kind of the yeah. orangey green, orange and green and peach and grey. And again, remember there is enough yarn to make either bag and the pattern for both. So once you buy the kit, you can use the yarn in your kit to make either bag. And then you've got the pattern if you want to make the other one with another yarn. Right, yeah, so where do we start right. then? Are they all the, all the granny squares the same for both yeah. bags? Yeah, they are. Okay. Well, no, you do, yes, yes they are. You do motif A, motif B, but um, that's just different colours. So okay. it's the same square. So the square is the same, yeah. you just need more for one bag. Exactly. So you're going to start with a slip 
stitch? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> Onto your hook. <laughs> I just, I'm right. going to leave it. Are you ready for this? Yep. So we've got a slip stitch on our hook. We've got a slip stitch on our hook and we are going to chain eight. Now this is the bit, I can't get the tension right. Two, three, four, five. Are you looking with Horace? Six. No. Seven, eight. Okay. And then you're going to do a slip stitch to join it into a ring. Okay, so let's just ooh, pull that through. So I have closed my ring. Perfect. Now next up, we are going to work one chain. Okay, this does not count as your first stitch. Well, I might read the pattern along with you. So I've done that. And then you're going to work 12 double crochets into the ring. Okay. So for a double crochet. <laughs> yeah, so we had a conversation earlier about UK and US. Right, because mm -hmm. first of all, I was like, okay, what's the double crochet? So I put English double crochet method into the internet, watched a video. It was a treble. It was an American. It's not funny. It wasn't it? a double crochet at all. So the first one I did was all over the place. It, it ended up looking like a hat. It mm. was all domed. So anyway, for a double crochet, you're going to go. So you've got one loop on your hook. You're going to go into the ring, yarn round the hook and pull it through. Two loops on the hook yarn round hook and pull them both through that is your first double crochet well done let's do it again let's do it shall again shall we luckily you got hook 12 into goes the ring, this. pull it through yarn around the hook and pull it through both so you're going to continue like this and work 12 double crochets into your ring now i like to hold listen to me i like to hold the tail of the yarn alongside so i'm actually double crocheting over oh, the top okay. personal preference it's a personal preference i don't yeah because um because it's not a strong enough hold you just have to sew it through anyway you do but i'll tell so you I don't. i'll tell you why i did it and <laughs> but i think this there's no right or wrong here this is just what i do i i think you'll like the reason why i do it oh go on then okay and the reason why i do it is because you said you like a magic loop method. Yeah, magic ring, yeah. Magic ring, okay. So the pattern doesn't say to do that. However, is that neat? Let me just have a little check. That's lovely, that is. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. And it's easy to count now as well, isn't it? Yeah. Because being Aaron. Yeah. And cotton as well. So what you can do then, once you've put your, your first rounded mm. is you can actually pull on uh, could, yeah. you can pull on that tail and you can actually tighten that ring up whereas if you haven't crocheted over yes that's true you, you couldn't i mean you can do that and then you can still sew it in i suppose yeah. it's just it tends to people do think as a matter of course when i crochet i don't do that because sometimes it makes it a bit chunky right but then lots of people do it all the time and there really is no right or wrong way or you might find for some projects you do that and some projects mm. you don't Mm. There isn't. Look at that! You've done that so fast. Well, Only said you know, two things. I I learned from Sam Sabido, mm. and she's a very fast crocheter. Yeah, so I mean, I was only talking for two seconds. When you've learned from the best, I you know. know. I we had I had to do that off camera because it actually interferes with the filming. It like yeah, it's, I can, it can't yeah. pick up on the speed. I can imagine. Right, so, so you've done your now, twelve. So I've done my twelve. Um, double crochets into the ring and I've actually gone on and done round two which are trebles okay, okay. which are trebles now um, I can show you a treble if you like oh, or I can you? just move on no could you show us a treble <laughs> <laughs> yes I can actually right so what I'm going to do you know this I'm... is your screen test for a new crochet presenter yeah, don't you? And you yeah. Know, if you pass that's it brilliant yeah so to do a treble crochet mm -hmm. which are these round here you're going to work two double crochets sorry you're going to work um four chain that counts as your first treble plus one chain space it does okay then you have definitely cracked this you know you're going to put yarn you have I'm really impressed. Thank you. I haven't said anything wrong yet. I, listen, I've always been able to talk the talk. No, no, I'd know if you were saying it the wrong, though. <laughs> 
I'm an idiot like that. <laughs> right, so yarn around the hook mm. this time into the chain space, yarn round hook and pull it through three loops on your hook. Yarn round your hook, pull it through the first two, yarn round the hook and pull it through both. Perfect. And that is your treble. Have you done a half treble yet? I Not on this, but I have before. Okay. Yeah. Just wondered. Yeah, half treble, that's yarn round the hook, hook, in, pull it through, yarn round the hook and pull it through all three. Well done. Yeah. Da, oh da, 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 da. my goodness. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I really ought to quit while I'm I know, ahead. but the good thing about crochet is, because people think, oh, it's really difficult. Basically, the stitches are all the same, it's just how many times you wind it, yeah. isn't it? So yeah. you can do a chain, yeah. you can do a double, yeah. you can do a half treble, you can even do a, a double treble or a triple treble. It's true. But I think people look at crochet patterns and go, Two tr d d what does that mean? But actually, and to me as it well, difficult, this it? style craft pattern is the easiest way into following a pattern because this is a square. And, but and they it's are an easy also not pattern. all patterns are the same. They are explaining things like four chain counts as one trouble. And they not are. Not all patterns do that. No, that's true. Now, are you prepared to be impressed? Yeah, I'm really impressed. I'm now. going to do a three double treble cluster. Mm, I'm going to do a three double treble cluster, okay? So that's this lovely part of the motif, this lovely cluster right here. It's a three double treble cluster. Okay. So what you're going to do is yarn around the hook twice, yarn into the chain space, hook the yarn through, yarn around the hook and pull it through two, okay? yarn round the hook and pull it through two. Now we're going to repeat that, yarn round the hook twice, in, pull it through, yarn round the hook, pull it through two, yarn round the hook, pull it through two. I've now got three loops on the hook. Yarn twice around the hook, into the same chain sp space, pull the yarn through, yarn round hook, pull it through two, pull it through two, and I've got four loops on the hook, yarn around the hook and pull it through all. And that is your double treble cluster. You're mm. then gonna work two, <laughs> is that a double treble cluster? Yeah, yeah, it is lovely. Double two treble. chain. A three double treble cluster. A three double treble cluster. Because you can cluster. get two double treble clusters, you get four double treble clusters. And, and actually you do do one, if I show you here, you do do one, can you see there is one double treble cluster there and a chain to make your first part. Yeah, so you get to the right height. Yeah, so you do do that, and on the next round you have three treble clusters and four treble clusters. And when clusters. you do things like popcorn stitch, you do more because then they, they don't lay flat anymore, they go into little domes, yeah. like a little popcorn or something. Understood, understood. And that's when you have more of them in there. Would you like to see that one more time? Yeah, I definitely would. <laughs> no, I'm the, you, I feel like I'm crocheting you a nautilus here. Really, um, practice this. Thank you. Well, you said you haven't done it before. No, I have. So you've really practiced. This yeah. is very good. Well, I, I, you know, you know me, mm. Bex. Yeah. I am an encourager. Because you did say I'm not doing crochet. Ever, you? ever, yeah. ever. Well, but look at me, I'm crocheting. And also in the pattern, it tells you exactly. So the do two double treble clusters. See, it tells. Oh, it teaches you, you how. For yeah, wrap yarn twice round hook. I mean, and if you follow them like this because you've got to do 12 of them by the time you do like number eight yeah then it's brilliant but these are very good patterns <laughs> and there it is and then do two chain and that kind of locks the cluster into place and moves you on to your next and there and there it is and there amazing, it is amazing amazing how are you feeling now <laughs> I need a chamomile tea. Cheese. I need some shamamale. Shamamale? <laughs> That's my favourite when you tell me that and it I really love is. that. I can never decide whether it's camomile or shamamale. 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 Okay. Uh. So there you are. Now, I honestly, honestly <laughs> believe, because mm. I 
I've got to 52 and not crochet. You did say, and you said I'm not doing crochet. <laughs> do you not think, what do you prefer now? Do you know what? I absolutely mm. love the speed of crochet. Yeah. I love the difference of crochet. I love the fact that they're all different stitches. And I mean, I'm totally in love with this yarn. So the mm. combination of all of those, this is fab. And I'd love to carry on and, and do the bag now. So yeah, I'm hooked. Mm. And it's easy to undo. Okay. Yeah, it is. Not that I've needed to. No, actually, mm. do you know what? I'm going to show. Go I'm going to show us. you something now. I'm going to show you something now. Because this is the first one I did. Now, listen. You're fine with Sewing Street, but beware the internet. Yeah, beware the internet. Because you put always. into the search and you say, "Show me how to do a double crochet. Show me how to do a treble," and you get the American. Mm. And look, look, look what I look what I made. I made a little hat. So they're, they're one because behind. Look, because look at this, look, look. Mm. It's, I've made a bikini, basically. It never works. Look. It, no. And that's because these here should have been trebles, but they're actually double trebles. Yeah. Because they're the Yarn round the yeah. hook twice mm. and then do your, yeah. So they're too long. So they've made the whole thing dome upwards. And of course, your double crochet and your treble crochet isn't explained on the pattern because it's such a basic stitch. Right, so therefore so you... So those yeah. bits I did wrong. Yeah. And then you did it right. And then as soon as I got onto the stylecraft oh, instructions, I was fine. The rest of it was fine. But actually, even but if I you carry on wrong, wrong, it still goes wrong. So they have single crochet that we don't, SC. That's our double. That's exactly so they're always, it. They're always one off. I yeah. know these are UK terms. Yeah. Um, well, that's brilliant. Should we go through the kits one more time? Mm, Mr. Crochet. Yeah, let's. Yeah, Mr. Crochet. Let's do that. And your hook. <laughs> uh, you need a four mil hook, by the way. You do. You do. For that. And we got those. They're all on the web. All of the hooks and the needles and everything all on the website. So let's just go through the bag. Now, remember, in the kits, you can make either bag. Not both, but either bag. And the pattern includes all the details for, uh, for both bags. So um, we've got the blue and coral version, which is this colourway. And then you can choose whether you make this bag or whether you make the larger beach bag. But you will have a pattern for both. So once you've made yours, you won't have enough yarn for both, but you can buy some more yarn and you can make both. You make the other bag as well. What would you use to give a soft knitted bag some structure, please? Fusible fleece or bosal in the cotton lining or something else? Sandra, if you were going to do mm. that, what you'd have to do is you'd have to have a lining for your crochet and a lining yeah. inside the bag. So you'd actually have a bag within the bag and then you would have, and I think that would be too much. I, would, I wouldn't I would do, I just don't think crochet is that sort of thing. I would, no. If you want a bit more straight, fleece, fleece would be brilliant mm. because then you'd be, you would only need one piece. Yeah, or use something like, I mean, it's just crochet is a flexible thing. It is really. It's all part of the look. I mean, well, I, when I've lined them, I've used just cotton fabric, but a fleece would be nice. Yeah, yeah. But what you're trying to do by lining it is stop it stretching, because obviously if you fill this with potatoes at the farmer's market, it may yes. well be down by here by yes. the end. So you're needing to create a bit of structure. So canvas, cotton fabric. The problem with fleece is, again, that's a bit stretchy. So a bit of canvas or cotton embrace the look i mean if you want to give it that structure then do it use you have to use like Stuart says lining bows or lining that's yeah. fine but i would just use a bit of cotton uh, yeah if the the most i would put inside this would be h630 which is but, the yes. lightest mm. fusible fleece. but you will need again to but you'd need a lining on both sides because you of the would. holes you would yeah the old yeah. so that's that one if you want the kit that's in the colors that stuart's got for both bags that's on screen. No. Nope. Delicious. Delicious. Nope. So that's all the sort of the green, the yellows, and the shell and the, colours. And the shelly colours. The shell colours for um, me. Let's move on to t shirts since I put it on. Look how nice this is. Mm. I can take that home as well. So the um, t shirt kit. Oh, you've changed. When yeah. did you do that? When you were crocheting. See, I was no, so... No, actually... I was like... No, actually, I did it while you were knitting that pocket. I've been oh. wearing this all the time you were crocheting. Did it right at the beginning. Didn't so, notice. So, um, this is the T-shirt, which I put on over my jumper. So, you see what I mean about the layering thing? Layering. Mm. Um, so, this 
t-shirt. Let me just find the code for that. Oh, oh Savannah Top in Tundra. So have you got the um, code for that one? Yeah, you, they probably called it blue. Blue and pink. Blue and pink, mm -hmm. Savannah Top in blue and pink. That's this one that I'm wearing. Size is 32 to 50. It's really nice. I mean, it would look lovely just as a short sleeve top, but mm. you've got that underneath. It's also available in desert, which is this um, orangey yellow color. Yeah, that orange green. And don't forget you get enough mm. yarn to do the scoop neck or the V-neck. So if that V-neck is too low for yeah. you or you like a scoop neck, you can do it in either colorway. So that's the code for that one. If you want to make the short sleeve cardigan, which is this one here, that's available in two colorways. This colorway that's on this one at the moment, which is the, um, the Pampas colorway. <coughs> really popular this one it's lovely, really isn't nice it? i like that one and it's also available in the other one which is the sort of the one that looks like step. crocuses but it's called step which is like purples and greens um right and then there's the long leaf card long sleeve cardigan as well sorry long line, we're back to yep. long line cardigan as well um all of the kits and all of the details are all on the website with the details as well if you want to get them. Um, thank you so much today, Stuart. Well, it's been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure and congratulations. <laughs> you passed the crochet <laughs> test. Thank you. <laughs> it's been brilliant. I'm looking forward to seeing his bag tomorrow. It'll bring mm. it in tomorrow. So um, <laughs> tomorrow will be Stuart with his finished crochet bag he's yep. presenting tomorrow. Yep. Eight o'clock, he has got... You have to say. Oh, eight o'clock, Alison Glass Wildflowers Fabric Launch. Ooh. Yeah, beautiful. At nine o'clock, you've Crafters got companion bag dies with Becky Swan. And at ten o'clock, you've got rainbow fabrics, Hooray. my favourite colours. And eleven o'clock is Crafters companion are back with velvet. And at twelve o'clock, we have got deals on deals. brother sewing machines and the last of stock as well. Very limited wow. stock on those brother machines. I'll also have the Elna 680 Plus. <gasps> Ask your questions. I'll be doing demos. Mm. Get them in. Fantastic. There might even be a bundle with that 680 Ooh, Plus. Well, Just a little Make sneak sure peek. you're here tomorrow. Um, I'll see you back here. I'm coming on Friday with Amber Makes 10 o'clock. So I will see you then. Thank you for joining Bye. the two of us today.